ಪಿ ಎಲ್ ದ ಮಾಡರೇಟರ್ ಈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರವ್ ಹೆಗಡೆ ಚೇರ್ಮನ್ ಸಿ ಐ ಐ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೇಶವ್ ಶೆಣೈ ಪ್ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಟಜಿಕ್ ಪ್ಲಾನಿಂಗ್ ಸಿ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಕಂಟೈನರ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ maritime boards in providing inland connectivity challenges and way forward karnataka maritime board the presenter would be captain c swami director
ऑपरेटर वुड बी श्री विकास नरवाल आईएएस डिप्टी चेयर पर्सन कोचिन पोर्ट ट्रस्ट एंड द स्पीकर्स आर श्री धीरेंद्र टक्कर डिप्टी चेयरमैन गोवा चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स श्री जीतन डायरेक्टर कैनरा चेंबर ऑफ कॉमर्स
MDSSPP Petro Products, Shri Venkata Pani, Director Anakha Refinery, The Lord's Container by Shri Keshav Shanai, President, Strategic Planning. Then we will be having the lunch break. Then post lunch, lunch session will follow us by the maritime boards in providing inland connectivity, challenges way forward Karnataka Maritime Board by Captain C. Swami, Director, Ports and Member Maritime and IWO Operations KMB, Sri Samip Jain, CEO, Black Bricks and Kumari Amisha Soni, Consultant, Representative of KMB. Then, Captain of Ports will also participate. The presentation will be by Captain Perimal Sirsakar, Deputy Captain of Ports, Kerala Maritime Board. Then, by Sri T.P. Salim Kumar, IRS CEO. Then, followed by the question and answer session. Then, the last session will be by Panel discussion on stakeholders, prospective, current scenario trends and developments. The participants will be Dhirendra Thakur, Deputy Chairman, Goa Chamber of Commerce, Sri Jeetan, Director, Kenra Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sri Atul Jadav, Deputy Chairman, CII Goa. The moderator is Deputy Chairperson, Cochin Port Authority. Then, as usual, the closing remarks by the Deputy Chairman, New Mangalore Port Authority. I request, I request everyone uh, come inside and occupy the seat in the hall. In a short while from now, we are going to start today's session. May I request uh, Siddesh to please come over here? Siddesh. May I request all the invitees to please be seated so the timing is time is running short out so that we can complete early and we can close early. And also there will be a tea break as well as the lunch break. Between that we can manage the timings. And also I request all the uh, speakers, moderators, to please uh, uh, stick on to the times what it has been allotted for the teams. of customs uh, is ready checking you want to check the online okay you check ladies and gentlemen with the opening up of the Indian economy the government of India had allowed private sector
कस्टम्स पर्सपेक्टिव गुड मॉर्निंग I see a lot of faces new for me but old for the organization so this is a very important day for all of us there is one ppp public private partnership which is going to define the future and diverse in india so i am very happy that this organizers has invited us customs to this grand function i would whole heartedly express my gratitude in this regard before beginning the program as customs is a very important vital inevitable part of port affairs it's been very logical that you have been called us to have a small presentation and our perspective on this affairs called ppp so let me uh, i have a small presentation for you so i will try to run through that presentation so that we will get a small picture about what we are thinking about the upcoming future projects and investments through ppp so let me with your permission let me start the powerpoint presentation thank you so i am mitosh raghavan deputy commissioner customs here working in customs house here so as an introduction seaports as you all know as we all know seaports are gateways of international trade and what is the importance of seaports in indian development of indian economy that i need not say you all know so we should focus on this inevitable part of development that is ports and port development port modernization and port led industrialization carries very much significance than we can ever think of because it is going to be the next driving engine for the development of our country so in this regard what we have to do and what is done is enough or not that kind of analysis we have to do and i am going through a very uh, general basic uh, level of uh, uh, information sharing where you can all relate to the information i am sharing but a perspective on the, in this regard will be inevitable for you to come into terms with what is happening in uh, at present in the in our country so port and port led infrastructure as you all know it carries a lot of uh, investment uh, requirement which unfortunately our public authorities may not be able to meet so there is one good option which has been devised recent years and it came into force from mid 90s that is public private partnership and by using the resources and expertise of the private sector we can develop all the public amenities in the country with port being in the front runner so sharing of risks and responsibilities uh, and focusing on the policy planning and regulation by uh, government or public authorities in the day to day operations being delegated to private parties we can manage we can bring up a much big change in uh, the development arena so as an introduction i would like to bring to uh, back, back to your notice that jawaharlal nehru port authority and navasheva international container terminal in july 1997 being the first port terminal developed on ppp basis since then preferred mode of infrastructure development in major ports is being ppp mode so let's see why growing why the ports are being in focus because indian coastline is huge around 70 7500 km of the indian border boundary is coastline which covers around 13 states and uts and the most important part is its location the strategic location where it is located in between the shipping lines of major state of hormuz and, and the state, state of, of malacca, malacca in between the persian gulf and the south east asian countries where major trade is happening so we are at the prime strategic location where we if we the potential is so huge that is unimaginable but until now unfortunately we are not able to tap that potential so we have to intervene now we have to act now and in this regard this kind of uh, discussion is much needed now that's what my thinking is 
So we have 13 ports and 200 non-major ports. 13 major ports across India, Western Coast, Western Coast have 6 and Western Coast have 7. So these major ports are having huge potential to bring the country into a very different level. So the foreign trade, next if we examine the foreign trade being carried in maritime uh, rule, it will be 95% by volume and 70% by value. And GDP contribution is around 60% by these states, by these maritime states. So these are very important factor where 20% of the population of Indian population lives in coastal areas. So these ultimately port-led industrialization, port-led development will lead to the upliftment of the local population which is very much necessary because there are limited resources and finances for, for the government to put in to bring that kind of development for the local population. So we must concentrate on this kind of, this mode of development. And around 1320 million tons of cargo traffic was being moved in major ports during the recent period. If we examine the cargo composition, the solid or bulk cargo which contains iron ore, coal, that will be the major share, contributing to the major share of cargo movement. Around 40%, 40 to 45% solid cargo is there. Around uh, liquid cargo will be which consists of petroleum, oil and lubricant which will be 33 to 37 percent and container cargo will be around 20 percent. This all you know, I am just memorizing you, recalling your uh, memory. So what are the challenges? Now if so, if seaport development is that much important, then why didn't we act on it before itself? The answer is that we have a lot of many challenges. First is resource and finances. As per Maritime India Vision 2030 program, there is at least requirement of 1 to 1.25 lakh crores of investment for modernizing the port or capacity augmentation and, and converting it into a world class infrastructure. These kind of uh, investment should come from private players which have been making a mark in our country. So, resources and finances is one of the challenges. So, another challenge is that we already have a very weak infrastructure over the years. 75 years of independence, still infrastructure is not being that developed. So, we, this inadequate cargo handling and equipment machinery has been a very major challenge for the current port scenario. And another major aspect is the technology bottleneck. Inadequate navigation aids facilities and IT systems, insufficient dredging capacity, lack of technical expertise. These kind of issues are affecting the technological aspects of port development. So ultimately these all factors will lead into higher turnaround time. You all know that across the world, countries like Japan, China, Singapore, which are having good turnaround time, compared to them, we are in a very minuscule, very, very, uh, very, very, that, Turnaround time is very huge, so this turnaround time we have to decrease. Come into uh, we have to minimize it and bring more efficiency and uh, thus bring more cargo inside the country and increase the traffic. Ultimately, increase the revenue. So why PPP? Now I will take your um, attention to the objectives of public-private partnership. If seaport or port development is a must now, then what is the mode? The only and effective mode is PPP. I won't say it is the only mode, but it is the effective mode where private contribution will be there in a major share. So, first of all, it can bring funds, increase funding for infrastructure funds, it can bring modernization, it can bring technology and automation, world class experiences from outside the world, it can bring into our country. And management practices where uh, incorporating the private efficiency into providing services for the public. So there will be a complementary roles being played between the public and private players. So capacity augmentation will definitely come, which ultimately lead to functional efficiency and increased traffic. So if these are the advantages with PP mode, then we should go for it. That's what I think, what will you say? So let's get into the brief history of New Mangalore Port. New Mangalore Port was 
as far as i know the details which i got through some conversation and uh, some research into internet i came to know that uh, 1962 the project was introduced as mangalore harbor project later on 9 on 4th may 1974 it was converted as the ninth major port in the name new mangalore port and in 1980 the provisions of the major port trust act were applied to nmbt on 1st 4 1980 and uh, through the conversation i came to know that actually the modernization phase be began by 2002 and 2012 adani investment came for captive bus as you all know that upcl is there and in 2008 17 and 18 found very interesting thing that 17 and 18 two consecutive years new mangalore port was the cleanest port in across the country uh, they got that swachh sarvekshan award Two years consecutively, I, I I think that it is a major feat. And um, in 2019, MCTPL under JSW terminal became operational. And in 2020-21, another major major feat in our port was the introduction of mobile X-ray container and scanner. This became operational. So cargo movement became very that um, very efficient. And in 2022, recently JSW opened their container terminal, and which is going very fine. So now the modernization continues, as you all as you all can see. If we examine what JSW has brought to the enormity landscape, I would like to say that some infrastructure and equipment facilities. You can see the picture. They are they are bringing state of art equipment, all weather berth. Uh, gate complex with way bridge facilities designated yard for container storage dedicated space for customs examination container storage area computerized tos with real time monitoring of gate i won't say that nmpt has not been doing good but now it has been next level has been reached means the private players with their efficiency they are bringing up more um kind of uh, the business has been renovated we can say like that so jsw the container storage area designated yard it has become very systematic that's what we could see and because of these improvements we can see that the turnaround time has been reduced high productivity and new technology equipment has brought reduced the turnaround time it has increased the capacity we can now handle main line and feeder vessels efficiently increased efficiency because skilled motivated and professional work for workforce has come and the state of the uh, state of art systems has been in place so this will increase efficiency which ultimately lead to increased volume now the second player in npt is mctpl and see mangalore coal terminal private limited which is exclusively for coal handling so this terminal commenced operations on november 2019 so what has it brought it has brought state of the art fully mechanized terminal efficient handling software enabled process flow and these are the pictures you can see what they have brought in through their investment high efficient ship and loaders stacker cum recliner two numbers i am not getting into the details of these items and wagon loading system with the capacity to load and dispatch seven rigs in a day these wagon loading system and all you can see in a very upcl so udupi power corporation limited this is an example of a uh, private player being playing in the field of public entity but in an efficient manner upcl they have captive berth here for coal they their uh, udupi power corporation limited in udupi district is uh, this coal has been transported there from after importing here so this started functioning from 2012 So, captive jetty and mechanized coal handling system are birth number five in NMP. See the pictures. These are the investments they have brought. These kind of machinery, it would cost millions for uh, uh, government to afford. So, these kind of uh, investment has been brought. So, if we examine the cargo volume of New Mangalore port, recently it has been jumped a lot. so last year and current year i have some data i am not going into the minute details of these data but to just show that how much volume is being handled in metric tons i can see that imports has been around 2.84 metric tons if some error is in the data please excuse me 
because uh, this has been obtained from our own research and uh, exports has been 1.08 crore that is about volume of cargo handled in metric tons volume of cargo handled in crores will be this will be 1.3 1,38,000 crores and uh, exports will be 62,000 around. These are all approximate figures, so you may be better knowing these things. So number of bills handled. Number, number of bill of entry handled in 2021-22 will be 9351 and 22-23 until July we have been able to handle around 4,000. Shipping bills around 18,000 in 2021-22 around 5000 till now 22-23 so this much there is an escalation of bills of entry and shipping bills handled being in our department now number of containers handled imports in 2021 around 75,000 76,000 we were able to handle exports around 76,000 until so these kind of we are able to increase the volume of containers handled now so now coming to the major part of customs that is customs revenue customs revenue over the years has been increased as you can see the graph shows that there are three uh, separate blocks for basic customs duty igst and compensation says you can see that if we remove that period where corona has hit us badly we can see that there has been a steady increase in revenue of customs. This is because increased traffic and increased volume is coming to our port. So there has been major paradigm shift in uh, these kind of things that we can see if we examine this graphical representation removing that corona affected period we can see that there will be and there will be definitely a growth. That science has been already been seen since last few years. So what are the uh, process improvement undertaken by customs? These now customs is an organization where we are focusing to facilitate trade. The motto currently is trade facilitation with focus on ease of doing business. Everybody now knows that customs is an organization where regulatory effect has been minimized and facilitative measures has been increased. Since 1991 economic reforms uh, after removal of license raj and all, customs has been playing a very vital role in bringing so many changes by conducting so many outreach programs to educating people and trade. Uh, so many measures have been taken to improve the business community, the working culture of business community, thereby providing an enabling en environment to for the growth of business and private entities. So the process we will see the various process uh, improvement undertaken by customs but the major um, ultimate objective to uh, achieve is trade facilitation is of doing business and timely clearance where we will be reduce we will be fast processing the procedures in customs and achieve a, and achieve the objective of getting lesser turnaround time for the vessels and uh, ultimately it will lead to uh, decreased minimal minimal regulation we cannot we cannot remove regulation and as a whole because there will be some malpractices some happening somewhere at some port or something like that that customs organization will be keeping track of that and will be acting as a regulatory body and all the statutory provisions should be necessarily be complied with uh, this compliance mechanism and all will be uh, kept track of by the customs authorities so what are the interventions now so many measures has been there as you all know there is an electronic data uh, interface where ice gate ice is where uh, the trade way is being facilitated the exim uh, community is being uh, facilitated for uh, for uploading their bills of entry or shipping bill or whatever they want to uh, the all the supporting documents whatever they want to import and export the communities in and out of india so the main, one of the recent interventions which uh, customs has brought is ice dash ice dash reflects daily customs clearance during the times of import this is the screenshot of the ice dash you can see there are green and orange and yellow button this will track the clearance times of import cargo at various ports and airports so you can see 
this is open to public you can check where it has been uh, done properly uh, means within time and you can approach that port or something like that some decision meet will help in decision making so ice dash has been a very good intervention where uh, the bills of entry cleared within 48 hours or the time will be registered so you can keep track you can this will bring transparency accountability and all kinds of uh, that uh, governance efficiency in the system now there is another uh, mechanism uh, called ice tag which facilitates tracking of import and export documents ice tag is a app basically is a google, you can download it in google play google pay google play so it facilitates tagging of documents of imports and exports duty calculator gst and inquiry <coughs> also information pertaining to customs act and notifications for the trade this is a trade facilitation feature so this is just for uh, your information so that we should be aware of all these things and e sanjit e sanjit is been there for a long time now to submit all supporting documents for clearance of consents consents electronically so all the supporting documents you have to upload in ice gate and you can uh, digitalize the documents and upload in the system thereby you are not being called for physical verification or you uh, need not submit anything physically you know documents you bring to the office there is no official um, interaction with official person that kind of all physical interface has been uh, done away with and you have been provided a very easy opportunity for uploading all this your documents for export and import consignments so e sanjit means e storage and computerized handling of indirect tax documents this is used for paperless processing uploading or uploading documents and rest so you have to upload your documents in the ice gate portal and it will be easily being uh, gone through the targeted audience so see this is single window interface for facilitation facilitation of trade as you all know there are so many participating government agencies Uh, which has been in tie up with customs so this this will be a single point interface which reduces the documentation work and cost of clearance thereby bringing participating government authorities on a single platform this is for easy clearance faster clearance efficient clearance so this um, participating government authorities authorities like uh, fssi or plant quarantine animal quarantine drug controller these will facilitate clearance of goods much easily so this is swift and uh, it's been in uh, from 2016 been in force now now rms you might all be knowing what rms is risk management system it's an it driven system with primary objective to strike an optimal balance between facilitation and enforcement there here some bills of entry or igm will be selected by the system and sent to the concerned officer either for examination or it will go directly to out of charge by payment of duty so the system will select which bills should go to the officer for examination and which will which bills will be easily facilitated for clearance so this is an it enabled system here human interference is very less so this will be bringing transparency into the system and uh, this will uh, definitely enhance the efficiency and effectiveness of the system whereby the scrutiny of the bills and uh, harassment of the taxpayer due to that will be very much less than so these are in lines with the best international practices which has been followed across the world now coming to another um, major measure which has been implemented by Uh, customs is the program of authorized economic operator which gives extensive benefits including greater facilitation and self certification for major taxpayers who have been proven very worthy very trustworthy there are different tiers there are different levels of authorized economic operator like tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 i am not going into the details of these uh, but uh, th there are certain programs which has been facilitating certain uh, category of um uh, importers exporters uh otherwise economic program uh, is a program under the aegis of world customs organization uh, to secure and uh, secure and facilitate global trade the program aims to enhance international supply chain security and facilitate movement of legitimate goods as you all know that 
faster processing of goods by customs, mutual recognition agreement, enhanced reputation for the organization, the secure and efficient supply chain. This is based on trust. So, authorized economic operator, you have to apply for that and customs will be approving it and then uh, this will be a credit to you also to the importer and exporter and it will be here. Yeah. So these I am discussing here because uh, when the PPP or private player is coming along with public um, player, then the landscape changes. There should be efficiency, there should be uh, enhancement in uh, this thing. Uh, clearance time and all. So from our side, from customs side, we have been coming up with many measures and initiatives which will facilitate further uh, enhancement of this efficiency and everything uh, surrounding it. So next major measure is self-sealing. This reduces the time associated with clearance of export <coughs> containers. So certain uh, eligible exporters are uh, uh, entitled to self-seal their export containers by using certain electronic seal and all. So these are all been notified by the government uh, since 2-3 years back. So stuffing containers at their premises, this will reduce a lot of uh, time for exporters to clear their consignments. Now coming to another major measure which customs has recently undertaken is Turan. Turan means customs automated system for faceless assessment. So somebody, some bill of entry which is coming to some port in India, in one port in India, it will be directed to an officer who is sitting some other port. So this will be uh, lessened. Uh, this will enable faster clearance at lesser cost to the trade, transparent decision making leading to enhanced ease of doing business. So there are three major phases in Turan, that is faceless, contactless, paperless. So faceless assessment, contactless, where uh, uh, automated queuing and machine enabled customs out of charge, these kind of actions are being taken. And paperless, uh, as we said earlier, e-sanjit and all these things will supplement this program. So the key objectives of uh, faceless assessment include anonymity, speedier clearance, greater uni uh, uniformity of assessment across locations, and promoting sector specific uh, in assessment, sector specific and functional specialization assessment. So somebody from some other port will be clearing the bills. You will not be in contact with that official, and uh, this will enhance the speed of the clearance. But it can be. Some bottlenecks are there, but we are trying to resolve at the earliest for facilitation of the trade. So these are, this Turan is a major measure which uh, Customs has been undertaking right now uh, in the form of faceless assessment. So another major measure which has been come which has come in the recent years is direct port delivery. I'll show you the. Uh, the customs clearance procedure uh, after Turan will be uh, implemented and uh, before that. So you can see the total time 3-4 days uh, when Turan was not there. You are taking a lot of time for submission, assessment, duty payment. There is lo long queue for goods registration, long queue for examination, long queue for out of charge and printed service charge then hard copy to important. This will take a lot of time. So Turan, the customs process after it has been implemented, you can see that total time will be less than 48 hours. With customs time, 6 hours. So submission, faceless assessment, PDF copy to importers, contactless web-based goods registration. This will lead to facilitated and non-facilitated, non-facilitated examination and facilitated, uh, finally paperless machine release, PDF copy to importers. So everything has been digitalized and it has been channelized and it has been accelerated and clearance has been very efficient. Now coming to the next intervention that is direct port delivery. You can see that this has been not there in Mangalore I think. Uh, where container freight station is there. Where they have to, importer has to com uh, uh, compulsorily move their containers to a container freight station for clearance. Until clearance is obtained. So <coughs> direct port delivery will be, um, uh, is a mechanism of um, clearance of the container without being shifted to container freight station. They can directly take it from the port and uh, take it to their field, wherever it is. So you can see that 
before the DPD model, offloading at the terminal, CFS model it is called, offloading at terminal yard, loading on CFS trailer for transportation to CFS, transportation to CFS, offloading at CFS, customs clearance, loading container on a trailer for final delivery, offloading up final. There are a lot of time involved, a lot of cost involved, a lot of space involved. So, <coughs> DPD model has removed all these things. <coughs> offloading at terminal yard, customs clearance, after seal verification, loading container on trailer for final delivery, offloading and final destination. So what, uh, what it took one week, now we can do it in two days. What it took ten days, we can do it in two days. So that kind of time saving, time efficiency all came into being by the introduction of direct port delivery. So this has been a major measure for uh, enhancing this thing. Another major measure is MOOWR, deferring duty on imported goods used for manufacturing in a warehouse. This has been aimed at transforming India into a competitive manufacturing location. So what is MO? Uh, this is kind of uh, allowing import of raw materials and capital goods without payment of duty for manufacturing and other operations in a bonded manufacturing facility. So this will enhance uh, the, the without being, this will facilitate the trade in the sense that it will be a measure to if there is some liquidity crunch or something they can just cope up with that and section 65 of the customs act can uh, will be notifying this provision so this what are the benefits due to this MOWR that full form I will say once again Manufacturing and other operations in a customs bonded warehouse. It is there from 2019. So the benefits are duty deferment in case of import of capital goods and raw materials. No customs duty if the goods are exported from the warehouse. No export obligation or positive NFE requirements. Uh, SIOA norms to be adopted on a self-certification basis. Interest free storage period till the time the goods could be utilized in manufacturing. Capital goods or inputs can be sourced from SCZ or FTWZ. So this this has been promoting manufacturing inside the country. So now coming to another aspect where there is a sudden study being conducted across major ports of the uh, across 15 major ports of the country. Uh, it is called National Time Release Study. This is this study is to um, uh, this study is to analyze how much time it is taking for the uh, import to come and out of charge to be given. So this study recently has been conducted each year across 15 major customs station, uh, customs formations. It includes seaports, air cargo complexes, inland container depot, and integrated check post. So this, what this has shown that what we uh, uh, in recent in earlier times it used it used to take around five to seven days for the clearance. But these studies recently showed that there has been certain uh, increase in optimal efficiency whereby the time has been reduced from um, 5 to 7 days to 48 to 72 hours. So 2 to 3 days it will be. No, so further, these kind of studies are required to further analyze what is the time to discharge the cargo and all. That we have to, that also customs is undertaking right now. So. Now, as you all know, there is a self-assessment system where um, the party themselves will be declaring the value at all through ICE gate and ICE system. So, I am not going into the details of this system. So, in a nutshell, what we have been observing these recent years is that public-private partnership should be there and is an inevitable part of infrastructure development across the country and as a closing note I would like to thank you all the organizers and the port authorities for giving me an opportunity to present a perspective what customs think on public private partnership and uh, we are definitely favoring that because that has been the future of infrastructure development now thank you Big, uh, crucial and important topic. I hope uh, many questions are there. However, just for few clarifications, if anything, 
and that is stakeholders, producers, if they want to pose, just for clarification, we have a time of one, four to five minutes, we can continue with the clarifications. All right. Uh, good morning, Deputy Commissioner. Uh, my name is Captain Himanshu, and a lot of things you told me are news to me, uh, but uh, thanks for all that. But my question is related to the human aspects of uh, uh, compliance and enforcement. Sir? The human, the human yeah. aspect of enforcement, because you are designed to for enforcement. Okay. Actually, your organization, the rank and file, yes. is not designed for facilitation. So all the IT-based initiatives, faceless and you know self-assessment. But what about the training or sort of retraining the the formations, the officers and superintendents? Have you thought on that? Because that will be very important to ensure compliance and enforcement along with facilitation. So the, the requirement is to retrain the staff as well because you know they have been designed to uh, serve the purpose of compliance. I think I got uh, yes, yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir, definitely that has been a very vital and inevitable part of any interventions to be brought up newly because these are challenges and the challenges to face we need training to be implemented, imparted on the officials. Uh, as we all know, when the system was transferred, uh, you can know, relate it to, uh, we as officers have been relating it to the GST transformation. From a central access service tax era to a GST uh, era, where the system is being totally automated. So many officials were facing a lot of challenges because they are not coping up with the sudden transformation into an automated system where computer they have to use computer, they have to uh, analyze everything through the system. These are challenges and for challenges we have, we should get the training, uh, necessary training and what Sir told is absolutely correct. We have an organization, NASIN, it is called NASIN, National Academy for Customs and Indirect Taxes, where this kind of training will be designed and implemented. The custom authority, all the employees, they need to sort of undergo retraining to learn facilitation. That is, that is what I am coming to. These kind of training programs will be being designed by this organization and being is being it is definite, it is a it is not it is a it is a must. This retraining is a must. Actually the mindset has to be changed a lot. There has been a certain mindset that we have to uh, as that example I told you know that uh, we have to, all the documents should come in paper format. So some people will not be ready to accept that it can be also seen through the system. So these kind of retraining should be there, it should be definitely there. That's what, these kind of retraining and all will be designed by our organization form. I thought it is not necessary to be included here. That's why I didn't discuss, but this is an innovative part, that is absolutely sure. No, no. Sir, you have been telling that you have done away with the physical checking of the container and you have given the e-sealing facilities to the uh, trade. So, while they are e-sealing the container, uh, do you leave the integrity and honesty of the goods inside to the trade and uh, how will you ensure that contraband goods are not in there when they are e-sealing it there? How to ensure that? Actually speaking, uh, there cannot be a 100% uh, uh, removal of this kind of inspection and all. Uh, now, the system is that we are trusting the exporter sometimes or uh, uh, this kind of Facilitation, facilitation measure, measures are required based on trust and that uh, trust is a very crucial factor. We have some interventions like container scanner and all where we can just see what the, without opening the exam. At, uh, at times it is necessary for us also to open the container and all. This is not 100% done away with. But these kind of measures are coming up and it is if some intelligence or investigation is being passed on to us then definitely we have to open and check, otherwise there is no other way to find out what is there inside the container. That is humanly impossible to uh, believe all the facts you have been providing with. So we have to 
you have we have to act on something at a, some uh, at some point of the time so now uh, thanks for a very informative uh, presentation Thank especially you. on the custom side Thank i have two questions one is on the the faceless assessment yes so run so what are the challenges you are currently facing and uh, what is being planned to counter them that's question number 1 yes question number 2 is regarding the duty deferment warehousing yes scheme now we have something um, somewhat similar happening under the sc said ftwz regime as well so is is it the same uh, or is there a difference if you can just explain the differences between what is customs providing and what is there under the sc said ftwz yes is two questions okay sir so for first question i would like to say that there has been certain time li time limit specified for faceless assessment means we have to clear we have to act upon the bill within 3 hours whether it to be sent to examination or sent to somewhere that we have to decide in 3 hours but the problem is that if some the officer who is examining the bill is having some doubt he is raising one query suppose the query to be replied it is taking 10 15 days so the whole object has been defeated here the either it will be because the te uh, some technical glitch or something or it is because the uh, importer or some uh, the person corresponding person is not reply to the query raised so this is beating the whole objective of accelerating the whole procedure and one other thing is that uh, sometimes it will be it is going to some other port so we have to call upon them and uh, inform some customer says and somebody will come and say this bill is lying there in that port can you just talk to them so that is not yet been streamlined so this difficulty is there so some other uh, aspect if we say that we don't know where it will be going that faceless assessment where the bill will be landing finally so uh, ultimately when they raise the query then should be again transported back to the parent port the port of where it is being so further examination has to be conducted here so these kind of challenges are there so it will be addressed soon so let's hope for the best for the second question um, i'm not sure what is happening in sc said maybe my colleagues might be able to help you so i the later not i'll go through the uh, thing and i'll study the difference and let you know thank you thank you sir uh, now my request uh, see vikas narwal ias deputy chief person kochi port authority to please present the moment to to the speaker deputy commissioner of customs sri mithosh ragaran as a token of appreciation well ladies and gentlemen uh, we hope it was a fruitful one now we will uh, move on to the next uh, presentation the lpg projects challenges and issues presenting by r rajendran chief general manager iocl kochi my request shri kejinath deputy person new member port to please welcome Shri Rajendran, Chief General Manager, I will see you in coaching with a flower bouquet for this session. We welcome you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, after this, we will be having a small tea break. Uh, it will be around ten minutes, five to ten minutes. Then. post uh, tea break we will continue with our panel discussions on port connectivity for port connectivity the moderator is sri gaurav hegde chairman cii mangalore yes sir you can continue please very good morning sir i'm r rajendra chief general manager from indian oil corporation meter a uh, very good morning to all of you our sincere thanks to uh mangalore terminal uh, for giving us an opportunity to present this uh, 
uh, our Indian oil presentation. Before going into the subject, I wish to share with you what are the challenges we have faced about two minutes, then I will take it forward. Indian Oil Corporation Limited Light Terminal Import Facility, it was supposed to be started during 2016 and the project was to be commissioned during 2017 in a span of two years. There were a lot of complexities involved in the, uh, implementing the project. There were a lot of vegetation by the public and it has taken almost five years, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, almost 60 months work could not be commenced in the way it was like that. The original project value was about 700 crores, whereas the actual expenses being incurred is about 1200 crores. There was a time over and of five years and there was uh, escalation expenses of about 500 crores. Despite that, with the very high help from Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas, with the very high uh, assistance from state government and all the government authorities, about 85 percent of the work has been completed and by 1-11-2022 we will be completing the project. At the juncture, uh, we express our sincere thanks to Cochin Portress authorities and also government agencies who have been extremely helpful to us in uh, you know, taking the project forward. With this, uh, let, let us go ahead. Next. Can you Uh, these are the uh, about six topics we will be seeing. There are about 70 slides. We will be having a, a detailed discussion on each and every slide one under. This is not a bad energy scenario. If you see, India is contributing to about uh, the Indian uh, energy is about 6% of the global energy. India total uh, energy is about 763 mmTPA, out of which 51 mmTPA is natural gas. Uh, this is regarding the LPG consumption pattern. If you see the total, uh, there are uh, you know, three uh, each year it is represented by three data. If you go to the right extreme data, that is import. Import during 2009-10 was 2.53 mm TPA and during 2018-19 it is 12.1 mm TPA. That is about 50% of the total LPG consumption is through imports. And if you see 2031-32, the total imports is going to be in the range of about 21.99 mrtpa if you go to the previous slide and also uh, this slide starting from 2.52 mrtpa during 2019 which was a import now it will uh, in the next 10 years it is going to be uh, uh, 21.99 mrtpa that is about 10 fold increase in the lpg imports and all over india we have got 23 refineries 11 gas fractionaries and 15 import terminals and 191 LPG bottling plants. The total number of LPG customers, it was 14 crores during 2014 and it is about 25.67 crores. Uh, as of now, it is likely to be in the range of 28 crores to 30 crores. That is, there is a two-fold increase from 2014 to 2021-22. And once we, uh, as far as the logistic is concerned, 56 percentage of the uh, uh, LPG is moved through road, and 6 percent is through railways, and 38 percent is by pipeline. This is the overall logistics that are being followed as of now. And our aim is to improve the pipeline from 56 uh, from existing 38 percent to about 60 percent in a other about 10 years. This is a per capita energy consumption, it's to have a overall idea. Globally, the per capita energy consumption, it is on the degrees. If you go to US, Europe or uh, other, uh, these two countries, it is on the degrees. Whereas in India, it is on the increase, about CAGR is about 3.5%. As per the data, you, uh, yesterday there was a presentation about uh, LNG. As per the data that is being shared, the petrol and diesel will continue to be on the rise and it will be at its peak during 2035-2040. Despite uh, the uh, other LNG and the gas based economy, we are going improving from 6% to 15%. Petrol and diesel will continue to be at its peak during 2035-40 as far as India is concerned. Uh, this is some of the uh, few slides we will be seeing about the characters of the LPG. LPG and the LNG, if you see, LPG, uh, uh, it's uh, heavier than air and it settles at ground and it expands to 240 times than 
uh, when the liquid LPG gets converted into vapor. So it is utmost important from safety aspect that LPG is handled very safely. These are the import terminals. Now here I want to emphasize a few more points. If you see the southern part of uh, the India, hardly we have got only two import, we had only two import terminals, that is Mangalore uh, and uh, Vaishak, uh, prior to 2012. I am talking about the LPG import terminal, I am not talking about the yeah, import terminal as, uh, per se. As far as the LPG is concerned, there are total 15, there were total 15 import terminals and the four import terminals are under construction. Out of 15 import terminals, except Bangalore and Yannur, or rather Vaisha, all other 13 terminals were only at Kujarat, Mumbai and those side. And for meeting the requirement of the entire southern region, whether it is Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu or Andhra, we had to rely on only Bangalore LPG import terminal and also Vaisha terminal till 2012. So it has posed a lot of challenges in meeting the supply of LPG. We had to go in for import terminal at the Cochin. These are the pipelines I was sharing with you. As I understand that the pipeline is only about 38 percent. Uh, there are planning to go into uh, expanding the pipeline up to 60, 65 percent. As can be seen from the presentation, the existing pipelines, uh, which are five numbers, contribute about 8 mm TPA. Under the implementation is about uh, 10 mm TPA. Under proposed pipeline is about 6 mm TPA. So the 8 mm TPA with the addition of other 10 plus 6 will be uh, improving to about 28 mm TPA in other few years. These are the uh, filling system. Uh, the, this is a rotary filling machine named Corrosion, which will fill about 48 cylinders per minute. Uh, as far as the LPG is concerned, the supply chain is, uh, you know, through uh, refinery uh, and road, uh, tank wagon, and also through pipeline. The, these are the storage systems. It's a cavern storage system where in Vaishak and Bangalore you got a cavern storage system where inside the rock LPG is stored. And uh, the cavern storage is at a distance of about 70 to 200 meter, depending on the LPG vapor pressure below the hill. These are the LPG projects uh, which are at various locations. We also have refrigerator storage. LPG is received through the uh, ships through uh, in the refrigerator form. These are the LPG mount. The mounted storage is uh, having very good advantage in the sense LPG storage vessels will be kept inside the mount so that even in case of fire there will not be any blubby. Blubby is something, it is known as the boiling liquid expanding vapor explosion. Whenever LPG cylinder is, uh, you know, surrounded by fire, it will explode. We, of late, we are going for the mounted storage vessels, in which, even if there is a fire surrounding the uh, vessel, uh, due to mount, there will not be any increase in temperature and blubby will never be there. This is how mounts look. This is not the old system. Now, let us go to that light import facility. Here, we have got a multi jetty and also LPG import facilities. And we are also planning to go in for pipeline project from Cochin to Coimbatore up to Salem. We have got a pipeline project. So, Cochin to Palkar, for a distance of about 2 ton kilometer, it is getting completed. And by January, it will be ready. From Palkadu to Tamil Nadu, that is Salem sector, it is in progress, it may take about one or two more years. The total project cost of pipeline is 1900 crores. Total project cost of LPG import facility at Cochin is 1100 crores. Total cost is 3000 crores. In fact, yesterday during discussions, there are a lot of deliberations on improving the logistics. Let us have a look at it. MR, at the left hand side, I was sharing with you, left hand side MRPL, we have got LPG plants at the Calicut, Kochi and also Kuilan. As of now, from Mangalore, the product is transported by road to Calicut, transported by road to Kochi, transported by road to Kuilan. Same is the case, the, with, from Yenur, the product is all the way transported up to Thirunavedi. 
If you see that distance between the Mangalore or Yellow to the respective locations, it is, let us say, it is equivalent is about 587 km one way, total value is about 620 km one way. And more the bulk tankers move through the road, more is the unsafe condition also. See, the bulk tanker, when it moves through the road, it is possible that there can be any uh, road, uh, there can be road accidents and that can, that's a real safety hazard. Not only with respect to safety angle, even from logistic angle, if you uh, move the product by ship to Cochin instead of Mangalore, there will be a saving of 250 crores per year. There will be a saving of 250 crores per year with respect to logistics. I am very sure that uh, uh, you know, uh, with the investment of about 1000 crores, uh, we will be able to get the safety as well as uh, reduce the logistic cost. Uh, this is uh, what is uh, the previous slide was regarding what was or what is being followed. The existing uh, map is regarding what is being proposed. We will be receiving the bulk to Cochin. From Cochin to all the location, it will be uh, sent by road actually. That is, Mangalore to Cochin is at uh, the road distance is about 416 kilometers. That 416 kilometers, the movement will be will not be by road. It will be by ship. The ship instead of going to Mangalore and from Mangalore transporting the product everywhere, the ship will come to uh, Cochin. From Cochin will be moving. Thereby, 416 into 2, that is 832 kilometer per bullet tanker, the movement will be reduced. There are about 200 bullet tankers that are uh, uh, on roads every day, moving to Bangalore and moving from Bangalore. By implementing the project, 200 bullet tankers which are traveling on an average about 800 to 1000 kilometers per day, a total uh, you know, movement will be avoided, a road safety also will be enhanced. This is what I was sharing with you. About 200 bullet tankers are moving from Mangalore for a distance of about 1000 kilometers. By implementing this project, there will be enhancement in safety. These are the various statutory approvals to be obtained. And uh, we got uh, the draft of about 14.5 meter, about uh, 12 meter already be achieved, other 2.5 meter in progress, other one and a half months it will be over. And the ship with a dead weight tonnage of about 80,000 metric ton, uh, we will be able to unload them. This is the overall view of the multi jetty. This, uh, there are two components as far as the project is concerned. One is multi jetty, which was constructed by COPT during 2016 17 at a cost of about 180 crores. Whereas we were facing issues with respect to going ahead with the light terminal, which will be seen subsequently. So I was sharing with you there are two phases. One is with respect to multi jetty, which was completed during 2016 17. Other one is regarding the import terminal, that is multi terminal, we, ship will be coming, we will be unloading the product. After unloading the product, we have to store the product in storage vessels. For that storage vessels, we have to construct a facility, import terminal. This is the site condition as of 2015-16, the LPG import terminal. During 2016, uh, the hesitator went to NGT and they filed a case in the NGT. And a case was disposed of during 2017. It took almost July 2016 to December 2017, about 16 months, the case was going on. Even though the case was going on in the NGT, uh, the NGT did not stop the work, the hearing was going on. Uh, this is a site condition as of February 17. The work was reasonably in progress. Uh, let us see the red colored one. During June 2017, we took up the matter with the Kerala government, we took up the matter with uh, the DGP, CM, a district collector, all those officials, and even though hesitation, we also had several round of discussions with the hesitators. Despite above, during June 2016, uh, I mean, uh, the, the police forced to an extent of about 400 people were mobilized. And after talking to several hundred of discussions, efforts were there to commence or commence the work. However, the work could not be commenced. Uh, there were a lot of uh, uh, issues uh, the lo with respect to each and local population, and the work was to be stopped from June 2017. The NGT case, as was discussed, was disposed during July 2016. Uh, yeah, thereafter, also, we involved. Ministry of Petroleum Natural Gas, 
we involved Kerala CCM, we involved uh, local MP and all those officials and uh, despite above uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, almost for five years, if you take from 2016 to 2019, almost for four and a half years to five years, the work could not go, go ahead. Then we had to uh, talk to administration, we had to arrange about 800 police force, and then the work started during uh, December 2019. So this is the site condition of the, as of June 2019. About 800 police force were uh, mobilized and uh, you know, work was taken up and uh, subsequently now the work is going on full swing. If you compare the time analysis, 34 months suspension of work at site due to the protest and uh, local public from 2016 to uh, 2017 even 2019 also and thereafter once the work was commenced during 2020, COVID and the impact, not only that, when the steel plate which were used for vessel fabrication were kept there for about three years, all the steel plate got corroded and those steel plate could not be used. So we had to uh, freshly order the steel plate from Steel Authority and India Limited and many of the officers who are working in Steel Authority and India Limited got affected by COVID, many of them died also. So they were not able to supply the steel plate in time. So that has taken another uh, six months, totally about 59.5 months. This is a site condition uh, at uh, light as of January 2020. After October 2020 onwards, the works started moving fast. And as on date, out of eight storage vessels, uh, to be constructed, six vessels are already completed, two vessels are nearing completion. Maybe this, this is August, by September we will be completing the two vessels. We, who, we, uh, it is tended, we are planning to commission the project by 1 10 2022. Uh, this is the status, the work progress is substantially good. And as I was sharing with you, there was a cost to overrun of 483 crores, from 700 crores to about 200 crores. The main component is uh, with regard to 132 crores, that is uh, the interest carrying cost. Any project if we commission within one year or two years, there will not be any interest carrying cost, rather, we will be able to get back the amount immediately. When the amount is invested for about 5 crores and we are not able to get back the amount, whatever the investment on land or other thing, it is a sunk cost and the interest carrying cost is about 132 crores. And this is a pipeline project uh, which is from uh, Cochin to Palkard and then to Salem. Up to, from Cochin to Palkard will be commissioning by January 2022. The balance uh, it, it may take one more year. These are the challenges being faced in the cross country pipeline. One is with respect to the challenges that are being posed with respect to the light terminal that is the heavy uh, you know mop resistance. Other one is when we lay a pipeline for about 4 10 kilometers. You know, there are a lot of RTA, there are a lot of issues that are coming up with respect to acquiring land and taking part of the project. Still, uh, we have been able, we are able successful and uh, about 2 ton kilometer the work is near completion. And uh, these are the uh, participation by the public. These are the, some of the scenarios that are, they are being faced, that irritation and other uh, thing. And, uh, Canada, if you compare the rainfall at uh, all over India, uh, Canada rainfall is substantially high, about 3,000 mm per year actually. So the substantial heavy rainfall, that also has an impact over implementation of the project. But still, the works are going on full swing. Uh, one more issue we wanted to discuss here. This is an area where we want help from the COPT. See, let us see during 2012, this is a light construction. I mean, light overview. The distance between the uh, high tide wave to the locality is 40 meters as of during 2012. During 2016, the coastal wave and the plant boundary is 0 meter. That is, the sea wave has been coming in, eroding towards the site 
almost by 40 meters. It's almost where you're touching the uh, plant boundary. And this is about uh, during 2017. It's about uh, uh, 10 meters. During 2022, it is about 3 meters. Meaning, during past 10 years, the sea is trying to come inside. About 40 meters it has come inside. It is touching the plant boundary. For this, there are two ways of protecting the uh, sea, uh, I mean, our uh, plant uh, uh, facilities. One is to go in for the main shore protection, that is by grayons. That grayons uh, is one of the proposals which we have been taking up through ocean engineering, IIT Chennai with uh, Coastal Management Authority. Uh, for the past three, four years we have taken up, but the progress is not much. So we request COPT to extend all assistance in taking with the uh, authority concern to take the project forward. Here the issue is, we have got IOCL, we have got GAIL and also we have got BPCL. Three industries are there. Of course, investment if you see, uh, GAIL is about 4,000 crores and BPCL is about 2,000 crores, IOCL about 2,500 crores. All are very major industry. And we need to have discussion with the Kerala government also. We have to take it forward on priority and take the need for This is one assistance what we want from the Cochin Port Authority. So this in the in the case of grayons, uh, the total distance if you say IOC is about 800 meter and the BPC is about 2000 meters and the LNG is about 2000 meter. Totally it is about 5 kilometers. Every 140 to 150 kilometer we can have grayons like this. Uh, I mean uh, the, the detail of which we will be seeing in subsequent slide. And uh, that can reasonably protect the uh, shore. In the cross section of the grayon, it will be having about 50 meter, it will go inside the depth about 50 meters, the width will be about 36 meters. This is the cross section of the grayons, that is it will be made of 5 layers. Each layer will be having a stone, stone, uh, uh, I mean weight will be varying in the range of 10 kg, 150 kg, 500 kg, 70 kg like that. Total height will be about 6 meters. So this is one which was suggested by ocean engineering, this we can take up and uh, do the needful. This is the uh, sea water, you know, how it was uh, trying to come inside the Commodore, uh, one of the photograph video shot during 2016. Now, having taken up for grayons through Cochin Porters Authority, and that being in progress, we don't want to wait, telling that a COPT is taking with the Kerala government. We have already placed work order to protect our plant boundary by going in for internal storm protection. That is, uh, we got ocean engineering, IIT Chennai, we play, uh, through them we got the consultancy, we place order also, work is in progress. This is what the internal storm protection, how it is going to be. In the sense, there will be 2 meter height of this uh, score protection over and above the mean sea level and below the mean sea level. Total 5 meter will be the height, 2 meter over and above the mean sea level, 2 meter below the mean sea level. So this we have already, the work has already started, it will be completed by December. See the overall progress is about, uh, total is about 86, 836 crores uh, to be completed, 613 crores already completed and balance work are in progress. We hope to complete the work in total by December 2022 and commission the project by uh, middle December or January. Eighty-eight percent is the completion of the work. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I will certainly fail in my duty if I don't, uh, you know, express our sincere thanks to uh, COPT Chairman Dr. Bina in his in the absence here, who has been of extreme help. Any time we approach, immediately you know uh, we have a meeting and uh, we, the issues are getting addressed. We also express our sincere thanks to Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas and also state government and also all the officials. Despite all the constraints, the project is. And in fact, I took over the project only during May, the April 2022. I am four months baby as far as the project is concerned. 
<laughs> and of course, now 600 to 700 labs are being deployed. Works are going on on 24 hours basis. We have been keeping in touch with the district administration and also police officials. Uh, we are very confident by December we will commission the project, which will enhance our road safety, which will reduce the tanker movement, which will bring down the logistic cost by 250 crores per year. I think uh, with this, thank you very much for the opportunity. And in case any questions, you can come back. Thank you. Thank you very much sir, for your best presentation. Uh, uh, just uh, clarifications sought, uh, you can answer. Good morning everybody. Am I audible? Uh, a lot of issue is definitely relating to us. I like to clarify a lot of things. In respect of show protection, Cochin Port was not associated earlier. They have individually went to uh, the, the IIT Chennai. This report was 2016-17, but recently we have interviewed, we have submitted the application to Kerala uh, government, uh, but they have asked few questions. Last time also the same things have happened, but the IIT has not replied that things. That's why it is pending since 2016, but we are working on that. So, uh, but uh, this time also IIT is uh, not uh, uh, responding very fast or uh, not uh, in, but we will resolve this issue. This is relating to short protection. Earlier, Kuchipur was not associated. LNT uh, has been engaged as consultant, but we are just now coordinating. So, we will definitely going to uh, solve this issue, uh, short protection, but there is uh, some challenges. IIT has uh, recommended 3.5 kilometer stage. IIT's total proposal cost is 180 crores. Uh, and basically for me, they are suggesting to fight with the nature, which is not correct. We have to coexist with nature. So our protection, we, we say we will implement these things in phases. And our first phase the recommendation is only one kilometer protection, which we have, he is rightly mentioned. There is a IOCL part and BPCL, one kilometer is a little bit uh, uh, difficulty and we have taken up that work only. The cost is 18 crores. We have prepared the estimate, we have submitted everything. We hope uh, uh, this uh, Kerala government will uh, support us for genuine cause and we will implement that. So this is in relation to this by and in relation to MULT. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, JT was uh, completed in all respect in 2018, and we have placed every all order. Grazing has already started, and he has also mentioned it was 3.5 meters or something like that. Presently, today it is 12 meters. He has also mentioned, and we have also taken up the work of remaining. That means reinstallation of pump, obtaining piece of clearance, everything. They have requested few new, uh, addition of few more things. We will uh, try to uh, include that things also. And our aim to uh, to match your expectation, we expect these entire things to be completed by September of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. We have been getting excellent support from CUPT. We will uh, intensify the coordination and we will take it forward. Thank you, sir. Very happy morning, uh, Mr. Rajendran, and it was a wonderful presentation. The IOCL as well as the Indian Coast Guard, right from its inception, 1978, we have been in a close association, and I'm sure you must uh, compliment and we were complimented globally for supporting the empty diamond case as well. Having said that, I've, uh, I've just got a query, you know, as per the uh, recent uh, Niti Aayog uh, report, uh, from the existing 152 to 154 metric tons of oil equivalent, it's going to triple by 2040. And also there's a lack of coherent uh, infrastructure development. For example, the, the new proposals on LNG are not uh, in connection with the already existing pipelines or the infrastructure vessel uh, availability. And what is your take point or what will be your recommendation to the government of India in case if you wanted to, uh, you know, address the challenges of the long, uh, the longest or uh, the long days, uh, gestation period for LPG terminals. So what will be your take, uh, take away on this and what will be your recommendation? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, sir. 
See, the LPG import terminal capacity as on date is 15 mm TPA, which we are planning to enter to 29 mm TPA in another 10 years. As far as the LNG is concerned, LNG is not going to be a substitute for LPG at all, to a great extent. Meaning, LNG we can substitute petrol or diesel to an extent, reasonably. As on date, about 10,000 LNG stations have been proposed. Uh, and our uh, uh, and we'll and about uh, pipeline maybe another three to four years will be completed lng composition with respect to the energy scenario is 6.5 percent on date in other four to five years it is expected to grow to 15 percent and there are on to 22 percent meaning lng is going to be there it is going to improve it is not going to be a substitute for lpg okay coming to lpg uh, as on date, 50 mm TPA is a capacity which we are going to enhance to about 20 mm TPA shortly, maybe other 3 years, 4 years. And depending on the interface, how LNG is going to be, how LPG is going to be, what is the scenery with respect to petrol and diesel, every 2 years there is a project, I mean every year rather, there is a project review meeting. And additionally, we will be we will have to go in for either capacity augmentation at the existing terminals because capacity augmentation is one which is very easier. Like maybe Cochin, maybe Yenur, maybe Haldia. One is a capacity augmentation. Other one is, if you see the overall Indian geography, the Western side, if you see about the total even LNG consumption is about 10, 40 to 50 percent of the total LNG consumption of India is in Kujarat actually. The terminals are also in Kujarat, most of the terminals, Kujarat, Mumbai, and whereas in southern region, very hardly, you know, I was showing the graph also, except the Mangalore and even Yenur came in during 2012. 25% of the entire India LPG consumption was catered to only by Mangalore till 2012. 2012 only come. So we have to gradually go for additional port at Tutigarin, additional port at maybe Trivandrum, which we have to take a call over a period of time and we have to. That the, the, every year that planning is being done, it will be done, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the query. Uh, very good morning, Mr. Rajendran and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Thanks for the fantastic presentation on the LPG project at Tebushin. This is close to my heart because I was part of the planning. And in fact, I remember that when your senior officers came from Delhi, we sat together for almost 24 hours to finalize an MOU with the, between IOC and Kuchin uh, Portress for implementing this project. Of course, I appreciate the spirit and the fighting power you have <laughs> exhibited even in spite of five years loss yeah. yes. of very good time and also cost overrun by 483 crores. Yes. It is a really appreciate, appreciable thing and uh, hopefully we are also trying to uh, do more coastal movement of uh, LPG through Mangalore and other places. And then uh, together we will work and uh, we will take off all these uh, bullets from the road yes, soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. May I request uh, Sri Vikas Narwan, IAS, sir, Deputy Chairman, Chairperson, Kuchet Port Authority, to please present a memento to Sri Rajendra, uh, Chief General Manager, IOCL Kuchet, as a token of appreciation for this. Uh, presentation of this session. Thank you very much, sir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us have a small tea break of one five minutes uh, because we are uh, running out of the short time. We are lagging already more than 45 minutes. I request all of you to please rejoin after five minutes of uh, refreshments. After tea break, uh, we will be having a panel discussion on port connectivity. The moderator is Sri Kaurav Hegde, Chairman, CII Mangalore. The participants are M.K. Watho, Chief General Manager and Regional Officer, Karnataka, National Highway Authority of India, invited. Sri Vinay Kumar, Deputy Chief Traffic Manager, Konkan Railway Corporation, Sri S. Suthindra, MD, NKG India Coffee Limited, and Sri Praveen Pinto, GM Vigilance, MRPL. I request all the
panel discussion group to be
nestled between the blue waters of the Arabian Sea and the green towering western guards, New Mangalore Port, during the last five decades of its service, has witnessed exponential growth in terms of trade and commerce without compromising key and critical elements of environment, land, water, air, flora and fauna, animals and human habitat. The port has created a green belt around the port and has earmarked 33% of its land area exclusively for greenery. For the last five years, one lakh saplings were planted and the process is still going on. Being ISO 14,001 certified, NMPT had plan and vision in place. Port is and also, I request uh, MK Wathu, Chief General Manager and Regional Officer Karnataka National Highway Authority of India. Sri Vinay Kumar, Deputy Chief Traffic Manager, Konkan Railway Corporation. Sri S. Suthindra, MD. NKG India Coffee Limited, Sri Praveen Pinto, GM Operations, MRPL. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will welcome all the panel discussions team. May I request May I request uh, De uh, Deputy Chairman New Mangalore Port and also may I request uh, Deputy Chairman Cochin Port Authority to please welcome the panel members with a bouquet. Sir, we will welcome you, sir. Moderator Sri Gaurav Hegde, Chairman CII, Sri MK Mathur, Chief General Manager and Regional Officer Karnataka National Highway Authority of India, Sri Vinay Kumar, Deputy Chief Traffic Manager, Konkan Railway Corporation, Sri S. Sudhindra, MD, NKG, India Coffee Limited, Sri Praveen Pinto, GM Operations, MRPL. We welcome you, sir. I request uh, to provide uh, two mics to the stage. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, the forum is open. Uh, may I request you? The Sri Gauru Pekde, Chairman CI Mangal, the moderator, to please start up. Good morning, uh, friends. Uh, it's been a great event uh, that uh, the three major ports of the Western Coast are particularly of South India, which were the natural ports uh, doing business for decades, centuries, you can say. And uh, I feel it, it is quite an important uh, event to commemorate the first 25 years of uh, public-private uh, public partnership. And uh, as, as the importance of the port, the port operations are there, we have been uh, talking about the capacity and the utilization of capacity. Uh, we feel that one of the most important factors of uh, the utilization of the capacity would be the maximum, uh, one of the main uh, criteria would be the port connectivity. This is a very important uh, subject uh, dear to everybody because all port users are always, when you talk about connectivity, it's a kind of a face we make and uh, the anxiety we have, the desperation, uh, the need, uh, the need of uh, a better port connectivity is always aspired. So that is the most convenient way of uh, improving the port capacity. Like uh, if we see all our three ports, 
I think so, Cochin is utilizing their usage capacity at 60%, uh, Goa at uh, 72% and uh, I think so, NMPA is using only 53%. Despite of having all these uh, capacities, I think so, one of the major factors which is not helping the uh, ports is the connectivity. So being such an important uh, subject, uh, we have a very eminent uh, panelist. Uh, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Uh, M.K. Wathor, who is the uh, general manager, chief general manager and regional officer of the National Highways Authority of India for Karnataka. Welcome, sir. Okay. And uh, also we have uh, Mr. Vinay Kumar, who is the deputy chief traffic manager of Konkan Railway Corporation Limited, uh, which is playing an important role in the uh, western region. Also, we have uh, Mr. S. Sudindra, who is the Managing Director of NKG India Coffee, and uh, which is Newman Coffee Group, one of the largest leading uh, coffee companies. Uh, this, uh, they are uh, world over. They have more than 50 companies in 26 countries. Uh, welcome, sir. Also, one of the jewel of our uh, industries in the Karnataka, that is MRPL, uh, Mr. Praveen Pinto, who is representing uh, MRPL, is the General Manager of Vigilance. Welcome, sir. Uh, I think so. Uh, this, this is a close subject to everyone, uh, which uh, uh, particularly two major factors which we talk about the connectivity is one is the highways and one is the railways. So, uh, I think so, we have uh, one presentation from uh, the NHA uh, headquarters, from the headquarters. So, we can start with the presentation uh, of that, uh, uh, I, then we can uh, open up for the discussions, uh, presentation from each of our panelists. Uh, if the link is done, we can just upload it. Yeah. Fine. Yes. Since it's a virtual uh, presentation uh, from the headquarters, I think so we will just connect to them. Meanwhile, uh, few of our uh, major issues would be for all the three ports that uh, we have a beautiful western cards and uh, that itself uh, is a challenge for our connection, connectivity. So all the three ports have uh, the challenges of uh, having better roads, uh, better railway connectivity and uh, I think so uh, uh, Konkan Railway after it uh, has uh, taken up the pro uh, the project was taken up it has eased out a lot uh, particularly to the Goa and also the Karnataka region and Cochin anyway was well connected with the railways and uh, they also would be facing the major problem of uh, highway connectivities. But uh, since uh, we are in Karnataka and uh, the focal would be more on the uh, Karnataka connectivity as uh, all our officials are uh, and the stakeholders are uh, part of the Karnataka uh, region, uh, I think so we have quite a strong challenge and uh, that is what uh, we are looking at short term solutions as well as long term solutions. Uh, long term solutions we have been talking about all the uh, various projects like uh, the tunnel project at uh, Shiradi Ghat which has uh, been uh, taken up for the last 10 years and uh, uh, not much progress in this aspect despite of uh, the uh, persistent uh, uh, lobbying from the stakeholders and also the political uh, uh, will also is there to have one tunnel project and uh, that is that is what is a long term uh, project which we are looking at. But uh, despite of that, uh, the connectivity to Shirani Ghat itself has been a challenge. I think so, Mr. Wathor would be giving us uh, more clarity on that. And uh, also, with regard to uh, the railway connectivity for our region, we have a challenge. Uh, also, we are, uh, also, we have three railways 
uh, operating uh, in this region, that is the Southern Railway, Southwestern Railway, and also the Pungat Railway. Uh, so, with these all these assets and all these uh, uh, positivities, I think so we should be uh, with each of the departments getting together and uh, the stakeholders, the port authorities, and also the uh, various departments of the government. If we work together, I think so surely we will see some light in coming days with regard to our short term problems as well as our long term problems. Uh, uh, shall we? If, is, uh, tick, tick. The virtual meetings have been a blessing as well as some technical glitches normally happen, but uh, we are used to, we are all used to. The new format, uh, maybe uh, it's it's a good thing that the HO is uh, directly uh, do, uh, uh, giving us a presentation on the various projects which has been taking up in Karnataka and uh, and also Kerala and also Goa. So uh, 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 shall we wait for a minute? Or, yeah, yeah. We're just uh, connecting to the HO of uh, NHA. Problem is consisting, sir. Can we move on to the next speaker, sir, to gain to buy the time? Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, in uh, this particular time, I would uh, like to. Uh, I like to, Mr. Mr. Watu, will you start with the uh, before the presentation? You would like to make some comments on uh, uh, or. Uh, yeah. No, if, if you want to continue that, I, I can ask Mr. Vinay Kumar, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Traffic Manager, Konkan Railway, uh, to give his address. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with regard to Konkan Railway, once we all decided it was a difficult terrain, from Mumbai to Mangalore, the connectivity was too difficult. Still, it is difficult only, but Kongan Railway somehow it was uh, made it a reality. Now, so many development also go on, going on in Kongan Railway, especially the entire section is being electrified. Now, good friends are running with the electric logo, and uh, uh, other problem was single line section. That also our batch doubling program is in fast progress. And that also is in, uh, coming in a reality. So, most of the industrialists and all the people, those who are assembled here, you are well aware that the uh, SPCL and IOCL, that uh, LPG and uh, the, these products, coordinately closely associated, and we did excellent program. We are going, going, going on doing it. Last month, we were able to load 50 rakes of LPG and our target is 60, that can be even more. And uh, with regard to UPCL, we are, we are supplying all the coal and now recently we have started the movement of 
poly propylene from MRBL by container trains. These are the issues. Means in Dhatnagiri area, in Goa, everywhere it is going on, uh, uh, the movement is very good. And the connection to us, Kerala and uh, other part of India, that also is open both for passenger and uh, goods train. Now actually, you, you may just think, where we are using the, 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 the material which is being moved from the port is comparatively very less. So, this occasion, this time, I make use of on, on, on new program of Kongan Railway. You know, so many industries are here. That is small and big, so many. MRBL is a quite good company and a big company. They are able to manage one rake of one rake of train uh, container means it is 90 container we have to load, 20 feet car. Or 40 feet car worth of 45 container we have to load. But so many other companies. So many other small companies, they may, they may not be able to move by train because that much quantity may not come. So, Kongan Railway, we have started a new program of, along with the Conco, Container Corporation, ke saath, ek program kiya hua hai. we are starting a special train movement, container train movement here to Navasheva. It can be up to Goa, it can be up to uh, Kochin also. The party, those who are having even a single container, single container handling, even single container, they can book it through one go and the container will be coming to your doorstep, trailer also will be arranged and loading we will do at Panabur uh, yard and will be delivered at Navasheva. So this is a program of aggregating material of various customers. So I feel uh, this can be done and this can be utilized also. So then definitely that, that is the thing. The port connectivity and, uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, the small people, they are not thinking of it. At the same time, their product is there and they want to send it. So here we are there, Kongandale always will be there. We will start this program by 20th of this month, number one. Number two, Kongandale has developed one more new type of movement of roll on roll, 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 roll of truck is loading on the truck train. There are also one constraints regarding the movement of LPG. In this field also we are now trying to make our own wagon with the well wagon means uh, well type wagons where you can load them. Now the constraints is the height of the truck cannot be managed with this one and we are able to manage uh, move only 11.5 feet ka truck move kar sakta hai. Now, now in the well wagon we can manage up to 13.5 thereby easily LPG tanker can be moved. The last presentation Sarah also was telling the LPG movement in Kerala side it is quite difficult. And everybody, everybody was thinking of how to move some alternative method. Definitely sir, that is one method is there. And we are on the way of it. Uh, and all this, this one, what we are expecting that all authorities support, cooperation. That is the best way for obtaining our maximum utilize the, the resources utilization. The Kongan Railway always will be there. And we are ready also. Electrification is over. And uh, now Sarka presentation may next uh, port connectivity. Actually, you are well aware that the port connectivity is Mangalore port and uh, Chennai port could not be connected. Why? Because of that uh, hill area. And there, if there is any possibility, the train movement is too difficult because of single line and the guard section. So many issues are there. So our, our uh, the first CMD. So he is, he is leader and sir, and he has given a good suggestion and he has already forwarded to me. Yesterday I, I was going, going, going through it. Then it is realized that it is quite easy for Kongandai to execute that work. Why? Because in now one project is about, about completing at Himadal, Hima, Himalaya. USL, KRCL is executed at the Chana Bridge. And all this one, all entire strength of uh, the, this one on tunnel or in embankment or in bridges. No plain area is there. There when Kongandali is able to manage such a, this one, this section may not be much difficult for us and we can execute also. So that also we can think of it. 
always congratulate will be there along with you and of course our program is that one only nothing we are only transporters we want to transport man and material from mangalore to bombay or bombay to mangalore and uh, maximum material which is available on the location shall be moved by train that is our interest so definitely what are the requirement of this area any type of development in this area definitely will affect the kongan railway in positive way so we will be always with you kongan railway definitely with you and uh, that's all dosra main kehne ko further sir ka presentation is better thank you great sir thank you the the issue which he raised was uh, connecting to mr sridhar and our past chairman mr jeevan sadana i had written to him with regard to a suggestion how fast uh, can we have a railway line uh, existing railway line upgraded or realigned uh, to connect to bangalore in 4 to 5 hours and mr sridharan had uh, given a suggestion that it can be done with doubling of uh, the present uh, uh, railway line uh, the earlier gradient i think so technically he was talking about 1 is to 50 it can be realigned to 1 is to 60 as per the present norms and uh, the electrification and doubling of the line would surely do it and uh, it's been taken up with the nmpt chairman and uh, also the deputy chairman who has taken keen interest and uh, also ci uh, chairman from the uh, karnataka uh, chairman has already taken up with the cm and also with the chief secretary uh, that the dpr has to be prepared so as mr vinay kumar has told we have uh, uh, the expertise in uh, konkan railway in dealing with such projects because they have uh, they are the first company to execute a challenging uh, route uh, uh, particularly the western ghats and uh, they have executed it in a very uh, uh, in, a, in a timely manner and uh, that i think so the project can be pursued with the state government as well as the railway ministry uh that is one suggestion uh, which was taken up uh thank you mr vinay kumar for your uh, valuable uh, suggestions and also whatever uh, what presentations you what kepkat railway is doing uh, i think so we can have a, a more uh, uh, more more discussion on this with regard to all our three regions like the southern railway south western railway and kongan railway together we may have in future we can have a more uh, coordination and discussion with them um i think so uh, sir I, i we will take it up later if it is ready okay then uh, i think so we will move on to the stakeholders uh, who are the most important and uh, i am very happy that uh, mr sudindra from the nkg group managing director in kg india coffee uh, one of the major exporters of coffee coffee uh, and also traders in coffee all over the world is uh, able to join and uh, put in his views uh, particularly since uh, last 10 years i think so earlier the coffee used to move the major commodity and uh, the major uh, coffee exports used to be taken up from other ports uh, chennai particularly and not from mangalore but uh, last 10 years it's been a great uh, effort from all uh, the stakeholders as well as the uh, port authorities to facilitate major coffee exports from this region from our port npd port so uh, maybe there are a few challenges particularly with regard to connectivity i think so mr sudindra would uh, uh, highlight upon all the prospects and uh, how good we can do with better connectivity over to you mr sudindra good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and uh, thanks for uh, giving the opportunity to share our perspective uh, on the port connectivity uh, so one thing uh, if you are representing don't be don't think that i am talking on behalf of the business but uh, the most impact of this ultimately goes to the people residing down in the hills so western ghats is challenging western ghats is where coffee is grown so until the coffee is exported in a right quality right branding and the right price it has a direct impact on the growers so first is the image of the country and all the hard work that has been done by the small medium and the large growers will get impacted uh, as rightly been put on the perspective just a small correction a lot of coffee used to get exported from kochi not from uh, uh, chennai 
And uh, last one decade, we have made a lot of efforts with uh, thanks to NMPT, who has uh, NMPT and all the lines and the logistic supports uh, that has uh, helped us to move from uh, Kochi to Mangalore. Again, going back, a, when we have such a great leadership under our prime ministership with a vision of a uh, uh, lot of vision on development of the highways and also, if I am correct, there is one scheme which uh, Prime Minister has announced, uh, Sagaramala. I also saw some of the board. Okay. The whole idea of the Sagaramala, if I, say, if I can see the objective of the Sagaramala is uh, enhance uh, port connectivity, freight friendly express freight projects connecting the major ports and connectivity to dedicated freight corridors. So this is the Sagarmala vision of the Prime Minister. And another vision of the Prime Minister is we need to double or triple our exports. Uh, export revenue is uh, most important for the country. And as I rightly said, uh, why we moved from Chennai to uh, Cochin to Mangalore? The reason is same. So like uh, uh, Cochin is about 500 to 600 kilometers from here. We have to, we always had a problems on some or the other bridge getting collapsed during the rainy season. There is no assured way that we can export it. Okay. So we thought uh, 600 kilometers too long a distance, then we approached uh, Mangalore. When we started to do that, I can give you a statistic, last 10 years there is like uh, how much of the period we can export with 100% accuracy. It is only about 7 to 8 months. So last three to four months, we don't have the road connectivity at all. Whether it, were, whether it was Cochin, whether we came back to Mangalore, the problem persisting and it is continuing. One year we close the road because we want to do the concreting. Second year, uh, the road is done. The, there is a seepage, so you close the door, road again. Then another part of the thing, it collapses. So if this sort of uncertainty is there, trade cannot be done. We are, we are exporting to most of the countries, including mostly to the European nations. We are exporting to Korea, we are exporting to Middle East, we are exporting to US. And 70% of the coffee and 70% of the coffee, 20, 20 to 30% of the spices grown in India has to get exported. So unless we, the growers who grow the coffee, if it is not exported on timely line. And if we don't project India as an image, okay, this will have a direct impact on us. So this is a very, very serious issue. I know like uh, we have seen, like uh, we can just take an example, okay, six months later dark, there is no road, so you just have to visit only six months in a year. Okay, these are the things we, we, we hear. But what is happening within Karnataka? Four months, roads to Mangalore is closed. And this is not one year. This is happening for last 20 years. Cochin, I said, it was happening. Okay, if we talk about rail connectivity, from ICD Bangalore, we were moving the same story. And now Mangalore, every year, last five years, six years, seven years, you tell, you, you can take things. Like again, what happens is, uh, there is a National Highway Authority, okay, then there are three districts which gets connected. You have got a Hassan, you have got a Madikeri, and you have got a Chikmangalore, everybody. And one day, nobody wants to take the risk, nobody is interested in supporting the trade. Everybody issues an order, close the thing, what, what is the export, we should do it. We have a contract which is running, we need to ship it, we have no alternate ways to do it. And this is, be, this is a pretty, like we have raised these uh, issues with uh, most of the forums and uh, we have requested for some sort of a permanent solution which is in the long term and in the short term also we want assurance that uh, something has to be done here. We know we are in, we are in Western Ghats, we are aware of it, we are, then some sort of a permanent solution if everybody can uh, like we are not the expert, we are, we are, in a expo, ex, we are experts in uh, finding a buyer, ensuring that the coffee is sold and paying a good money for the farmers uh, and ensuring all their uh, economic conditions are fulfilled. But uh, we are not the expert in road connectivity. Uh, uh, we, we focus on exporting it and we want all the dignity, dignitaries from various departments who are present here, I request all of them to give a, please give a thought Please find us some good solution. And I am so, so, so upset because uh, as a country under our dynamic leadership of Prime Minister, which is doing so much of things which cannot be done, here we are not even done anything. We, we Today for a lay Ladakh, we are going to all with the roads. Okay, and in Mangalore, in this city like this, we are not, we are not, 
100 kilometer stretch, we are not able to find a the road or some permanent solution. I think this is a this is a very very disappointing note. And I think if we all can, with all the industrial bodies, with all the uh, all the dignitaries who are present here, my request is please take it up, get some uh, solution. It is not that there is no solution, and today India is not dust for the funds. Okay, if if this uh, project is presented, funds is funds should not be a problem. Even if you do a tolling, people are willing to pay the toll. So it is not the challenge. Money is not the challenge. It is the coming together and finding which is the solution which has to be done. Is the is the, is the important point. I request once again with. Uh, all of you, please, we will give all the support. If you want us to uh, come along with you to present anything with anybody from the industry side, we are here. And uh, just to give an example, just to give an another highlight, 70% of the coffee is getting exported from Mangalore port. And uh, it is uh, roughly about 2 lakh tons of coffee we are talking about, in addition to the, the spices, then the instant coffee, a lot of other things. So, as the industry, we, we are also exporting some of the cashews. A lot of things are uh, happening and today there is a stress that uh, anything on the which is happening on the export, all the problems around it on the infrastructure has to be solved. So that is uh, one of the key thing now. Again, please uh, from the industry perspective and, and all the people who are growing coffee, small, medium and marginal farmers on their behalf, I request you to please consider our request and please take it up. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you for taking your time and uh, uh, addressing us. I think so. <clears throat> These are the issues being highlighted for several years. But rightly, as you said, uh, how do we uh, take it up uh, uh, in a more effective way? I think so. The One of uh, the main theme of this meet is also PPP, wherein uh, the various agencies and the private stakeholders we need to work together. It's just not telling that it's not done or it is not happening. And uh, how do we have to find a way how things can happen. So we have to work with the, all these departments and uh, all the people who are responsible for uh, getting us this work done. So I think so more, uh, uh, more interest from the stakeholders should be for pushing these projects to come up. That's uh, one of the things we should work on it. I think so. It's a great prospect you have given and the concerns you have uh, taken up. Uh, the other main issue with regard to infrastructure is immediate uh, immediate uh, connectivity to the port. This is, Mr. Sudhiran took up the issue of uh, uh, connecting to the uh, various districts and also the state capital. I think so the port uh, uh, had the shipping ministry had taken up this initiative of uh, port connectivity under a PPP model from the port uh, in all the major ports, uh, the road which we are just adjacent road, that was one of the first initiatives from the port and then NHA, uh, which has been uh, a blessing for us because all these roads were uh, too congested because all the port users as well as the uh, locals use the same road. So it has been a uh, effective uh, uh, measure but uh, today it is a four lane the need is for an eight lane or for an alternative uh, road uh, which has to connect the port these are some of the major issues which uh, MRPL one of our major exporters as well as as a major importers uh, they face it I think so Mr. Praveen Pinto from uh, general manager vigilance from MRPL would be in a better position to take up these issues. Uh, over to you, Mr. Prime. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, I'm audible? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I thank all the delegates, dignitaries on of the dais, on the dais, for giving me an opportunity to speak up. Now, when we talk about connectivity, that is physical connectivity, we have not four, we have five physical connectivities. We have port, we have airports, we have got railways, we have got roads. But apart from that, the fifth one is the pipeline. Now, when it comes to Mangalore refineries, MRPL, uh, a subsidiary of ONGC, 
we are a 15 million metric ton refinery though many people in karnataka may not know because we are not into marketing uh, uh, we are growing in marketing and uh, that is one part of it our majority of our products like when i take about the input of crude that is that we are importing we have a spm which is about 17 km from uh, the port uh, within the port limits so wherein we can berth the ship as uh, high as 2 lakh 70000 metric tons uh, equivalent then we have uh, jetty number 10 jetty number 11 where we, uh, where we export our finished products or we give by coastal terminals or coastal uh, domestic now uh, coming to the the total products what we process and manufacture the majority of them are either been transported through pipeline that is the crude is coming through the ship it enters mrpl through a pipeline so there is no connectivity of road or railways involved in that at all next we have products the majority of the products may be about 40 to 50% of our liquid products are getting again going by coastal that is through pipeline and that is getting exported to various countries including middle east southeast asia african countries earlier we were even exporting to mauritius the entire country all the uh, demand of petrol diesel fuel oil and aviation turbine fuel was been met by mrpl port connectivity now this particular aspect coming to the three important ports that is goa mangalore and kochi now this becomes very important for one major reason one is that the as earlier uh, the custom uh, uh, deputy commissioner rightly said the majority of the population is living in the coast uh, then again within the coast if you look many of the districts like wherein we have about uh, uh, 20 to 30 kilometers away from the sea 80% of the people or the population is within 5 kilometers from the sea now look at the entire stretch i am uh, talking about uh, uh, ns66 way back way from kerala till goa even if i take only port to port this is one of the busiest uh, 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 roadways uh, perhaps in the uh, other than maybe few uh, national in the national capital area now what i really feel is as rightly uh, one of my counterpart said uh, that we require the image of india because when people come to the place first they see the roads Uh, and that is where the image has been built now with respect to ports uh, we do not have a issue we pump the crude oil or ship is pumping the crude oil the products have been pumped and again in terms of uh, products uh, let me tell you there is one we have mbpl pipeline which is been catering to hinterland of karnataka uh, about 3.3 million metric tons of product every year that is petrol kerosene and diesel and there is also plans to transfer aviation turbine fuel through that pipeline and a large amount of lpg congestion has come down because hpcl which is transferring the lpg through the trailers uh, they were using wagons or the trailers today we have the pipeline that is going to 
Hassan and then it is again getting a diverse, uh, connecting to Mysore and other districts. Now these are the two important aspects. Then other thing, we look at uh, these three states and particularly the coastal region. One, the literacy rate is very high. We, we have a good education system. We are best in the world in terms of education system. The hospitals, there can be a hospital or uh, 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 even those are very good when you compare to many of the or they are in par in with many of the uh, developed countries. Now what we lack here is, I'm not saying everywhere. Now when we talk about four lane road, uh, everywhere there may not be congestion. But when you look at the places, we start from Mulki uh, till even uh, bump well. I'm not limiting myself to the local level. Uh, we have four lane, but it is exactly not four lane. Many places it ends with two lane. So the the bottleneck will be the least uh, speed in which the vehicle can travel. You have four lane, and in between you have uh, one junction, maybe a stretch of one kilometer, going to only two lane line because of whatever the land acquisition or whatever it is. The entire stretch is getting bottlenecked by that particular uh, 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 speed gets limited by that particular bottleneck. That is one part of uh, thing. Second thing is National Highway 66 is connecting to most of the industries. Kochi, we, uh, Kochin, we have Kochin refinery. There are a lot of fertilizer plants. Uh, Mangalore, we have a fertilizer plant. Plus, we have a lot of connecti connectivity from Middle East. Uh, air connectivity is very good in this region. So uh, this plays a very paramount for the road connectivity to improve. So what I'm saying is, even the four lane, the four lane is not as per the best of the standards. Like we can see the, uh, we do not have enough flyovers. We do not have smooth uh, running of the, uh, 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 seamless running of the traffic. There are a lot of traffic jams. In the evenings we can see that we have to wait for one hour, two hours. And uh, all these, cities, whatever, we talk about Cochin, we talk about Mangalore, or we talk about Udupi, or Karwar, or places of Goa, these are uh, cities in Goa, these are two tire cities. And when we are talking about growth of the country, which is perhaps 7 to 8 percent, a growing economy, a two tire city like Mangalore, or this region will be growing much more faster than the average growth rate of the country. And when the average growth rate of the country is growing that fast, the lower middle class or the poorest people are coming into middle class, the lot more vehicles are going to get added. It is two wheelers, it is four wheelers, and it is entire set of ecosystem. It is like what I tell, even though we are a large industry, uh, to put in a nutshell, our 80% of the feed and the product that is gone, is never been coming to the roads at all. May perhaps only 10% of the product is taking the highways. But despite that, the highways are congested. And the prominent areas like Nantur, and uh, plus these highways are getting again connected to two more highways, National Highway 75, National Highway 73, and as uh, Sir rightly said, uh, Shiradi Ghat. See, we have a good connectivity with Bangalore, or Chennai would definitely bring lot of prosperity to this entire coastal region. Entire coastal region. The returns what we have in terms of skill uh, 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 or in terms of uh, uh, sea, seafood, now the, again the seafood is there in only the coastal area. So uh, the connectivity with respect to highways I feel is very very important. Thank you, Mr. Pravi. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think so, one of the initiatives the NMPT, NMPA chairman, particularly in, in his personal interest, Dr. Ravana has taken up uh, the idea of having a flyover from uh, Kulur to Baikampadi, which was, uh, most of us felt it is, uh, will it happen because of seeing all the projects. But, uh, 
pursuing that project, preparing the DPR, I think so they are in the process, which is a long-term vision uh, which has to be adopted, uh, particularly be, since uh, uh, we have a lot of industries as uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Pravin Pinto, that a lot of industries are in this area and the road users are like, uh, the other day we had a survey, particularly in Baikampadi Junction itself, in normal timing the uh, density of the vehicle is 1000 vehicles an hour, now it is around, uh, peak hours would be around 3000 vehicles an hour. It's, it's quite a huge density of uh, vehicles. I think so these are the projects which, uh, which has to be pursued and uh, taken up with the government. As uh, Mr. Sudhindra has already told us, there are several measures taken from the union government like the Sagamala, which uh, we can adopt all these projects under that uh, uh, scheme. As well as uh, now a uh, new initiative from the central government with the Gati Shakti, I think so we should all come together and pursue this and uh, uh, get the work done because this is the time where we can really take up all these projects and get our work done. Uh, that is uh, one thing which should ease out our uh, uh, process. Uh, Mr. Wathor, so I think so we planned for, I think so it was a good initiative. So I think so over to Mr. Wathor. Thank you very much for inviting me for this conclave. Uh, I am uh, Madhukar Vathore and uh, uh, representing the uh, Minister of Road Transport and Highways here in uh, heading at uh, Bangalore. Uh, so I have some uh, four or five slides uh, I would like to share with you and then uh, I have a questions or uh, your uh, concerns, please. Sure, sir. Sure. Sir, uh, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways uh, is implementing the national highway projects for development of uh, not only the national highway network, but uh, it is uh, having the connectivity to the ports also. We have already developed the connectivity to JNPT, particularly I was very much involved in the development of the connectivity to JNPT, then Goa port. And uh, now, uh, the new uh, Navin uh, Mangalore port trust also. So as a part of Gati Shakti plan, port connective projects have been given the top priority given their importance in facilitating trade and augmenting support to the multimodal transport. The government has also prioritized such port connective projects in the country so that at least with the, it's, a, it's a policy matter and is being finalized. The projects proposed to be developed under Bharat, these all port connectivity projects are now to, proposed to be connected and considered under the Bharat Mala Pariyojana. The state of Karnataka has coastline from Maharashtra Goa border up to the Kerala border it is about 300 kilometers and uh, number of ports are certainly are likely to uh, are, are there. Of that, NS66 port lining has been envisaged by the government since long and the project are generally up to uh, the completion level. Goa border to Kundapur is about 187 kilometers of that 173 is completed and as rightly said by Pinto sir, uh, because of the reasons well known and well placed on the records, the project could not be completed. Land acquisition is one of the issue and uh, we are not in a position to complete uh, the project. This is on one part, but as far as the stakeholders is concerned, his concern is very much taken into account that whatsoever be the reason, there is a bottleneck and that is there. So this fact cannot be uh, subsided. So yes, it is the concern that once the bottlenecks, particularly in the Karwar district, is completed, my whole of the project travel from Goa to Kerala will be placed to four lane. Uh, so far, only 17 kilometer is balanced, which is required to be uh, completed, and it is only because of the reasons that some demands are raising. Uh, uh, for the uh, by, by the local uh, representatives and the local uh, uh, demands. The Kundapur to Kerala border, 90 km of that four lane is already completed. Some minor service roads are in uh, progress. Then part length of the Suratkal to Nantur. This already has been developed to port lane, uh, this four lane facility and it was considered uh, long back uh, under the port connectivity program of the uh, National Highway Development Program. So, present connectivity to Bangalore to Bangalore. This is the main concern that uh, always I am having uh, ample uh, uh, representative from, uh, sorry, representations from the local representatives uh, for connectivity from Bangalore to Bangalore. 
this NHI has taken very well note of that and there are three connectivities to Bangalore to Bangalore. The one is through 75, the other is 73, NHI 73 and then coming to uh, uh, Bantwal Cross and the other is through uh, Mysore Medicare and uh, uh, they are up to uh, Bantwal Cross. These are the connectivity. Now I, I will just uh, for the sake of information, this NS 75, this is total 312 kilometers. Of that, Hassan to Maranhalli of 160 kilometers about has already been completed to four lane facility. Maranhalli to Adhol is 26 kilometers. The two lane existing was there, but now it is uh, is being developed to four lane facility. The, the issue raised in this between uh, Mangalore to Bangalore is of Shirdi Ghat section, for which. It was decided there are two plans. One is for going to the tunnel and the other is for development of the existing road to four lane facility to have a respite, immediate respite. And this was decided in the uh, one of the meeting held with the state government agencies by the uh, ministry also. So uh, this 26 kilometer, upon development of this 26 kilometer, this through four lane connectivity will be in place very soon. Because from uh, this uh, Adhol to Bantal Cross, 64 kilometers, the work is in already in progress. Uh, the other other route is there, this Bangalore Mysore road, Mysore Bangalore, uh, sorry, Bangalore Mysore. It is already uh, at the 80 percent of the project highway has been completed to generally six lane configuration. It is an access control type of road, and it is generally 80 percent, more than 80 percent is completed. Then from Mysore to Medicare, then other other the connectivity to uh, port is Mysore Medicare. We have we have uh, already invite, had invited the bits, but because of some required modification in the uh, detailing, so this project are uh, proposed to be awarded during this financial year. This is about 90 kilometers, and thereafter it is a forest land. Then uh, the other is uh, Bangalore Tumkur which is Bangalore Tumkur, sorry. Bangalore Tumkur is already up, up, up to uh, Tumkur, it's 60 km, is a four lane. The six lane of the project is already in, uh, awarded and is likely to commence soon. From Tumkur up to Shimoga, NHI has already awarded this uh, work in four packages and the project is uh, 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 in progress. Uh, thereafter, the project have is with the state government and state government has to also take care of that uh, 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 connectivity up to uh, Bantwal Cross or otherwise there are to then uh, the port connectivity. So, uh, this is the uh, Bangalore to Bangalore Karuna of NS75. The present port connectivity project existing under implementation and proposed by the NHI. As a part of this port connectivity, the NHI and the SPV of uh, uh, New Bangalore Port Road Company Limited has already completed 36 km of port under the port connectivity. Now, uh, th this connectivity is in existing. In addition to that, the NHI has taken the port connectivity program from Haveri to Kumtha. Haveri is on NH48 and this is a part of connectivity. This has been identified under uh, this port connectivity program. So Haveri to Kumtha, this work has already been awarded, which is connecting to the Belikeri port. So uh, this project is also awarded 75 kilometers from Haveri to Sirsi and from Sirsi to Kumtha it is 60 kilometers. So uh, this all, uh, the, both the projects have already been awarded. One connectivity from Kassar port to Honavar port of 4.5 km was envisaged on the very precise and request by the state government to provide, uh, it, it, it was the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, understanding between the state and center, NHI, that state government will provide the land and uh, uh, it is given to, uh, this project has already been awarded but could not be taken place on site because some of the uh, technical issues, rather not technical but it is an environmental and uh, NGT issues. So the other is the Karkala to Bikaner Kate. This Sanno to Bikaner Kate is it's called Sanno, one of the villages Sanno, and nearby it's a Bikaner Kate. This work has already been envisaged, awarded, but on account of some land efficient issues, this project could not commence physically on site. So with this, I suppose there are all the provisions in, in place for connecting the Mangalore to Bangalore, this is the main connectivity or otherwise NS66 is generally completed. Yes, I do agree because of some or the other reason NS in the district, Karwan district, some particularly in Honar town and the nearby area demands as these projects were of 2014-15. Uh, 
and as days passes the demand of the people yes those are though it is legitimate but we have to complete the existing four lane projects what was assigned to the existing contractors with this uh, yes sir thank you very much for having the patience thank you very much sir i think so uh, the mr nk vatur has given us the prospects of uh, what are the projects uh, ongoing projects and uh, what are the other uh, long term projects which have been taken up uh, particularly with regard to the shiradi ghat and uh, also connecting uh, mysore also connecting to shimoga which should be an alternate uh, road because presently we are totally blocked from all sides i think so these are the long term visions we should have with regard to the uh, connectivity of all this and also uh, for karkala that sanur bikarnagatte is also an important uh, aspect of it because uh, we have an export promotion industrial park in ganjimat where we are not able to move the containers to the port because the uh, road is only too late and uh, i think so a uh, lot of uh, things have been worked out and uh, has to be taken up uh, uh sir i think so we, we uh, if we have all addressed uh, and i think so we will go for a 10 minute q and a uh, one by one uh, all the uh, i mean all our panelists would be ready for that uh, so uh, now it's the time for q and a all the stakeholders can uh, ask their relevant questions and uh, one request is let it not be re repetitive uh, i think so once you know that a question is asked please don't repeat uh, i think so we'll go over, over to the stakeholders here sir i am m shekhar pujari president of neemangal board studios association the burning uh, for the burning uh, uh, issue is sirali ghat we are suffering because of bad road through sirali ghat and every year four months is almost closed and uh, you are telling that it will be made very soon but last 10 years we have uh, crying for this and shouting for this so no progress has been achieved just 26 km whereas our uh, uh, road transport minister says every day he is uh, progressing around 10 26 uh, 30 km this is actually nothing what he is doing now presently developing all the roads this is a small work why it is delayed every year yeah this 26 km is existing two lane concrete road and uh, the present traffic is plying on that road the nhi has taken up the dpr for four laning of this portion and we are going for that now the dpr has already it is about 80% dpr is completed because after having been visited by honorable minister to this place Uh, uh in the february in the month of february so we have already initiated the activities for taking up the work of four leading of the existing lane because tunnel is costing much more so it was uh, uh, it was declared on that time only so as far as the present situation is concerned what i am entitled to say is i am having the dpr in advanced stage of its completion and uh, within a month or so so we are going to submit to the headquarter but it will be the facility which i am requiring to go for the existing two lane to four lane uh, as far as the 26 km is concerned this is the only untackled area otherwise on other part of the area and this was so far with the state pillory government of karnataka what absolutely was funded by the marth only but on other side of the project that adhered up to the bandwal and uh, marhali up to hasan so those projects are in progress which was which are uh, still with nhi so those are projects have already been awarded only can expect to complete sir so once the project is awarded because it it may require some forest clearances particularly this ghat section is having some forest so the government of karnataka has already uh, had some commit uh, this assurance that they will extend their all support for obtaining the clearances and uh, Uh, on on the part of nhi we are in advanced stage of uh, dpr uh, good afternoon everyone i am sudhakar board member of nmba it is work to organize regional level maritime ppp conclave 
conclave 2022 as directed by our ministry on its 25th year of success in recognition of its agreement to implement developmental projects on PPP basis for our port development constructing and widening the national highways is very important of course nhai is developing it bit, but during monsoon we face a lot of problems for transporting exim cargo to our port hence i request the concerned officers to find solutions to the problem solutions to this problem we can also improve cargo traffic in our port thank you Sir, uh, this PPP mode was very much successful in earlier days. Now, to avoid any other uh, issues relating to the development of project, but particularly these projects highways from uh, Adhol to Bantwal, we have uh, considered it on uh, uh, EPC mode only. So there is no uh, financial issue is not there. As far as the land acquisition is concerned, if land is available, NHI is very much eager and ready to complete the project. Have we have got no issue particularly, and that is why this project has been considered under EPC mode on all three uh, port connectivity projects. Sir, good afternoon. I am Sanmati Kumar from Mangalore Chemicals and Fertilizers Limited. As one of the panelists in this uh, session, so GM sir of MRPL has well explained about the traffic congestions in Mangalore, particularly the because of the one is the port. Lot of industries are present here, and in this particular stretch from Baikampadi till to Pulo, Kaivasi junctions. So we, and many of in the industries, it is required for the smooth flow of one is the goods traffic, connectivity to port, many industries, and the public movement. Though there is a SEZ here, so for all this, there is an urgent and need. Uh, there is an immediate need for the construction of an ROB on this NH. There are two. One is in a requirement of a six lane, and second one is the ROB because. One is the easy congestion, easy movement of the exim cargo to the port and also to the industry. So this proposal, as an MCF, we have we have requested to NHI and we have also requested to Southern Railways and in fact the Southern Railways has recommend they have done the survey of this traffic whether this will be eligible for ROB and also we have a railway line that is maybe this is the one only railway line which is crossing to the national highway and that too this is the busiest railway that is it is crossing just in front half a kilometer from here. We have proposed to the NHI from our end, and also it has taken up with the NMPA. NMPA has taken up with your ministry through railways. We have also proposed; they have also done this survey. So, if a railway, if an ROB has been constructed in this particular stretch, maybe around three kilometers, and even the NMPA has done they have they have this uh, survey on this. So, what we request, not just as an MCF. As an industry, as a whole in Bangalore surrounding, it will be a great benefit. Traffic will be very easy. <laughs> We request to take it up at this at the earliest place. Sir, as far as the ROB and Bikampadi is concerned, sir, and your uh, Bikampadi junction, I was expecting this question because before coming over to this place, I had been to that site. Third th third time, it's not my first time. Third time I had been to this site and uh, get to understand the things. Earlier, this project was envisaged for construction of new ROB at that location. Because of the reasons, that project could not be considered and completed during that time. It was only the opposition or whatsoever be the local local uh, uh, whatsoever the reasons on record that project could not be considered. This you are your requirement is envisaged. You are you are envisaging that requirement of construction of ROB at this stage in 2022 rather. But NHI has already envisaged that requirement in what ten years back, ten to twelve years back. And the provision was made for the ROV, but could not be completed. Now, yes, the traffic has been increased to many fold. We are proposing uh, uh, in consultation with the uh, NMPA authority. So uh, uh, this project is under uh, the uh, special purpose vehicle of the NHA and uh, uh, the new uh, Mangalore port. So uh, that has already been considered, and this discussion was held with the headquarter. For providing the uh, seamless facility, seamless uh, uh, platform. So yes, it is absolutely as the requirement of the uh, time now. Sir, I am Navneet, uh, representing uh, JSW. Sir. Yeah, anyhow, I had a talk with you, sir. My one simple question is: 
that there is a total disconnect of the highway in Shirdi Ghat. Unfortunately, in Sampaji also we are facing problem. Now, JSW is a major player in New Mangalore Port. Both the coal terminal and the container terminal is with us. This is a season where the agri based is been exported. Even the coffee with another two months time we will be shipping it. The critical road which we use is Shirdi Ghat. We had a talk, and the Chamber of Commerce had a, a, a video conference with the uh, with the Honorable Minister of the State Government, where the Shirdi Ghat had totally collapsed, and he was kind enough to give us a remedy that is a bypass for 2.5 kilometers, which uh, we are expecting that it will be resuming any time. So my simple question is, since New Mangalore Port is a gateway of Karnataka, and we are proud of that. Our main disconnect is, is the, is the Shirdi Ghat. Now we are proudly saying that the whole country has been connected with the national highway. This is the critical part is 25 kilometers, which is hanging since past seven years. And every year we have the same uh, tune uh, is, is sung to the entire uh, the, the, the train. This year we had an unfortunate thing that we, we, we commissioned uh, on March 28th and we were very aggressively going uh, to uh, for the business promotion and many of we were successful to a large extent when the cargo started flowing unfortunately you have suspended the operation of movement of cargo now sir i with this background i would like to one put a simple question to you sir when will this happen when will we open this uh, uh, road for heavy vehicles multi axle why because i'm asking you is we we are, have lined up with our all our uh, trade partners to ship the cargo to Mangalore. Our inventory was getting better, but unfortunately this disruption has really hit us. Right from uh, from Hosur and from uh, other parts of the Karnataka, we are now trying to bring it to Mangalore. We are successful. One question is when are you going to resume it? Second is when is the permanent solution com uh, coming forth? That is, will it happen by next uh, June, uh, the permanent solution? If you enlighten us, sir, with this uh, two simple answer, we will be confident to go into the market and bring the cargo to Mangalore, which is which is the interest of the trade. NKG gentleman is there, Sudhindran, my friend is there. He is a supporter of Mangalore and the entire fleet. I, I, ch I think I should connect, uh, correct you. It is 2.45 lakhs of coffee is moving from Mangalore. Okay. Uh, same way, we have got all the cargo to Mangalore. Uh, so uh, these two questions are be very specific, so that uh, all the trade will be benefited, and we will have a roadmap to market it and bring the cargo to Mangalore. Thank you, sir. The issue of uh, this heavy container traffic was discussed with the honourable uh, PWD Minister, Government of Karnataka. <laughs> One decision was taken during that meeting that due to the heavy rainfall and the landslides occurring from time and again in the particular location, so the decision was taken to uh, use the existing road one way and the other state government has developed 2.5 kilometers, some uh, uh, detour has been made by them and they, are, they have placed that road in good condition. This was discussed because this uh, uh, Charmadi Ghat portion was again uh, was not feasible and the other uh, route through uh, Mysore that was also not feasible because of the uh, reasons that there are more sharp curves than that, that of uh, the uh, uh, Shiradi Ghat section. So sir, as far as this re restoring uh, the uh, traffic, heavy loaded traffic is concerned, it only depends अगर रेनफॉल थोड़ा सा कम हो जाता है, रेनफॉल अगर थोड़ा सा मतलब अगर वो मदद करता है, तो माय मशीनरी इज़ इन प्लेस, पर्टिकुलरली आई एम हैविंग टू किलोमीटर्स अ क्रिटिकल सेक्शन, इफ एनीथिंग हैपेंस टू दैट, बिकॉज़ सम टेम्पररी मेजर हाँ ऑलरेडी बीन टेकन, यू एवरीबडी Traveling on that road, you are all all truck owners association and this uh, manufacturer association are coming to uh, Bangalore by this road only. So they are aware that the critical section is there. We have had the discussion with the experts in the field, 
and were asking from time to again and again to them कि at what time this will be possible. But सब अगर सब जो कुछ slide और और बटन स्लाइड अगर नीचे आ जाता है तो मेरा पूरा कनेक्टिविटी ही निकल जाएगा बिकॉज देर इज अनादर स्टेट रोड अब दी नेशनल हाईवे सो वाइल ट्रेवलिंग नो बडी सीज टू दैट दैट देर इज अनादर रोड इज लीडिंग टू अदर्स पार्ट ऑफ दी कर्नाटका सो उसको भी अगर डिसकनेक्ट हो जाता है तो पूरा डिसकनेक्शन बन जाएगा इसके लिए दे आर सेंग दैट टिल द रेन रिसेज वी कैन नॉट गो फॉर दी एक्सकेशन ऑफ दी कैन नॉट गो फॉर एनी रिपेयर इमिडिएट But as far as the availability of the manpower and machinery is concerned, we are in place. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. For the clarification, sir. I am Manohar Ramesh uh, from Messrs Mirinda Messenger Agencies, and we are the, for the coffee exporters uh, from Bangalore, and we are doing for the design of it. See, the thing is uh, like this: you are having that is a surplus for Somar Pete. That's just 2.2 kilometers. You are just ready mix. You are completed. You are not completed for other work. Just you are given for the ready mix and uh, put into that. But if you are putting for that all in other kind of road uh, stability, it will be the uh, good for us to move the containers. So at least you look into for that because the since it is also taking long time. I am talking about cyclist for onwards that two kilometer. I am talking about only that road, sir. Otherwise, it is all uh, Akinsi road is all weather road. That is not the issue. I am talking about that two kilometer only. Which is susceptible to slip on account of the uh, heavy rainfall. So, वहाँ पे हमने सर excavation करने का कोशिश भी किया था, but it was directed to rustic. अगर वो slip हो जाता है सर, so you have seen the efforts taken by the authority. Sir, sir, मेरा नाम गणेश है. पहले वो road वो 12 feet to 15 feet का road था. आप लोग ने उसको थर्टी फीट बनाया ये सैकड़ी हम लोग ने कल कल सर्वे करके आया थे उसको आपने रेडी मिक्स वन फीट तक लगाया है बहुत ज्यादा जा, बारिश भी है अभी अभी वो वो रोड में हेवी वेट कंटेनर्स मूवमेंट नहीं होगा आप लोग ने हेवी वेट बोल के इसीलिए बोलता है इनकेस पास व्हीकल अप टू ट्वेंटी टन बोल के बोल रहा है इनकेस सिक्स व्हीकल सिक्स टन सिक्स व्हील व्हीकल में 20 टन्स लेके आता है लेके आ रहा है कॉफी उसको आप लोग ओवरलोड नहीं बोल रहा है हम लोग 16 व्हीकल एक्सेल में हम लोग लेके आता है मैक्सिमम वेट इज इंक्लूडिंग कार्गो वेट ट्रक वेट 30 टन्स आप लोग बोल रहे हैं हेवी वेट फर्स्ट पॉइंट सेकंड उसमें डामरिक नहीं हुआ है स्टिल ये नाम इज दैट इज रेड अलर्ट हेवी रेन हो रहा है मगर आपको डामरिंग करके उसको रोड ओपन कर दिया तो बेटर है एज पर न्यूज है हासन से न्यूज है हम लोग एवरीडे अपडेट लेता है उसका न्यूज में नेक्स्ट वीक रेन कम होगा तो इमीडिएटली दैट रोड विल बी ओपन डामरिंग विल बी इन सितंबर एंड और अक्टूबर मंथ बोल के बोल रहा है इन केस आपने वन फीट रेडी मिक्स लगाया है हमारा कार को इन केस हम हम लोग ट्वेंटी वन टन बल्क कॉफी लगाता है कंटेनर में दैट द लूज कार को जैसे लिक्विड कार को दैट दैट कॉफी विल बी मोड कंटेनर में सेम ऐसे गर्किन ऑल्सो दैट इज इट मूविंग होता है कंटेनर रोड में ज्यादा बारिश आ गया वो वन फीट रेडी मिक्स लगाया तो कंटेनर टिल्ट होने का चांसेस ज्यादा है पलटी होने का चांसेस ज्यादा है सर योर क्वेश्चन इज वेल टेकन सर कैन आंसर दिस एंड दिस विल बी द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ द रोड टू किलोमीटर्स ओनली सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू वोट और मॉडरेटर गौरव भगड़े सर Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think so. One one uh, last question uh, is interesting, uh, but it will be very short. Uh. I am Nitya Anand Bai. So good afternoon to everybody, including our uh, respected deputy, uh, deputy chairman and our guests from other ports and uh, states. Sir, I am not here to ask any questions to you because I am we are already exhausted asking question requests because you here representing the NH and uh, railway. Since 2000, around 2000, reintroduction of our container movement in uh, New Bangalore port uh, under the able uh, leadership of our uh, Captain Ram Kumar, he has taken so much uh, uh, interest to develop the uh, uh, container trade in uh, New Bangalore port. Right from that time, we were talking about these two connections, about this Hassan, this railway connection uh, around 70 kilometers, I believe, and this uh, gas section that is at 20 by 30 kilometers. What we are talking about. even after 22 years you cannot do anything means 
the reason be behind that i strongly believe or we strongly believe that's a political motive or politicians you even uh, uh, i'm not uh, uh, abusing anything or uh, i'm not uh, uh, saying against them but what i am saying is that you officers uh, hands are also tied because you are answerable to higher ups and you have to obey them you cannot take independent actions whatever it may be and nowadays our uh, uh, great uh, uh, minister uh, sri nitin gadkari came here around 6 uh, 7 years back and recently also has come that time in our uh, 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 meeting here he has uh, strongly told whatever you bring to us concrete uh, uh, projects immediately i will sanction he is doing such a thing in the terrain and everything he is doing the so something magic uh, uh, he is doing in the roads and railways in railway ministry also what you just uh, talk about and small like uh, this uh, system we cannot do this means it is uh, beyond our control so what my request or my suggestion is that we all together port kcci port users exim trade including you because you you cannot come in the front but we can act very powerfully so we have to court them the politicians we have to sit with them we have to take follow up actions otherwise like after 10 years same like conclave will come then we will take the race the same issue there won't be any solutions that's what i'm strongly believe we have to take it strongly because magnolians actually they we are sleeping not like other states i i have seen from that so we have to take uh, uh, no 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 sleeping means we are uh, some people like that we okay okay we not so we have to take a strong action that's why i'm requesting this forum I, I i'm requesting this uh, for, uh, forum to take a strong action and follow up actions and to uh, to get the things done thank you yeah and thank yeah. you very to, very to, very, to. very true thank you i think so uh, among the panelists uh, mr watur had to take all the questions and uh, it is quite relevant because uh, uh, this was the major uh, issue so uh, it was a great discussion i i, I know uh, yeah railway Uh, you have any questions for him we can have one question on yeah one, one one question on railways yeah <laughs> kindly make it a yeah, precise one yeah, precise yeah, yeah. No, railway konkan railway did the rational route scheme because of that we lost business to the tune of 2 lakhs tons to new mangal port they have increased from 700 km to 1600 km and doubling is that konkan railway started 1990 till still now they are continuing with the double charges of adding the kilometers Plus, recently, uh, two years back, they started uh, route. Uh, uh, route Water laser. Yeah. No, no. But yeah. anything, anything. Your uh, route uh, that uh, rationalizer route Rational. scheme is killing our business. That you have to address this. I'm telling you that uh, those who are frequently using the railway will be uh, familiar about what the question. There is railway on system is there. Wherever the route which is not being utilized fully, then the railway will insist the customers to bring their cargo in that particular route. Even though the route length is more, some route length may be shorter than the prescribed route. We have to insist the customers to bring the longer route and pay for it. Otherwise, what will happen? No, the, the shorter route means that the pressure will be more, and one long route will be ideal. That is the system which we have developed here, and Indian railway everywhere it is there. And uh, regarding Kolkata railway, you are well aware of it. And uh, rationalised movement, we have given so many offers also in this regard. And uh, I'll come back to this one: uh, assured traffic and everything. So railway is always will be in that mode only. Some of the system which is which is prevailing. Why? Why? Because where it was happened, I will tell you. From Goa. Suppose if the cargo is going moving via Londa, via Londa and Gulbarga that area, it is okay. Oh, but what the Kolkata is that it is not Kolkata that rationalised route scheme. This product has to go to Roha and uh, means Panvel and come back to here. You know you are well aware of it. There is some yard section is there. JSWT. Some uh, most of this uh, uh, um, uh, coal we are now moving via Goa. In almost all the stations, our trains are lying because in that section, for the load they are not able to afford it. In a time they are they have given us means the guard section Kolkata road which is permitted two to three rake in a day. That much constraint is there. 
and why it is not moving this line, that also is the problem. So these lines are highly um, utilized now. This gas section. Now, yeah, aapka, aapka, your concern is definitely it is there in our system also. So in this program, what I feel, there's a good suggestion has been given. Sarah has told me about it. Why we can make use of or develop that railway line which is which is here to Bangalore. Think of it and we can struggle for it. Definitely congratulate with you. Even though it is not in our territory, uh, in, in any any angle we will be there. No, you should I think route also. No. Road also we are going. We are, route we are faced to Bangalore, we already started uh, this one. Uh, doubling. That we will do. Last 32 years we are dancing double. No, no. Uh, I think so. It's, it's a genuine concern which uh, we will take up uh, with the Konkan Railway because uh, you can be more fle flexible than the Indian Railways because it's a corporation. It is corporation so, and the decision that, can that, be taken on the table is, itself. We do not want any yeah, that, other support and no, no, that, that support is, nothing. We can do it. Yeah, that is the request. He is doing it yeah. and uh, I think so uh, well, uh, uh, I mean, well addressed. Thank you very much. Um, overall, if you see, uh, we had a very good session. I think so. It, it has overshot uh, the session. Sorry for that. But uh, it was relevant and uh, all our panelists have uh, really contributed uh, for this meeting and also audience. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you everyone. Each of you have contributed to this. And I thank uh, NMB, NMBA and all the Cochin and Goa board which has uh, come up with this conclave and given us an opportunity to present our uh, views. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you very much, sir, for heading the panel discussion. Now I request, uh, uh, I request uh, our Deputy Chairman, Sri Kejinath, and, uh, and Deputy Chairman, Sri uh, Vikas Narwal, to present uh, momentous to the speakers. First, we will start with Sri Praveen Pinto, General Manager, Vigilance, MRPL. Sri Praveen Pinto, General Manager, Vigilance, MRPL. Now, next, we are going to have Sri S. Sudhindra, MD, NGK, India, Coffee Limited. Sri Gaurav Hegade, Chairman, CII, Mangalore. Sri Madhukar Watore, Chief General Manager. And Sri Vinay Kumar, Deputy Chief Traffic Manager, Konkan Railway Corporation. Thank you very much, sir. Moving on from the theme Port Connectivity to Port users and customer prospectives, key issues and concern, expectation from the major port. Now I call upon Sri Bola Rahul Kamat, Director, Bola Segro Private Limited, to present this presentation. Kindly note, sir, please, sir, uh, time allotted is 10 minutes. Thank you. This presentation will be followed by a presentation from Sri Jeeva Kumar, S. Yes, Area General Manager, C CMA CGM. Over to you, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. Fellow countrymen, on behalf of Karnataka Cashew Manufacturer Association, I give, I wish you all a very, very happy. Amrit Mohoso of Ajati. <laughs> now, I was not born at that time. I have not witnessed Ajati Ka Andolan. But in my childhood, I have witnessed another Andolan. The Andolan is for containerized traffic in Mangalore port. Whenever there is any, whenever there is any representation to anybody, the only issue that the chamber wanted, the association wanted, was reintroduction of container traffic to Mangalore. I don't know how many times we travelled to Delhi, how many times we travelled to Bangalore, and how many efforts we have made. And with great difficulty in 1990s, I think 1997 or 98, somewhere down there, we got the container traffic back. At that point in time, the Mangalore port was written off as 
a high cost port the labor was not reliable and nobody believed that bangalore port container traffic can really pick up but at that point in time i remember in our association meeting the pndo netloid came forward and said we are ready to run the container traffic but the freight from bangalore will be around 400 dollars higher than the freight from kochi and in the meeting we said whatever is the additional cost we don't care we want bangalore port to start operation and this was not only from our association i i really appreciate the first shipment the next shipment came and said we offered the service free and all the people like the port which came to us and said we will reduce the charges for container operation container operation will be at very very minimum cost the custom the pilot every department was eager to start the container operation and we put that the container operation started and from there there was no looking back the operation went up the container traffic went up and the usp of mangalore port has always been the most lenient the most efficient most uh, uh, most energetic port and we never had any issues any labor any issues in the mangalore port it has been doing fantastic the chairman of the mangalore port has done lot of road shows i have been party to few, few road, show, road shows and i i watch for that you know what is the biggest record i can i can watch for a customer called me from europe at around 11 o'clock in the morning he told me that i need a container of coffee how soon you can ship i told him if you confirm the order in next half an hour i will ship today and by 12 o'clock order was confirmed 2 o'clock i got the container to my factory 4 o'clock i loaded 6 o'clock it reached the port 7:30 it got the letter port 8 o'clock in the night it, the vessel said even the vessel waited for 10 minutes for the container so that was the record and even the customer called me from europe and said i cannot expect this from any other port in the world so that was the record in that point in time friends today karnataka is cash hub of the country our import into bangalore port has touched around 40% of the world we import into the country today we employ around 1 lakh employees in this part of the country in our rural, in our in our industries and this could not have been attained without a lean and efficient bangalore port the port infrastructure the port efficiency not only affect the port activity it, it catalyzes the economic activity in the entire district and entire neighborhood so this is important when today we are celebrating silver jubilee of private public partnership and when the private public partnership of mangalore port was announced we were thrilled we thought that the port will become even more efficient the the operation cost will go down further but to our surprise it was not so when the when the port was privatized all our cost shot up rapidly at least 20 to 30% increase in across the board costs now at this point in time i do fear that their complacency has crept in with many of the stakeholders last month we had huge arrival of containers and the industry was in great trouble we went to all the department everywhere but unfortunately none of them have budged even an inch to support us all the all the efforts that we were made in made in the past none of those supports were present today there was a case when the container yard was full and our trucks have to wait for two days to get the container offloaded and we were charged damage for even those two days there was no compassion today sir we are celebrating ajaji ka amrit mahotsav the amrit mahotsav is not celebrated for anything else it is to make our younger generation aware what was the mistake we made to lose our ajaji what were the sacrifices we made to gain that ajaji and why we are today now i think this solar jubilee is like this we should introspect and retrospect what was the effort we what was the reason we lost container capacity in mangalore what were the sacrifices we made at that point in time and where we are today are we becoming too lazy and to go back to the same situation is our today after i think 20 years first time mangalore shipments mangalore, we also ship from kochi port the uh, at least 20% of the mangalore cargo has moved to other port and because i will give one number to close my response speech because of my time constraint moving a ton of cashew raw cashew nut from africa to mangalore today cost 45 dollars per ton higher than moving the same cashew from africa to vietnam all the chain we 3 years back we were at par 
and last three years we have moved our situation to such an extent that the moving one container, one ton of cashew or not one container is 45 dollars higher than I have to come to Mangalore. So this is the time I request all the people to have a task force. Everybody should you know all customs, purport, uh, the liners, uh, the shippers. We should meet every month at least and see where we are losing and how best we can gain it back. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your uh, presentation. May I request, sir, please be on the dais. May I request, Sri uh, uh, Satish Hanekata, sir, Chief Mechanical Engineer and uh, Captain Himanshu uh, Shekhar, present a bouquet and uh, hal. Present a bouquet and uh, memento to our speaker, Sri Bola Rahul Kamath, Director, Bola Seguro Private Limited. Now, may I request Shri Jeva Kumar, yes, area general manager, CMA, CGM, for a presentation. Congratulations in conducting this event jointly organized by Mangalore Port, Cochin Port and Goa Port. I arrived last evening. I could understand the spirit, you know, all of us. Yes, there are challenges. It's not easy because everybody is talking about the road connectivity especially for Mangalore because I should not ignore the Cochin and Goa because it's a jointly organized event. So first I appreciate and congratulate all of you. Yes, there will be grievances always, right? Grievances is not going to end. Today we talk about rail, we talk about road, we talk about port development. Tomorrow something else will be there. But the spirit all of you have is fantastic. That is the origin to go forward and development. I know you will bless me. The time given for me is 10 minutes. You will bless me if, we, if, I, if I finish earlier because already I am eating the lunch time. Yes, quickly we will showcase about CMA CGM, the company I represent. It was start, started in the year of 1978, 44 years back with one ship. The chairman is Rodolphe Sade. It was started by his father, Jack Sade, with one ship. And today we have close to 600 ships and we are the third largest container shipping line globally. So these are the few things to showcase. Probably you can connect with me later or our Mangalore manager Ray if you want any details. This is we. Many of you may be saying shipping line, you know, the rates have gone up, you know, you have made more money in the last few years. You may be aware, you know, few many years back, not many few years back, the shipping lines were sinking and selling. Even we started when the we being the French company even before the Indian government, our Honorable Prime Minister announced the lockdown, we announced work from home, you know, to, as a matter of safety. When we all sat together at home, all the, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the work from home started, when the, when the 21 days lockdown started, we suspended all the services because we don't know, the production is not going to happen. What is going to be the store? So every day we used to have the call, you not know, the team's call, you not know, the team's call, call were not known before the pandemic much. We used to have the video calls and the audio calls every day. 
all the services were suspended because we don't know the cargo availability against all our expectations the demand increase maybe starting from us and then followed by all other country yes cma and shipping lines made money if against our expectation if the demand was not so high many of us would have lost jobs because us purchased more because europe purchased more definitely all the exporters also benefited in that and cma cgm also served very well so this is our showcase and what are the money we gain it's invested back we buy ships we buy containers we buy aircraft we buy you know invest into logistic to serve the exon community the customers so these are the it when i said you know we started with single ship all the so what do you know what do you some some may know well about container ship shipping line some may know well about cma cgm some may not know much i can proudly say cma cgm with close to 600 ships globally the one started with one ship all the acquisition were very very strategic today you can rely on us to get cargo from anywhere in the world and also to ship cargo to anywhere in other asia or oceania or us east coast or west coast or latin america or africa everywhere we can serve well because those acquisitions are very strategic and this is our market share we are the third largest shipping line having a market share of close to 13% we are investing in containers also that the container fleet is also growing if you see the left side our fleet size you know is getting younger this is our terminal network we have 55 terminals across the globe the recent one is in india the jn pct along with the jm bakshi we have won the container terminal also very very important i just entered in and the indian oil uh, gentleman was presenting today you know we are responsible to the save the environment cma cgm is well focused to save the environment so what are the services we offer we 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 heard from bolas we heard from nkg right the frustrations also so today in india either east coast or west coast either chennai or mundra or pipawa or navasheva we offer service across the globe anywhere we can have the connectivity so very important point i am coming it may not be specific to mangalore or kochi or goa the schedule reliability you may you may ask i want to ship my cargo mr rahul said i want to i i i i agree to my european buyer you know next few minutes or next few hours i can ship out the cargo when the demand had increased you might be aware when the us supply side or the road side we talk about india we we curse about india it's not happening it's not only in india in us also the containers which were moving to the customer warehouses are not coming back so what is that you may be aware it was a hot news last year it started with us west coast multiple ship 50 to 60 ships were waiting outside waiting outside it's a cost for the shipping line waiting outside the cargo cannot be delivered and historically if you see 20 21 and 22 the schedule reliability has got badly hit so this is what we want you know when i ask the feeder operator i'm sorry why you are not calling goa today there is no feeder in goa we have a barge service icd bali may be operational very soon if i ask the feeder operator it is not viable they get into a port and if they cannot berth immediately it's a cost for us and the density the volume doesn't justify support it is not viable for the feeder operator and what is the effect we as a shipping line cannot serve the community 
the Goa cargo need to go somewhere else, maybe to, maybe to Navasheva. Navasheva is already have plenty of cargo, but the left out is a small port like Goa. So the request for, I know it's something is beyond your control. As much as possible, if the container ship is prioritized to birth, if the turnaround time is faster, it, it, it will make the feeder operator or the shipping line to serve any port. So, when I said cost, with the revenues have gone up, but the cost also have gone up. A ship is waiting. Historically, all this scheduled reliability, which I, which I shown in the previous slide, had made the operational cost to go up. Historically, the cost has gone up. Bunker, the fuel, is a key cost component for us, has again hit the roof. So the cost has gone up significantly for us. Okay, rather than complaining, rather than giving suggestions, rather than making wish lists, first of all, I would like, again, I, I would repeat to say, this trade is a fantastic trade, great trade, trade. You people have developed the trade to this extent. I thank and congratulate all of you, starting at the port, now, JHW taking the terminal, fantastic. All the stakeholders, the customs, all the stakeholders, it's fantastic. When I asked my my manager, how was the utility? Because we talk about many things, bigger things. Is it the CHA? Is it the transporter? Is he having a better facility of canteen? Is he having a, having a better facility of toilet? I asked my Manager Rai, he said, yes, it's good, fantastic. These basic things are taken care, no, it's fine. What we need, what, what is the request we have? I was told, one main gate need to be used for the container movement also, which I saw the gate also. Looking at the, from the layman eyes, it is not so conducive. Yes, Mangalore mainly, it's a seasonal cargo in nature. When the coffee season starts, coffee. When the cashew season starts, plenty of cashew cargo. It is not a consistent volume every week. So, what the request for you is, if we can give alternative gate for container movement or a dedicated gate for container movement, that will be fantastic. That is one request. And also I heard, similar, again, same reason. When the cargo arrives, together in plenty. He, our friend Bola said, I am not able to get the container faster, nobody is there. So what we request is, you need to facilitate, I don't know, the yard side, it may be between you and JSW, on the yard side, or the pickup of the container faster. What I heard, we may give delivery order till today. A container, a trailer, which arrives the port today, maybe 10 o'clock or 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the evening, may have to wait for the following. After 12 a.m., the next day follows and the delivery order is valid only for the previous day. So every stakeholders, as, as I began this presentation, all of you have great spirit. At the same time, me as a shipping line, you know, you as a port and you as a stakeholder, how we can complement each other, how we can help each other in this area, if port can facilitate it, along with JSW, a trailer which goes to pick the container can come out faster, the cargo will be delivered faster and he can come back to take the next trip. So these are these are the few requests from my, my side. The request, as I said, the requests will be there, the grievances will be there, but on the top of everything, I appreciate and congratulate each one of you for the fantastic efforts. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your uh, concerns are well taken. Uh, yeah. uh, may I request uh, Shri pa uh, Paritosh Bala, Chief Engineer Civil, and uh, Shri E.V. Harinath, uh, Chief Engineer Civil, to kindly present a bouquet and memento. The next speaker would be uh, Shri Prasad, Chief uh, General Manager. Sir. General Manager Santoshima Edible Oil. Friends, can we have a round of applause?
the presentation by Shri Prasad, General Manager Santoshima Edible Oil. We are going to have Shri Venkata Pani, Director Anaga Refinery. Yeah, friends, uh, before uh, Prasad Rao gets ready, just I would like to clarify one of the query raised by the CMA, the previous speaker. Port has gone for now a dedicated uh, cargo. We are going for it. The gate will be modified. We are the gate will be ready by October end. So that will cater the requirement of uh, the previous speaker was asking for uh, container exclusively gate. Thank you, sir, for the clarification. Here. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, respected dignitaries and uh, uh, other members who are present here. Very good afternoon to all of you. Um, I am representing Santoshimata Edible Oils. It is an edible oil differently. It is not a petroleum. So, uh, I am Prasad Rao. Uh, I am factory manager for the Mangalore location. Uh, I would like to brief about uh, Santoshimata, uh, about the company and the activities. Santoshimata Edible Oil is a manufacturer of edible oils sir. Um, and uh, in the brand name uh, our brand name is Priya Gold and uh, Priya Gold is a leading brand in uh, southern India and uh, and it is satisfying the households for four decades the Santoshimata group of industries has started its journey uh, uh, from Kakinada plant its first plant is a refinery in 2011 and the second refinery started in 2017 at Krishna Patnam Port. We are covering the markets AP, Telangana and parts of uh, Tamil Nadu and Orissa. But Tamil Nadu and Karnataka, sorry. Coming to a pl plan as part of our plan to expand our market in Dakshina Kannada and other parts of Karnataka, we are constructing a third refinery, that is edible oil refinery, at Mangalore, near the port. The proposed refinery is having a capacity of 600 tons palm oil processing and 200 tons refined sunflower oil processing. We are investing 100 crores in this project. The plant will be constructed with a state of art technology and latest equipment. The present status of the project is the land is allocated and we are already entered into an agreement and the lease uh, agreement is registered already. So regarding the allotment of land for the laying of the pipeline, uh, it is under process uh, from port to the facility. What is our contribution to board and the society at large? We are investing 100 crores. Uh, this is a board based refinery. And employment generation is 250 direct. And employment generation of 500 locals from the surrounding areas that is indirect for our plant operations. We are importing 2.4 lakh tons per annum of vegetable oils from the port. Average, we will be receiving two to three ships in a month. Warfage income to the port and expected contribution of 30 crores per month towards GST, customs and port. Finally, uh, from uh, the point of improvement, we wanted to just put forth, this is only for deliberation purpose, it is not anything uh, uh, as it 
So we wanted to uh, just put forth this uh, in case any additional land is required for the expansion of the project. Uh, NMPTA may kindly consider uh, the uh, allotting of the land directly without going into the tender process because already we have already process, uh, gone through this process and in case we require any land which may be allotted directly to us. And at the same time, if uh, when we want to uh, set up an industry, we need to you know go through a lot of approvals from the statutory bodies and government uh, bodies. So in that, it is taking a lot of time. If NMPA can tie up with the statutory bodies and they can uh, you know, see any uh, uh, you know, um, uh, coordination for the industries to to get the clearances at one point, at a single point like uh, this is uh, no enhances the ease of doing business and also it will engage the industries uh, for the overall growth. Finally, uh, I thank uh, uh, respected uh, deputy chairman sir and uh, all team members uh, for uh, inviting uh, us, Santoshi Mata, to participate in this event, the great event. Thank you. Thank you very much sir, for a brief presentation on Santoshi Mata Edible Oil. May I request Shri Krishna Bapi, Secretary in Charge, and Shri K. Ramesh, Deputy uh, Chief Mechanical Engineer, to present a bouquet and memento to our speaker, Shri Prasad Rao, General Manager, Santoshi Mata Edible Oil. The next presentation would be from Shri Venkata Pani, Director Anagha Refinery. After this presentation, we are going to have the final presentation of a pre lunch session that would be from Sri Keshav Shanai, President Strategic Planning, Sea Lords Container. Good afternoon everybody, respected people on the, of the dais and all my friends and everyone uh, present here. My name is Venkata Fani. I represent from a company called as Sri Anaga Refineries. We are based in Baikampati industrial area. Into the edible oil business, into the imports of palm and sunflower oil. Uh, we, I have been in the business since last 18 years and basically I would also like to mention here that I am a student of New Mangal Port School. So, I have been uh, seeing this port uh, from my childhood and uh, this port was not like this earlier, like what it is right now. There has been a dra dramatic changes uh, in the port and as a port user, I have also witnessed uh, in the last uh, 10 years of my career, the way the port uh, wants to grow the business, uh, wants to change uh, the functioning of the port has actually been really appreciable. Um, we are into the edible oil business and um, we have a direct pipeline connecting from the port to our factory and it has been very challenging for us to actually uh, take a lot of permissions and uh, uh, get this work executed but I can definitely say that the port officials are very much intact, approachable. This is the first thing which any entrepreneur would actually want to have uh, when developing uh, any kind of uh, business in the port. The second important thing is that we have been uh, allotted some land uh, from the port for the development of liquid bulk storage terminal wherein we are we are actually uh, building up a closely around 85,000 tons of storage space with an 80 to 190 crores of investment. And uh, I am I just want to take a minute of uh, every one of you, uh, your time. I can understand that it's lunch time right now. I just have one suggestion to make here is that uh, port is very keen on uh, bringing more traffic that is what their motto is and uh, land rentals is a second option but I would currently request the port is that once the land is actually allotted to any new entrepreneur or a company uh, again we have to go to the board asking for right of way permission for the pipelines which actually kills three to four months of our time and Mangalore being uh, uh, four months we have a rainy season in Mangalore we lose a lot of time in building infrastructure so, keeping all these things in mind, I would request the port authorities to going forward, at least they can help us to 
provide the ROW permission along with the allotment of the land, uh, along with the port pro procedures only. And this is all I want to say and thank you everyone for giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much. Now may I request uh, Shri Satish Hannakate, Chief Mechanical Engineer and Shri uh, Captain Himanshu Shekhar to present a bouquet and momentum to our uh, speaker Shri Venkatapani, Director Anaga Refinery. Mr. Pani, your uh, concerns are well taken. I will be addressed in the due course of time. Thank you. Now the, fi uh, the final presenter of pre-lunch session is Shri Keshav Chennai, President, Strategic Planning, Sea Lords Container. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, pardon me, I am the villain of the piece because I am standing between you and lunch. But I plead not guilty. I'm sorry, sir. So, I will say a little, but you can see a bit. I brought an audio visual which will take exactly three minutes and two seconds, and maybe I'll have two minutes to say what I want to say. I represent AG's Logistics. We are a 10,000 crore market capex organization which has got 60% foreign holding. Uh, we have a turnover of about 2,500 crores and then our 1 rupee share today is worth 280 rupees. We are a 1956 year old company and uh, the rest of the story I would like to share with you. HS Group of Companies has been a part of the Indian growth story since 1956 and is now India's leading integrated oil, gas and chemical logistics company. HS Group owns and operates India's largest integrated bulk liquid cum LPG terminals in Mumbai, Bipawa, Kandla, Haldia, Mangalore and the largest private bulk liquid terminal at Kochi along with sourcing and trading subsidiaries in Singapore for international operations. The group terminals have a massive storage capacity of around 15,70,000 KL for chemicals and POL and around 1,14,000 metric ton static capacity for LPG. It just services the LPG import and storage requirements of large PSUs and handles almost 25% of Indian LPG imports, equivalent to almost 13% of total domestic consumption, thus making it India's top importer and handler of LPG amongst the private players. Aegis is known and respected for strength of its infrastructure, quality of service and safety of operations for years. Aegis is also one of the prominent parallel marketers of LPG and has commissioned over 130 plus retail outlets, dispensing clean auto LPG as transport fuel and has more than 150 plus distributors across 18 states delivering LPG cylinders to thousands of domestic consumers and commercial establishments serviced by the network of over 25 LPG bottling plants. The new Mangalore port, a modern all-weather port at Manambur, Mangalore handled a total traffic of 39.30 million metric tons in financial year 21-22 catering to import and export of large range goods. This port has distinct advantages of road and rail connectivity catering to key states like Karnataka, Kerala, Maharashtra. Aegis already has an existing terminal at Mangalore with a storage capacity of 76,000 KL for handling chemicals and POM. It has now acquired additional 22 acres of here I would like to intervene the video. I'm personally grateful 
to the chairman of NMPA and the deputy chairman of NMPA, the chief engineer civil in charge, NMPA, Mr. Patnaik, who is the deputy conservator, and all the members of the team. Because to bring this project here, which is the biggest project today which is happening here, is not our vision. It was the vision of NMPA. NMPA wanted a very large project to be brought here. And one day the chairman asked me whether I can realize that vision. I said, we are willing to take the risk. So we took the risk. I'm personally grateful to all of them for the tremendous support we have received from each and every one at NMPA because it will not be us if you don't thank people for what they've done to us. But let me assure you, we didn't see anything out of the way or any special dispensation. Everything was through the public sector process, which I have been a part for almost 35 years. So we went exactly as per the norms, and then we have acquired this 23 acres of land, which is about 85,500 square meters. And we are going to bring a state-of-art uh, terminal, which I'm sure is not there anywhere in the south. And our objective is to bring VLGCs into Mangalore port. And we will bring them on one shot and one out basis. So you can imagine what will be the capacities we will be building. Here I would request uh, the year of some of the illustrious uh, people who spoke in before me. They were talking of port connectivity, port connectivity. I am talking of customer connectivity. I am asking, how do I connect with the customer? Individually, independently, facilities are being created. So I would request the Honorable Deputy Chairman, who has been a fantastic support to us, to play the role of an aggregator. Nothing out of the way. Please play as an aggregator. For example, the faster you help me to evacuate the product from Mangalore, which is landlocked, it will be better for us because we can bring in more tankers. So objective would be, we are willing to lay what I would say as an independent uh, railway siding, which we have put at Pipawa. Incidentally, we bought over Shell Gas India in India. We can put up a railway siding. So we may need a land for the railway siding. We may need a connectivity, maybe Konkan Railway gentleman if he's here. I've spoken to one of your board members, a good friend of mine, Mr. Jay Kumar, who was the port uh, chairman at Goa also. I said, can you give me a connectivity? So we'll need a connectivity from there. We'll also need the help of MRPF by saying that, can you give us a hookup to your pipeline, which goes from uh, Mangalore to Bangalore? Whatever, you, whatever your charges are, we will pay. But instead of duplicating infrastructure, is it possible for you to give us connectivity to that line? HPC is there. Is it possible for HPC to give us rail uh, loading facility for BTPN wagons? So all this is possible. And we would request NMPA, especially the Deputy Chairman being here, that, sir, kindly consider playing the role of an aggregator. Call for an industry meeting. See whether it is possible. Because the faster we evacuate product, the better for Port Trust. We do more revenue for Konkan Railway, more revenue for HPC. Otherwise, what would happen is these LPG bullets, when they travel on both sides of the, of the guard section, if one of them collapses, it is going to really restrict traffic. So can we do that? I understand the DC has been already talking about this. We request you kindly consider playing the role of an aggregator in this aspect. Now, 22 acres of land. The proposed 
proposed terminal being developed with an investment of around 500 crores would cater to the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana by increasing the ease of accessibility of LPG. Here I would like to add, the total demand of LPG in this country is 27 million tons. Out of that, only 13.5 million tons is refined from our refineries. The balance 13 million tons has to be imported. So our role comes here, wherein we are almost bringing 25% of this 13 million tons and supplying to public sector oil companies, and which is almost 13% of the country's demand of LPG. So you can imagine what would happen if this project comes and we have connectivity. There will be no shortage of LPG at all because we play the, the role behind the screen. The new Aegis terminal is also expected to generate around 200 direct and 2,000 indirect employment opportunities in Mangalore. Like I said, uh, I mean, during my academic uh, stint at Howard, I was told by my professor Jim Collins, good is the enemy of the great. I said, have I done good? He said, no, good is the enemy of the great. We want NMPA to be a very great organization and we want to contribute to making it a great port. Even today, I can assure you amongst all the ports we deal, we find NMPA the most positive uh, ports. I, I mean, uh, I, I'm running the risk of saying that, but I would like to be honest in saying that whenever I went, for example, to the deputy chairman or even to the chief engineer, Mr. Harinath, I've never seen somebody say, no, it is not possible, you'll have to do this, you'll have to do that. They've always said, look, we can do like this, we can do like that. Of course, not beating the norms, but stretching them. So that way, I think I'm, I, I'm really thankful to NMPA. But there are few more areas, but there are few more areas which we believe that will make NMPA go from good to great. And those areas I shall now explain. Like uh, one of my predecessors had made a mention here that you need a one-stop shop. We need a one-stop shop somewhere uh, in NMPA, whereas we don't want you to short-circuit any of your guidelines. But we would request that when we make a request, can you give us beforehand what is it uh, I need to do to, uh, or what are the details I need to give you, or what are, what, what are the issues I need to address uh, for you to give me that solution. We always find uh, there is a, a small gap between what we want and when it happens. So I would request uh, LMPA to become good, uh, from good to great, please help us come over these, these little, little issues by just telling us, menu driven, you want this, this is what it is. Because otherwise it becomes, show me the man, tell, I'll tell you the rule situation. We wanted to avoid that situation, so it will be greatly uh, appreciated if you could kindly consider this. Aegis is committed to be a dominant, long-term contributor to oil, gas and chemicals industry in India. Come, let's join hands and be a part of India's growth story. So, thank you ladies and gentlemen. I have no intention of holding, uh, standing between you and uh, lunch. I would thank uh, Chairman, Deputy Chairman and Deputy Chairman NMPA for giving us an opportunity to present the company. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, please be on the dial, sir. May, may I request Sri Suresh Patil, Chief Engineer, Civil Mangova Port, and Sri Jimmy George, Senior Deputy Traffic Manager, to present a bouquet and memento to our guest speaker, Sri Keshav Shenai. And from NMPA, we assure you, sir, we will definitely try to become from good to best. Friends, uh, before uh, moving to for uh, lunch, I request you all to collect a flag because NMP is, is uh, 
एज ए पार्ट ऑफ आजादी की अमृत महोत्सव हर घर घर तिरंगा एन एम पी इज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटिंग फ्लैग टू ऑल द डेलीगेट एट द एंट्रेंस प्लीज गो एंड कलेक्ट एंड हैव ए फोटोग्राफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ फ्लैग बींग अरेज एट द एंट्रेंस प्लीज गेट द इंडियन फ्लैग एंड एंड गेट ए फोटोग्राफ एज वेल आफ्टर दैट प्लीज मूव टू दाइनिंग हॉल ऑफ द लंच New Mangalore Port during last 5 decades of its service has witnessed exponential growth in terms of trade and commerce without compromising key and critical elements of environment land water air flora and fauna animals and human habitat The port has created a green belt around the port and has earmarked 33% of its land area exclusively for greenery for the last 5 years 1 lakh saplings were planted and the process is still going on being iso 14000 certified nmpt had plan and vision in place port is continuously striving to achieve the best results the collective vision of management had addressed the issue of drinking water and sewage system in the port The port had developed sewage treatment plant with a capacity of 1.20 mld inside the port area. This STP is enabled to receive domestic sewage of township and inside the port as well. The treated water is used for watering the green belt and also for water sprinkling in operational areas. To meet the water requirement, the port has envisaged comprehensive plan to harvest the rainwater. In this direction, three large water bodies have been created inside the port area in the catchment areas covering 64,217 square meters with a capacity of 1,10,340 cubic meters of water. Due to creation of water bodies, the water levels in the nearby village wells also got recharged. Port is now self-sufficient in its water requirement. solar energy being a renewable energy resource can help in mitigating depletion of natural resources in this direction the port has installed 4 megawatt solar plant in addition to rooftop solar panels at the top it's now the port has achieved the coveted credit of meeting 100% of its power requirement from the solar panels The port has also switched over to LED lighting which is more environment friendly coupled with power saving Over the years the port has mechanized almost 90% of its operations so as to mitigate dust and pollution in the operational areas handling of coal iop cement etc are now fully mechanized efforts these efforts by the port management has yielded positive results for the consecutive 2 years the port bagged swatch survection award from ministry of shipping Green Tech Environment Award in Gold category in port sector for the consecutive 5 years Samudra Paryavaran Award from Indian Coast Guard Aranya Mitra Award from Karnataka Forest Department recognition from State Pollution Control Board and District Administration for the efforts of the port in keeping the port and its vicinity clean and green these awards have motivated the port to sustain the efforts and to chalk out more projects in the future
ਹਰ ਘਰ 
घर तिरंगा हर घर तिरंगा
अमृत काल मनाएंगे घर घर तिरंगा लगाएंगे घर घर तिरंगा हर घर तिरंगा तिंगा चंदा मन मन गु त्रिवंदा Mani Gu, Trivandrum. 
रंग है क्या ये रंग मेरी शक्ति का है ये रंग मेरी ताकत का है ये रंग देश के माथे पे सजा श्वेत है क्या रंग सत्य का ये श्वेत रंग की शांति का है ये श्वेत रंग एक का है ये रंग देश के दिल में है बसा रंग हर तो खुशहाली का है ये धर्म चक्र विकास का इन्हीं उसूलों से है ये बना तिरंगा हमारा तिरंगा प्यारा भारत देश हमारा प्रणा घर घर तिरंगा हर घर तिरंगा घर घर तिरंगा हर घर तिरंगा
देश के माथे पे सजा श्वेत है क्या रंग सत्य का ये श्वेत रंग शांति का है ये श्वेत रंग एक का है ये रंग देश के दिल में है बसा रंग हरा तो खुशहाली का है ये धर्म चक्र विकास का इन्हीं उसूलों से है ये बना तिरंगा हमारा Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen I welcome you all for the final session of Maritime Public Private Partnership Conclave jointly organized by New Mangalore Port Authority Mamagowa Port Authority and Cochin Port Authority When we are celebrating the glorious moment of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav it's indeed a proud moment for all of us as we have marked the successful completion of 25 years of public private partnership model the government of india introduced private sector participation in major boards to infuse funds in the latest technology and improve management practices and for capacity and enhancement of financial efficiency friends with this brief it's my honor to introduce you to Captain. If I am not wrong, the Captain C. C. Swami. Swami would be the first speaker, right? Yeah. Friends, I introduce you to Captain C. Swami, Director, Ports and Member, Maritime and Inland Water Transport Operations, Karnataka Maritime Board. Please welcome sir with a big round of applause. So we'll give presentation on maritime boats in providing inland connectivity, challenges, and way forward. Good day, and dear friends. Because I can see many faces who are known to me to our department since uh, many decades. So now, recently, we have uh, operationalized uh, Karnataka Maritime Board. under the chairmanship of uh, honorable uh, chief minister of karnataka in fact uh, we have started uh, quite late but now uh, though we have started in 2019 but our uh, after 2019 when the honorable cm himself took over as chairman so we have done lot of uh, uh, work so kmb is basically uh, we are uh, 
envisaging the overall development of coastal development. That means coastal community from Majali in the north and to Someshwar in the south. We are developing an integrated development, port, fisheries, tourism, and also inland water. So we have a lot of projects uh, which are uh, attractive to private investments. I'll just, I will not take time, I'll stick to my uh, timelines and uh, whichever uh, uh, important slides are there, that only I will showcase and the follow up uh, details will be uh, given by Mr. Samit, who is our uh, consultant, Maritime Board consultant. Friends, you can see, uh, as I told before, uh, it is operationalized under the chairmanship of the chief minister and then our uh, vision is to uh, make it private uh, uh, investment and to capitalize it and uh, untap maritime because so far uh, other than NMPT we don't have any other uh, major ports. So next slide I will come to uh, the project and we have a uh, connectivity which is good uh, uh, NH66 uh, and Konkan Railway is running parallel to the coast and also uh, our uh, state itself is a proactive for investment and uh, investor friendly. And uh, so far uh, we have envisaged 81 projects under Sagar Mala and 26 projects of which we have prepared DPRs and uh, out of that uh, 9 projects have been approved in principle. So that implementation also, uh, the stages I will be coming to the next, uh, next stage. So next. Actually this, this is very important. Sir. Because here uh, I am showing you the investment opportunities. We are coming out uh, with two locations, that is Keni near Belikeri and Bhavankurve near uh, Honnavar, that is just north of Honnavar. And this uh, port is uh, envisaged under uh, private, that means PPP model. So in fact, uh, we are at the stage of uh, floating uh, request for proportional, uh, proposals which will be soon, that means another uh, 15 to 20 days and maximum 3 weeks we are going to float RFP for these two ports and also Tadadi, I think you must have, uh, uh, those who have seen our post, Tadadi is a very uh, scenic beauty near uh, Gokarna which is a tourist uh, hub uh, itself. So we are planning uh, 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 tourist hub in Tadadi and also a old Mangalore port. In fact, uh, for Lakshadweep, we are uh, already uh, uh, signing, we will be signing the uh, memorandum of understanding with Lakshadweep authorities. We will be constructing a dedicated jetty for them in uh, World Bangalore port. And this will again uh, uh, strengthen the ties between the uh, government of Karnataka and the Lakshadweep Islands. And uh, this is the uh, new projects which we are coming up. That means uh, four locations. Bayandur, Malte, Mangalore and Pali River. Sea plains locations we have identified. Actually we are uh, having a uh, highest level uh, discussion that means uh, with, uh, with our uh, additional chief secretary and the officials of uh, MOCA, Ministry of Civil Aviation. Shortly they will be included in the Udan scheme. So once Udan scheme is there, we will go for uh, expression of interest, gauging the players who are interested, they also can participate in that. And then the houseboats in Angargatta, because all of us know Angargatta near Urupi is a very uh, uh, scenic beauty and there are already boats, houseboats have been uh, operated there. That also we are uh, developing. And marinas at uh, three locations, that is Bayandur, Malpe and Mangalore. So these are the uh, projects which uh, are coming up for uh, private participation, sir. Next details, uh, Mr. Samit will be telling. Thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, I'll go to the details of each of these projects and we'll take questions afterwards. Uh, Karnataka Maritime Board, we are already undertaking PPP projects. We are having two uh, PPP projects under development. The Honawa port is being developed by our partner Honawa Ports Private Limited, which is uh, a 5 MTPA port with 1 MTPA being constructed initially. The uh, uh, project is already, uh, the road connectivity to the project has been approved under uh, Bharat Mala and the contractor has also been uh, assigned by NHAI. 
and uh, very soon we will be completing the uh, project uh, uh, for the commercial operations. The second uh, PPP project we have is uh, container operations at uh, yeah container operations at Carvar. So we have in, uh, given the uh, container operations at Carvar to a private player uh, named Carva Container Logistics Private Limited. He would be very soon initiating the uh, operations of uh, uh, container handling and uh, there will be feeder vessels which will be coming in and taking in the containers from Kawa port till wherever the uh, be it JNPT or Mundra. So the plans are underway, the land is already been identified in Yama and a concession agreement has been uh, signed. The projects which are upcoming is a uh, mega port uh, in line with our Honorable uh, Chief Minister's announcement. A mega port at uh, Kenny Bellicary will be uh, developed under PPP model. We are going to release the request for proposal for this project shortly. Another request for proposal will come out for Pavan uh, uh, mega port project wherein uh, we have a 14 MTPA capacity. The uh, expression of interest has already been floated for this project and we have already received interested uh, bid and uh, we will uh, so very soon means in next two weeks we will be launching the request for proposal for this project. Sir. Apart from this there are three uh, multi-purpose harbour projects at Mangalore, Bangalore and Marina. Uh, Mangalore being the uh, uh, one which these all these three projects will be given support uh, under the uh, viability gap funding. We are uh, inviting expressions of interest for these three projects very shortly and uh, uh, once the uh, uh, relevant interests are received we will be taking this up. We are already in discussion with Sagar Mala at the highest level. Our Honorable Chief Minister met the Honorable Minister at Centre and uh, they have assured that they will assist us in obtaining the any VGA which is required by these three projects which is Multipurpose Harbour at Mangalore which is a 50 berg marina project. Uh, Multipurpose Harbour at Malpe which has an MRO for seaplane as well as a boat repair facility and a Multipurpose Harbour at Bindur near Rotin and Beach. So, next we move on to Sagarmala projects. Uh, the uh, KMB is already at four projects approved in 2017-2018, which are under various stages of development and operations. Uh, we have got nine more projects approved in the last year from Government of India. These projects are varied of varied nature. Some are dedicated jetties, some are coastal berths, some are waterways project. Waterways project being the most uh, critical project for the local. Uh, people, populace and also for the tourists. So I will be explaining these projects in great detail. The funding of these projects will be released. It is on 50% sharing except for Lakshadweep Jetty wherein it is 100% funding by Government of India. Each of these projects are 50% funded by GOI and 50% by Government of Karnataka. I will be explaining these projects in subsequent slides. The map shows the location of the projects on the uh, uh, map of Karnataka. So we see from top we have development of waterways from Almaty to Bagalkot. This is in the uh, 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 Almaty Dam area wherein we have an opportunity to connect the Hegur Island as well as from Bagalkot side. We will be connecting Harkal very shortly. The uh, tender process for this is already, tender notification is already out. Subsequent to this, we will also be inviting private players to operate the waterway on a 15 to 20 year uh, model with uh, necessary uh, ticketing etc. being decided in discussions with the concessionaire. We have projects A and B which are development of Karwar port which is uh, long uh, pending. We will be initiating works at the port, proje uh, port project shortly. Second, we have port upgradation. So we are planning to mechanize the Karwar port. And as a first step, we are installing firefighting equipment with support of Sagarmala scheme and the project is underway. The contractor has already been selected. Third, we have integrated development of Kadadi Agnashini waterway. This is a crucial waterway for people and tourists and uh, almost everyone who is in the Gokarna and Agnashini uh, region. We will be connecting Gokarna directly to the other side of the Agnashini. Right now, the land route uh, takes around one to one and a half hours. On waterway, it will take just 10 to 15 minutes. Now, this will be Roro waterway where two wheelers can also go on to the barges and go on to the other side, which will be very helpful to the tourism, uh, overall tourism of Gokarna being a, a tourist place. The again, notification, tender notification for this project are already out. We will be look, looking for operators for this particular project. 
the uh, LCD bio also has been uh, uh, procured for this one. We have two coastal birds project at Hangarkatta and at Gangoli being approved by Sagarmala and the tender notifications for these two projects are already released. Uh, we have a waterway project on Gurupur river uh, in Mangalore to ease the traffic congestion along with Mangalore Smart City Limited we are planning a, in an integrated manner wherein the entire Gurupura river will have approximately 13 floating jetties coming shortly. This one is however on two end points we will be having a uh, Roro project wherein instead of going through the Mangalore city, the vehicles can ride, uh, uh, next can get uh, get on or off at Kulu Bridge and on the south side they can get on or off near Bola Sea Face. So this is a project which has been approved by Sagar uh, We have three islands on Gurupur River which we want to develop as a tourism facility wherein uh, the islands can be needs to be strengthened. We are going to install uh, birthing facilities on that and we are going to invite the pro prospective private players shortly for development of any tourism activity be it, uh, uh, be it a wedding destination, be it a film city etc. So anything which might uh, uh, get the tourism character of the city moving. So these projects will transform the city, uh, city of Mangalore. The entire Gurupu river will look like a, a, I should not be saying this, but it will look like a foreign destination altogether. Then uh, we have a beachfront facility at uh, Bangre Beach, similar to Tamil Bhavi Beach, we want to develop the Bangre Beach as well. We, got a, we have got the project approved from uh, Sagarmala and uh, the tender notification will be uh, released shortly. This is basically beachfront development of the Bangre region so that people can reach the uh, Bangre Beach very quickly rather than taking the long route from, uh, to, uh, from the northern side. Uh, like sir mentioned, this project number 9, dedicated Lakshadweep jetty is 100% approved from uh, government of India. We will be very soon, uh, shortly signing a memorandum of understanding between uh, government of Karnataka and Union Territory of Lakshadweep administration. Uh, the project entails development of a dedicated jetty for Lakshadweep. Also it has a cruise terminal, so we will be having smaller yachts and cruise vessels coming and uh, landing here, which will improve the overall tourism character of Mangalore city. So uh, the remaining two projects are under construction which is the development of we have uh, Tanadi Agnashni uh, ferry line which will be uh, in which a tender will be issued uh, tender has been issued in fact the waterway from Almaty to Bagalkot wherein the tender has been issued uh, notification Kali river is under positive consideration on the Sadashivgad side already we have issued the work order we are getting more funds from government of India for development of Kali river uh, a region including connecting connecting facility with Kalika Mata temple with the uh, Kurmagad island with the park side and on the, uh, in the hinterland with the uh, on the Katne side so we have a, a, a proposal which our uh, honorable chief minister raised with uh, honorable minister during his visit to delhi is uh, development of suvarna river which is the manipal region from hangarkate to manipal as a national waterway the proposal is being uh, followed very closely with government of India in it's under positive consideration and we have uh, in the first phase while Gurupur river will go on once the, once the project is successful we will also go for Netravati river wherein even cargo can be seen as an opportunity to take cargo directly up to uh, uh, hinterlands of Karnataka. So each of these projects uh, you can see the uh, impact which the maritime board is bringing by uh, launching these projects, these projects will be grounded shortly, tender process is already going on and uh, what used to take let's say for uh, an approximately an hour through road, uh, through a undulating terrain will now take only 10 to 15 minutes when this ferry line gets operationalized. It is a boon for the resorts in Gokarna who, who tourists of whom can easily access the uh, Agnashni uh, side of the, the Nirvana beach the Agnashni side of the region. Plus, Local people and the uh, local uh, fishermen will have, will have great advantage in doing this uh, trade instead of taking one hour long route, they will be taking 15 minute route. This project will be commissioned, uh, will be grounded very shortly. Next, uh, for the first time uh, in, in line with directions issued by, uh, by our Honorable Chief Minister in budget speech, we are going for a maritime training institute in Karwar. This institute will be training the local population. The, requirement for uh, uh, trained and uh, trained manpower in the shipping industry is huge and it is right now unmet. So from Karnataka side we do not have a comprehensive institute taking this up so we will be having this maritime training institute coming shortly. 
So there are a multitude of maritime projects, be it on large greenfield ports, mega ports, or on waterway side, operations of waterways or development of waterways, be it dredging, be it sea planes, be it houseboats or cruise terminals. And uh, some of these projects are with the government funding as well, wherein VGF can also be sought on some of these projects. So we invite and welcome all the private proponents and developers to come visit us at our uh, offices and uh, take more information about these projects, participate in the expressions of interest, tender documents or any uh, RFP which will be released in next one month, where I think, uh, if I am not wrong, we will be releasing around 8 to 10 tenders and uh, 4 to 5 requests for proposals and expressions of interest in next 20 days. So we, uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we appreciate this opportunity given by NMPA. Uh, to showcase these projects at this PPP conclave, with this being the right forum to reach out to all private proponents, and we invite everyone to again participate in these processes. This is for the betterment of the entire coastline. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I request uh, uh, Captain C. Swami to make a uh, concluding remarks on this presentation? Actually, we have done a, uh, this is the third uh, meeting. We have done previously two road shows. One was uh, in the October last year in uh, Mumbai and then two uh, seminar type uh, uh, programs in the Bangalore only. And this is the third uh, uh, session uh, where I am uh, for, uh, uh, um, submitting all these uh, projects before use them. Now, as I told in the beginning, so uh, we are committed. In fact, uh, whatever uh, uh, projects have been uh, discussed here have, have been already declared in the budget of 22-23 by our Honorable uh, Chief Minister. That is the uh, seriousness uh, we are having. So I don't want to take much time, but we are serious. Whatever projects you have seen, they are at the, uh, at, that means later stage, they are at the uh, uh, almost verge of calling for expression of interest and request for proposal. And we look forward uh, for uh, uh, active involvement in our uh, end of year to uh, develop uh, uh, Karnataka coast. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Captain Swami, for that wonderful presentation. Though the Kerala Karnataka Maritime Board has been uh, constituted very recently. You have done a lot of work and uh, so many projects, Indian projects under Sagar Mala, it's a wonderful thing. And uh, currently you have exhibited uh, about uh, nine projects which are in the final stages of that thing. And we are already married. Uh, in New Mangalore Port and uh, KMB has already been married. Our chairman is your board member and your CEO is our board member. And we are looking forward to develop this uh, Karyavali cost of 310 uh, nautical miles uh, in a synergic manner and whatever uh, joint efforts we have to do in this regard, we will do combinedly and looking forward to see that this uh, Karnataka is a real uh, destination for visiting and enjoying the hospitality. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we will work as a brothers and we will see that all these things, will, all these projects will be implemented shortly. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Captain Sub. Uh, Captain Sub, I want to ask you regarding that Karwar upgrading. See, the present is a 7 meter drop. Always we are having the problem of uh, 7 meter drop. Sometimes it is uh, getting down and uh, 6.7 something like that, 7.10, 7.1, 7 7.2. When you are going to do that upgrading, because we are always having the problem stating that we have to inform the principals, the draft is not there. And every time we will be the difficulties facing because of the draft. Every there is variation, sometimes when we ask, they will tell 7 meters, sometimes they will ask 7.1 meter, which is the correct and when you are going to upgrade. Okay, actually, this uh, question I expected from Nithya sir, but you have raised, thank you very much, because you are all uh, our, uh, with the department since many decades. As far as dredging of Karwar port is concerned, uh, uh, administrative approval was given long back. Unfortunately, we went for tender and we are not able to finalize the uh, uh, company. Finally, one company we have awarded, 
but that fellow uh, has not come forward. So now, after this monsoon, seriously we will take up, and uh, we, in fact we have budget for it. We have budget, and uh, if you suggest any of the companies who can undertake this work, you are welcome. I will straight away take it to our government, and I will see that uh, this uh, season it will be done. And. Sir, uh, one of the concerns uh, I would like to mention because this is the right right platform, I think, so you have been mandated to do this. Uh, since you are doing both the infrastructure, port development as well as tourism, I would like to take a point. One of the, uh, I don't know, the consultants have uh, come and uh, spoken to the local stakeholders, I am not sure about it, but uh, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, we have one of the surfing destinations in India. Surfing started in India and uh, the main place which surfing started was in Mulki. And that is way back in 2004. Today it has become a destination where uh, around 20 to 25,000 people come all over the country and the world and take surf classes here. But uh, the tragedy is that uh, the same spot there is a fishing port coming up under Sagar Mala again. So, it has completely destroyed that estuary and uh, already the work has started. Why both can't coexist, tourism as well as fishing? Why uh, these things were not considered? Because even if you spend any amount of money, you can't re uh, restore that. So, it is one of the best estuaries which has been totally destroyed now under construction. I think so, another breakwater will be coming and that entire area is, it's, it lost its charm. I'll just give you a figures. Before uh, 2016, it was around 20-25 lakhs business. Now it's a 4 crore business there among the river Shambhavi. But this is going to completely destroy the whole tourism thing. How this should have been brought into the notice and some work, more working model should have been made for coexistence of tourism as well as the fishing community. That's my concern. Sir, uh, your point is well noted because it is a valid uh, point, sir. Actually, whatever uh, uh, projects we have uh, envisaged, uh, we have uh, consulted uh, respective departments like fisheries department and tourism department, then only we have uh, uh, finalized this list. However, if there is some overlap where uh, uh, tourism cannot happen near the fishing harbor, because uh, it is obvious, because where uh, fishing uh, harbors normally uh, clean activities cannot be taken. So you, you please write to us or you just tell me, then I will take up with the uh, consult departments and I will see that uh, it is sorted out. Sir, good afternoon. This is from IOCL. Uh, regarding point number 9, dedicated lecture with JT. For UTL, uh, IOCL Kerala State Office is uh, dispatching about 60,000 LPG centers per year. There are 10 islands. In UTL, there are 10 islands. It is not that all 10 island are, islands are nearer to Kochi or Kalikat. There are at least 3 to 4 islands which are nearer to Mangalore. Uh, is there any planning of uh, dispatching LPG or any POL product from Mangalore to UTL in the subject uh, proposal? What is proposed? So, what we are seeing here is dedicated to Lakshadweep, jets, Lakshadweep vessels only, sir. But simultaneously, already we have one coastal berth. Already uh, work is under progress. Almost 25-30% uh, uh, of that work is, has been completed. That we are uh, undertaking towards uh, Bengre side. I think you must have seen where that uh, Bharati shipyard is there. Just south of that, uh, already work is, under, uh, work is under progress. So there we can add a P1. We, we are... Uh, Planning to have uh, PUL uh, uh, projects there. Okay. So from there you can handle. Uh, from Kerala also, there are seven dedicated vessels, dedicated vessels uh, like uh, uh, Ili Company, Telegram, like that. Uh, there are seven dedicated POL vessels which are used for POL as well as for LPG. Okay. What you are envisaging, these seven vessels also, or none of these vessels are envisaging for uh, uh, UTL from Mangalore? Uh, actually, yeah. Here uh, we are envisaging only the uh, cruise, that means passenger vessels okay. and uh, the vessels of Lakshadweep. So if you give, give me the details, like what is the length and uh, the draft required, yeah. because there we are going to increase the draft to 7 meters. So 7 meters is sufficient for you or? 
It will be okay. It will be uh, okay. We are in, increasing the draft to 7 meters here. Yeah. We will keep in touch with you. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. Sir. Good evening, sir. My name is Shishidhar Koppa. I am a civil engineer. Thank you, sir. Sir, there is a development of KD code is there. Uh, yeah, that under the uh, Swiss Challenge model is any development is there or uh, under association with uh, Adani or this? Okay, actually this, uh, okay, uh, it's uh, good that you have raised. Now we are not going uh, uh, ahead with the Swiss Challenge. We are uh, uh, processing this development of KNI under uh, public-private uh, partnership only, sir. No more uh, Swiss Challenge. No more Swiss Challenge. Thank you, sir, for a wonderful Thank you. Yeah. Board member of NMPA, and I am from Fisherman Community. We wanted a maritime college in Mangalore. It was our dream. So you said, according to your program, it is in Karwar. Yes. So if possible, can we shift to Mangalore for that? Our fisherman community will be with you, and uh, I, I hope uh, Portis also will uh, may support. So this uh, actually this program is has been announced by Anubhav CM. Only. Anyway, uh, I will uh, uh, have a dialogue with our uh, fisheries college because we have a well-developed uh, fisheries university here. The dean of that uh, university is close friend of mine, so I will discuss with him and. Uh, uh, how we can take it forward, that I have discussed. Thank you very much, sir, for the presentation and all the clarification. Now, may I request Sri Ananta, FNCO, and Sri uh, uh, Turai Pandian, Chief Mechanical Engineer, Cochin Port Authority, and Sri Bhagavat Singh, Deputy CME, to present a memento and bouquet to the speakers, Sri Captain C. Swami. Shri Samip Jain and Kumari Amisha Soni. <laughs> sir, 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 be kindly with this. Next, uh, sir. Samip, please. Next. May I request Captain uh, Shailendra Kumar of NMPA Harbour Master is here. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Now it's turn of Captain of Ports from Goa. May I now invite Captain Prem Lal Sirsaikar, Deputy Captain of Ports, Kerala Maritime Board for the presentation. Please welcome Captain Prem Lal Sirsaikar with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, everybody. I know this is a siesta time in Goa. After lunch, we try to have some sleep, and we are not really active. But let me see if I can make my presentation more attractive. Okay, on the behalf of Government of Goa, Captain of Port, Murmagao Port Authority, I express my deep gratitude for inviting for the excellent maritime PPP conclave at Murmagao. As you know, Goa, I don't have to tell you about Goa. Everybody gets excited when they want to go to Goa. Goa is not just about enjoyment, excitement. It is more of a, uh, a pride, actually, for the Indian maritime industry. Since the time 
the Portuguese invaded Goa. You know that they have actually arrived by water, and you can understand the navigation skill of them during those times. And they were the first to establish in the, in the whole of India a department meant for managing, regulating, monitoring the maritime activities. And that department was known as Capitão do Ports, and now it is known as Captain of Ports, which was established in the year 1912. And we have already completed about 100 years in 2012, and still going strong with the same department. Once upon a time, we had very few vessels, but we went on to register about 400 odd barges, uh, about 2,000 of water sports, and then we have uh, passengers just about 300, and our registry has reached about 880 vessels at the moment. So we are still managing with Captain of Port Department most of the activities in the state of Goa. Now what are we experts? As you know, Goa has been a maritime expert since 1512 with the invasion by the Portuguese. We are very good at cargo transfer and uh, light rates, ship designing, ship building and repairs, nautical tourism, fishing. Fishing, we have gone from cage farming to exports and seafarers training to employment. I'll come back to you in detail. Now this is Goa, a very small state having 108 uh, kilometers of uh, coastline with uh, three major rivers in North Goa, that is River Tirakol, River Shapora, River Mandovi. Then in the South Goa we have River Juari, River Sal, River Talpana, River Gajiba. And we have non-major ports, whereas Pandi port is only a functional port. Uh, the rest of ports are known as non-functional. However, they are called as ports because during the time of Portuguese, uh, the trade used to happen through sailing vessels. And I still remember that my grandfather used to have a sailing vessel which used to get Mangorian ties to Goa through the sailing vessels in these ports and used to get offloaded in a small canoe. But now, that, uh, that with the improvement in our roadways and railways, Cargoes have been restricted to this, but one day we'll come to the natural ways of transport that we'll be seeing. Because, I don't know, because this is all artificial built by us, and naturally is the water, and we'll realize the importance of water. Okay? So here we want to do some activities at non-functional port, but we are restricted by draft. The mouth of the most of the rivers are closed due to sandbars which are formed, and we require are really uh, dedicated efforts to continuously keep the mouth of the rivers open. And that's where uh, we are lacking to do improvement over here. Secondly is the weather and the monsoon. We have to shut our ports four months. And the end of May till the end of September, we have to close our ports. So most of the cargo gets moved from the road. And there is again a bottleneck okay, over here. Weather plays a major role. Uh, these are the two main rivers where uh, the, most of the trades are happening, uh, most of the cargo moves actually, Mandavi River and Juari River. Uh, but there are restrictions, we have a draft restriction of 3.2 meters, there is air draft restriction because of bridges, we have about 9 meters. Then Juari again the same, 3.2 meters and air draft of 12 meters. But these are the major rivers uh, who are contributing to the economy of Goan trade. Here, uh, recently, you know that uh, IWA declared six uh, waterways, six rivers as national waterways, out of which Chapura is already declared Marzua, Mandavi, Mafsa, Sal, and Juari. Only two are actually used, Mandavi and Juari. The rest are still not being used. Efforts are on to improve uh, through tourism or some of the other ways. Okay. Yeah, as I already said that, you know, uh, dredging is a major portion that requires for safe navigation and government of Goa is spending money so there is no much revenue, you know, so as to make it affordable and navigable. We have already done, for the last two years we have done about 18 kilometers of dredging river sal to improve the tourism activity. As I already said that mouth of those rivers, most of the rivers are closed. Now the fishing trawlers who wants to venture out but cannot because the mouths of the rivers 
are already closed due to sand bars. Now you know Goa has been in the limelight for having first maritime cluster and and which is known as Konkan Maritime Cluster. Now the both state government as well as central government has has give give their assistance. Now everybody has spoke about uh, Sagarmala's three branches, which is um, port modernization. We talked about port evacuation. Everybody wants to e evacuate the cargo as early as possible. I was hearing since morning there are so many bottlenecks. Then we are talking about maritime uh, port modernization. Sorry, port industrialization. Now this is one of the things that we are coming up, which is known as Konkan Maritime Cluster wherein we will be building lots of ships for the state of, for the country and we would want Karnataka also to participate in Konkan Maritime Cluster. We already have about 36 MSME government members. We want Karnataka also to become the members of Konkan Maritime Cluster. There will be a common facility center. You can design the vessel here, you can construct there and you can build and brought it over here, bring it over here. Then we have beneficiary companies, that is ancillary companies 121 who will be uh, benefiting from this. There are a lot of engineering companies, there are a lot of employment. The construction is already underway. Uh, our Honorable uh, Minister Mr. Nitin Gadkari has inaugurated, Honorable Minister for Shipping, then, uh, then now he's a health minister, he has inaugurated that Konkan uh, uh, Maritime Cluster. Now what do we have actually in Goa? See, existing cluster, what is the strength? Now as you know that Goa has been manufacturing ships for the last 50 years and has been expert in all domains of maritime sector from port operation, inland water navigation to shipbuilding and repairs. So here we have Goa, we have an established infrastructure. We can go and test up the vessel through this maritime cluster. Then we have about 36 shipyards and 13 dry docks to carry out maintenance and repairs in the state of Goa under maritime cluster now, who have already become the members. Then there are a lot of shipyards and expert shipyards shipyard who are constructing ships, not for the state of India only, but also for the foreign players. Now this is one of the, the special trade vessel built by Vijay Marine Shipyard, then a tanker for Kerala built by Vijay Marine Shipyard, oil tanker, then cutter suction dredger by West Coast Shipyard, again a crane barge, we are having a transshipment operation, so these type of barges are quite crane barge by Dempo Shipyard, then Mandovi dry docks have constructed lots of ships and still under, uh, doing a lot of construction. A maximum we have done construction of 5,500 in the inland waters, uh, DWT. Then 30 tons of Bollard pool uh, by, built by Mandovi dry docks. Now Timlo dry dock is also doing a very good job. They are building vessels for the foreign countries as well. Uh, DP vessels uh, and small container vessels. And this is Jogle shipbuilding. They have got an order and they started getting orders from foreign, Netherlands. Again, a 5,500 tonner of, of six vessels of same type. They constructed by Chokles and already delivered. Then they are still getting the orders. So here is that. Then we have a further scale of construction of sailing vessel, yacht, aluminium, fast boat. So we have a, a expert in Goa already lying down there. Further, we are uh, trying to go green now by introducing uh, solar ferries. I know Kerala has already started that. We have copied that actually and shortly after monsoon we are going to inaugurate our first solar ferry. Uh, then we are planning for uh, battery operated vessels also, so we are trying to go green. Now here is the point, promotion of coastal shipping. As you have studied and everybody are under development from Sagar Mala, but what I would like to say, Goa is already having lots of jetties, a private jetties, a small small jetties wherein a cargo can come loaded through barge and can load or can come on the coastal route or can be exported. Now we have about 33 loading jetties in both the rivers, river Mandovi and river Juari, and most of the jetties are lying idle because there is ban on a, a car iron ore. And even then, if, even at, if at all the cargo movement starts of iron ore, I don't think we will reach to that peak what we had reached once upon a time. So still most of these jetties will remain idle and I would like, even the, our barges
maritime boards in providing inland connectivity, challenges and way forward from Kerala Maritime Board. Here we have Shri T.P. Salim Kumar, IRS Chief Executive Officer, Kerala Maritime Board. Over to you, sir. afternoon to all. I'm sure uh, everybody will be feeling sleepy after a sumptuous lunch. You know, because after lunch, it takes some time for the uh, for the system to, the blood to pump. So initially, you will be awake for some time. Then after that, the, even if we resist yourself, you will be succumb to the pressure of the body that, you know, the all the blood will be utilized for itself for the, uh, you know, digestion. So, it is a Herculean task for me. So, I'll try to uh, restrict myself. Okay, let the technicians take care of the uh, my presentation. Uh, so actually, uh, when the term inland connectivity, the challenges ahead is uh, point, I don't think uh, most of us will think of the uh, you know uh, inland traffic, inland using the inland waterways. While developing the uh, maritime boards, if in all these states, if these are not drafted in a similar fashion. Suppose in some states the fishing, fishing harbors are under the maritime board, whereas in other states it's not. And the inland navigation, which is a very prominent area, is not covered under the uh, you know uh, maritime boards. It is in Kerala. It is owned by the Kerala Shipping and Inland Navigation Corporation. So there are so many uh, you know dissimilarities in the uh, maritime boards themselves. So uh, I am going to present before you the challenges before the inland transportation, but with a more emphasis on the coastal shipping. So, uh, a little bit introduction about the Kerala Maritime Board. It is act was in uh, 2017, but formally in 2018. We have 17 non-major ports. Of course, Kochi is there uh, as our major port, and the another one is coming up in Virinam, Transshipment Terminal. So, it is an umbrella body for all the maritime related activities in the state. We are also the registering authority for the inland vessels. That is houseboats, cruise boats, and all. Shikaras, and kind of vessels. And uh, of course, you all know that Kerala is a paradise for the houseboats. We are having more than 2,500 uh, uh, houseboats in Kerala. And uh, we have uh, now, oh, we started Kerala Maritime Board in off oh, late, very late. Because we have got bigger brothers uh, in Gujarat who started in 1982 and Maharashtra Maritime Board started in 1996. Gujarat Maritime Board is now like an agency who, which is funding the government of Gujarat. So that is the potential 
in the maritime sector. They have got, uh, you all know that they have got uh, several ports including Mundra, which is leading, a, you know, it's, an, uh, it's not coming under the major ports. It's com directly coming under the uh, maritime port. So, Kerala maritime sector, we have got a uh, 50, 590 kilometer long coastline. Uh, we have proximity due, due to the geographical advantage, we have proximity to the international shipping route. Cochin, we have got the major uh, port, including uh, transshipment terminal. Then uh, nine coastal districts are there. We have uh, one international trans transshipment terminal in Cochin. And another one is coming up in Bidinjam, which is having a natural draft of around 18 meters. And it will be digged up to 30 meters to, you know, cater to the largest vessels. Even the largest vessel in the uh, world, I think, uh, we can come to fall on at uh, Virginia. And uh, once the Virginia comes, we all know that the Colombo is the, you know, Colombo is dependent on Kerala, I'm sorry, India. 50%, more than 50% of their cargo, transshipment cargo is from India. See, all these things will be uh, transformed, will be taken care of uh, by the Virginia. So, Virinjam is going to change the entire uh, scenario uh, the, in the maritime sector or shipping sector in the country and the neighboring, neighboring countries. Coming to the this thing, we have uh, one national waterway. Uh, in 1993, it was declared. It has got a 205 kilometer stretch of inland navigation routes. Uh, so, this I'll skip. As I said earlier, uh, we, are, we are the registering authority for the uh, inland houseboats. So houseboats, uh, I think most of you must have visited in Kerala and uh, would have enjoyed the houseboats in Alabi. If not in Alabi, everywhere in every district, we have got uh, 47 rivers, which all are navigational inside uh, Kerala. So everywhere we have uh, presence of maritime board uh, in the in the by way of the uh, you know uh, inland vessels registering authority we have marine surveyors uh, naval architects to uh, register to inspect the boats periodically to find out the illegally illegally uh, constructed the houseboats and all so inland uh, navigation is taken care that way coming to the uh, you know container transportation or you know export or import through the inland inland waterways we have got one private port in kotayam so which is taking the cargo by barges six uh, containers are taken at, at, at the, the, the capacity is only six uh, this thing in the barge because you know uh, the draft is a phenomenal issue everywhere the average draft will be 1.5 uh, meters. So the barge is the, you cannot uh, load the barge with more containers. So Kotaim is the only uh, inland port in the, in the probably in the country, I think. It is in a, it is not in the sea mouth, it is in the lake. So, oh sorry, I said uh, 2,500 uh, houseboats now, it is three, 3,000 plus houseboats in Kerala, but you will find at least 250, 500 plus illegal boats than this 3,000. Because illegal boats, it is very difficult to find out. We are trying our best to find out using the GPS and other kind of technologies. But these people, they are very smart enough to evade us. So uh, we are trying, and the high court is very. Uh, we vehement on that point that you, we have even uh, uh, made a detention yard to detain the uh, illegally constructed or uh, not re unregistered uh, houseboats. See all these places you can see uh, from the south, down south to north of Canada we have uh, uh, registering authorities. So, uh, as I said earlier, draft is the main issue. Whether whether it come to the you know uh, inland 
transportation or the coastal shipping. Come in Kerala, uh, I'll come to that slides later. Okay. I'm skipping all this. Uh, yeah. We have got 17 uh, ports in Kerala, but operational port ports are Beppur, Kollam, Vidinam, Arikal. Beppur is the second largest port in Kerala other than uh, Kochi, which is uh, having regular transportation to uh, Lakshadi and uh, having other uh, shipping activities also. Kollam is also a very uh, good uh, port. Vidinam, we have a minor port and the other international transshipment terminal is coming up next to our minor port. Arikal also, Arikal is a riverine port. Uh, again, coming to the inland navigation, Arikal can be a best example. We are having a riverine port. Uh, it is 5 km almost inside the uh, sea mall. So, Vidinam is the uh, port in our south of Kerala. It has all the potential to become a major port, but now we have uh, given that honors to Adani. Uh, now we are in, in on a PPP basis, we are constructing Vidinam International or Deep Water uh, Transshipment Terminal. But Vidinam, as a minor port, we, are, we were uh, handling the, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, crew change. Because in the COVID times, it was very difficult for the, uh, you know, mariners to sign off and sign on because most of them were serving on the vessels for more than uh, one year and all during COVID time because no, some of, in some of the places, you know, they were not allowed to, uh, uh, you know, berth and all. So then the DG shipping permitted the outer anchorage uh, to change. And uh, thanks to Bureau of Immigration, now in Virginia it is also stopped. We have uh, served more than uh, 200 uh, vessels. Uh, we got a revenue of more than 10 crores for the port revenue alone. And for the steamer agents, for the other uh, hotel industry, transportation, uh, tourist industry, for all those. And GST revenue accrued through that. All, you know, other are, uh, that are innumerable. So, uh, outer anchorage uh, uh, crew change should again should be resumed. That is what we feel. I think uh, the Cochin board also share the same view. Uh, and there are you know proposals to operate ship again to Mali from uh, Vidinam. We have got two wharfs at uh, uh, Vidinam, which are very small. Nowadays, these are occupied by Coast Guard. They have got two vessels berthed uh, uh, there. But they have agreed to remove it as and when we require it. So that is the state about Vidinam. Kollam is a very beautiful naturally draft, uh, natural draft is 7.5. We have got a 170 meter uh, uh, berth. And having a huge poten potential for uh, development. Now, in the 25th year of private-public partnership, Koji, uh, sorry, Kollam can be the best opening for the private operators to invest, either for uh, operations or for cargo handling. You know, in the sense, uh, coastal car uh, shipping. There are so many inquiries. We have conducted an uh, investors meet in the, by the form of PRISM. But uh, KMB still we are having, uh, you know, lack of professionals. So once uh, we, have, we, have, we have, you know, made all the effort to make uh, the KMB operator first with the government and the government is also trying to help us. So once these initial inertia is overcome, because the, from the professional, the, the employee side also, they have their state government employees, they cannot have that kind of a, a you know, professional approach like other private or you know, corporate bodies do. So we are overcoming all this. 
slowly and uh, we will be opening all the investment inquiries uh, in a couple of months. So Kollam will be our first priority for PPP model. <laughs> then Bebur. We have got a regular passenger service to Lakshadweep, a regular cargo service to Lakshadweep because let be Calicut and uh, Lakshadweep the trade relation is dates back to you know immemorial uh, times. Uh, it started uh, you know the wooden vessels called urus used to transport at that point of time. Even now, till recently, Urus were there. Now, enquiries for Uru are still there in Adikal. Uh, of course, it is having a smaller, uh, you know, capacity. But uh, Urus uh, were being exported to uh, other countries till recently from Bepur. But our problem is the draft. Draft is very, you know, 3.5. The existing berth is 320 meters long. Which is a very good uh, length for a minor as well as a non major port is concerned. And being the second largest port of uh, Kerala, we have prepared a master plan for the development of Baipur with the help of IIT Chennai. We are waiting the document. The government, the last week also, we had a discussion with the IIT Chennai. And all the uh, proposals for dredging, uh, container yard and other things sorry, will be presented before the Sagarmala for funding and we will be, uh, you know, we, are, we, we will be through uh, with the help of the, you know, uh, minister because Lakshadweep, recently they have approached us because Lakshadweep administration, they uh, slowly switched away from us, from Mepur, some time back maybe one year, one year ago. But now again they want to operate from uh, Bank, uh, uh, Vepur. They have approached us to, they will construct a berth at the tune of, uh, you know, uh, uh, 22 crores and uh, a dedicated berth because they uh, want the turnaround time to be reduced to the maximum, to the minimum. So they told us, you know, they, we, they will berth, uh, construct a berth for 20 crore uh, rupees. And they want that exclusive birth entirely for them, devoted for them. So we are ready for that because we have got adequate land in Bepur. Then Adikal, uh, it is again, it is a uh, riverine port having uh, 3.5 mile, miles away uh, from the sea mouth. But it is having again, you know, 2 meter, 280 meter birth, having all the scope for uh, uh, who is tourism because it is very beautiful inside the Kerala. So cruise tourism also can be developed there in Adikal. This also we will be opening up to the private uh, later. Now this, uh, there is a trust on the floating jetties as far as the uh, you know central government is concerned because uh, permanent jetties are costing a lot. So floating jetties we will be constructing in Kollam, uh, Arikal, Kodungalur, Alapuda, Kayangulam and Baliyadura because uh, you know there are a lot of scope for uh, this floating jetties. These are also of immense for, uh, you know uh, potential for the uh, private investment. And we have uh, several proposals for the inland uh, uh, tourism also because basically uh, though inland navigation is not devoted to us the by way of inland vessels we operate almost entire the stage so that way we have a high a good command over the inland uh, transportation also and uh, uh, today also we had a meeting of the you know road rail connectivity the funding of which will come be will be coming from the uh, Sagarmana or PPP. So these again uh, we will come to you. We will be having an investors meet soon in Cochin. 
showcasing our potential in the minor port sector in Kerala. So, uh, actually, uh, we are very uh, childish or infants as because we are only very four years old. So, we are listening. In at each and every opportunity, we are listening from others. We are trying to, uh, you know, uh, emulate, evaluate, and, you know, uh, try to develop. Uh, we have got a very, you know, good leader in the form of this CM, and we have got a very dynamic uh, chief minister, uh, port minister, and my chairman is there, you know, he was having a very high uh, experience, learned experience in the form of a IA and a S officer. IAS officer who was the principal AG and who was the chairman of the uh, KCB also. So we are now working as a team. Uh, now the Kerala Maritime Board is bound to progress and improve. So for which we need the support from all of you. And uh, coming to the uh, coastal shipping or rather you term it inland transportation. Now even I am told the 40% of the cargo handled in Cochin International Transshipment Terminal belongs to domestic se sector. So there is a lot of potential for the domestic cargo. I myself uh, was the general manager of the Civil Supplies Corporation. I know because we are a consumer state, we are having a lot of cargo from uh, northern India through Mundra or Kandla ports. The only problem is that they don't get the any return cargo. So unless you get, because you are, you know, uh, you, the shipping companies, they don't get the return cargo, uh, their, you know, entire exercise is futile. So the government of Canada has introduced a scheme of coastal shipping incentive. So we are paying 20, if, suppose we are taking a car, uh, vessel from Kochi to uh, Bepur, there are 50 containers or 100 containers and on return voyage there are only 20. So we will be paying if it is a 20 feet container for 80 containers for which they didn't get the return cargo, we will be paying at the rate of rupees 10,200 back to the shipping companies. So in the last, to the last operator we have paid more than 2.5 crores. So this is a model which can be started by all uh, maritime boards because it will boost your coastal shipping. Not only that, I request all the maritime board representatives here to present this in the upcoming MSDC meeting so that you know, uh, let the central government take care of this kind of uh, incentive schemes because I am getting a lot of cargo in Cochin, we are getting a lot of cargo from uh, uh, than not. but they go empty handed. If the coastal shipping, coastal incentive scheme is introduced, this will be taken care of. So I think I have taken most of your time. Uh, so uh, thank you. Any questions? Nice presentation, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, know uh, regarding this uh, uh, registration of the boards uh, because I had some experience somewhere, so I just wanted to discuss and find out what those suppose before uh, inception of this maritime uh, board before there must be some old boards. Then how you are re regulating because they are. They have not been built as per specification. They yeah. have been built traditionally. Yeah. But even uh, before the you know uh, uh, starting of the KMB, uh, forming of the state maritime board, there was a port directorate. So the port directorate was taking care of this. So we are only a continuation of this uh, uh, map, uh, port directorate, basically. Illegally constructed or uh, not constructed as per specification. 
the U.S. may be following the IV rules as well. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. And uh, uh, are you taking help of uh, any certifying agency as you have been No, doing? we ourselves are the certifying agency. No, basically, the class verifier or anything you have appointed or your own, uh, the, uh, what's it called, surveyors are taking care of the construction of the Yes, yes. There are, so we are going to chief surveyor, then marine surveyors are there. Okay. So these the surveyors will inspect uh, even we are right from the construction, the design should be approved by, we have got another uh, parallelly uh, empaneled uh, sur surveyors or you know uh, approved agencies. Okay. So they are basically naval architects. They will approve the design, okay. bring to back to us, bring to us for the, before the construction itself. So then uh, we will go we verify the design whether it is up to the as per their level because we basically look into the stability uh, yeah. and other uh, aspects of course fire safety and other things. What about uh, these uh, wooden boards? Uh, wooden boards. They, they are, these are basically wooden boards only. Uh, and that's what the, uh, there is no standard regulation, uh, standard uh, made for the wooden boards as far as my knowledge goes because the uh, the. Uh, IRS and other classification society, they have data of association about the... Exactly, uh, exactly, I do agree with you. Yeah. yeah, I do agree with you that because we don't have any standard specification uh, like uh, IRS or you know, but uh, we basically look into the stability aspect and over a period of time our um, um, uh, surveyors have evolved a, a scheme. Now you see, see what is the, what should be the maximum breadth can be. It is, it is there in the IV Act, in our IV Act itself, which is one-fifth of the total length. So that itself will cater to the entire, you know, entire, entire scheme. Then uh, coupled with the stability aspect, then the hull, uh, everything. So then is, uh, you know, naturally it is bound to follow all the safety standards. I think it's a good learning for other uh, maritime boards and other IV controlling authorities. Yes, yes. Because uh, uh, this, uh, I think those who are operating, maybe uh, uh, knowing that this, this, this aspect creates a lot of a tussle between the operator and the regulator. Yeah, and on top of it, I'll tell you because now the fishing fishing boats are not com coming under us. Earlier we were doing it, then it was taken back by the fisheries department. But now they are in doldrums. They don't have any kind of mechanism. Now the government is asking us to. Uh, do the seaworthiness certification, so which we have agreed uh, that you know we will be verifying the because and the Navy and Coast Guard is very uh, you know uh, they are very critical about the state government in the maritime security meetings and all. They are very often offer their you know, open up their mind and say that the fishing boats are you know they are uncontrolled uh, people because they, then uh, the government is coming to maritime boat to take up the task of uh, verifying the seaworthiness which we are. Uh, working on it. We have given the purpose. Another uh, uh, thing I just uh, wanted to know as well as this, these uh, floating jetties, uh, are you uh, planning that box type plastic jetties or uh, concrete only? But concrete only. Uh, concrete uh, floating jetties. Yes. Okay. Next. Because the other thing we may not be having that. Uh, the other uh, thing is basically creating a pollution. Uh, uh, pollution, uh, yeah. Uh, pollution. Not only pollution, then uh, that is yeah. stability and other things also have to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Uh, sir, I am Mahadevan, Professor Sinari Time. Uh, very happy to know the developments about uh, Kerala Maritime Government of the Second Class. I have two questions. Yes. It is regarding the incentive of what you are talking about. If the coastal vessel loads from Mangalore, can you make uh, the mic closer or something? Uh, Hold like this. Uh, can you can yeah. talk? Yeah. If a coastal vessel is loading from Mangalore hmm. to Beipo or Kuala, whether they are eligible for an incentive, once they pass, because my question is like this, I went is from Karnataka, but once they pass the Karnataka border and enter say, Kerala, so the nearest one from Mangalore is probably Talapadi or something. Are we eligible to get the incentive? Uh, as a CEO of Maritime Board, I can say that uh, uh, a big no. But you know, from your point of view, you are right. That is why I, uh, you must have noticed what I said in the upcoming MSDC meeting. 
and for all other maritime boards to take up this issue of pan india coastal incentive scheme because now you know state government uh, can take cater to the uh, needs of the local uh, requirements only so i cannot uh, give uh, some incentive to the mangalore uh, mangalore or goa or maharashtra or gujarat maritime boards so the central government should come up something like a, a pan india coastal incentive scheme no let it be given by the state concerned state governments but let it be replenished by the central government by in the form of a sagarmara funding or any other schemes so that you know it will improve the you know uh, coastal shipping uh, i'll add this uh, one more thing to you because now the world over global average of logistical cost vis a vis gdp is 13 uh, sorry 7 to 8 percent that is the world average so when i get uh, my rice at the rate uh, uh, at the rate of 80 rupees or 40 rupees the logistical cost in the in in, in the world
uh, which uh, will be uh, Uh, really afford uh, the, to use a bigger berth and they may be satisfied with having a, a berth run by the uh, Marmagoa port. Uh, so I would request the port authorities that uh, you know we can follow the PPV model wherever it is uh, uh, you know feasible but also to keep the smaller players in mind so that they are not uh, uh, totally wiped out you know. Like a few more examples would be the say the iron ore industry. The iron ore industry was at its boom and you know uh, Goa became the uh, almost one third of uh, India's iron ore export was uh, being uh, channelized through Goa ports, those were the days. But then slowly uh, because of the changes in law, changes in environmental issues and so many other things and uh, world prices also changing, soon Goa lost, lost its uh, you know uh, old magic of exporting iron ore and now uh, uh, recently, we have had a Supreme Court, two Supreme Court judgments, uh, which have uh, you know stopped the mining completely. So now, when uh, I know limps back to normalcy, we don't have any birth uh, for the uh, I know industry. So here would be a case where uh, two PPP uh, models in the past I mean came, but there were no takers or one taker uh, you know backed out because of the change in the environment, law, and other things. So everything is now, I know, would have to be done at Anchorage. So basically, I think it will vary with commodity, economics, and so many things. Uh, and the PP, I welcome the PPV model. It's already been a success in Goa, and at least three births. And I'm sure it'll be a more successful more births, but maybe we can think of looking at those commodities which are having some issues that, uh, you know, maybe we can give them some common user facility also. And, um, for example, Goa is very uh, ecologically uh, sensitive area, and uh, there also, you know, uh, PPP operators would, uh, you know, have to uh, tread with caution when they are handling uh, some commodities which uh, 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 they may be having any ecological uh, situation. Uh, also, the recent changes in law, unfortunately, have at uh, our port, like for example, the recent uh, export duty on iron ore of 50 percent. The recent uh, export duty on steel and the export duty on pig iron. So these are all examples of how you know uh, things can change very very fast. And uh, so we have to move forward, move forward uh, fast, but we have to move forward with some kind of uh, study and caution that you know where uh, which direction we are taking. Uh, on the uh, positive side is we we uh, our chamber of commerce has had uh, meetings uh, with a lot of other chambers. We have had welcomed the Bellari Chamber of Commerce recently. We found so many areas where uh, we can work. So th these are things uh, which uh, are are uh, 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 quite uh, some positive things are there. Uh, we are also looking at you know uh, we have had. Uh, uh, issue with uh, like when you, okay now the Bali ICD is uh, in functional so because of that uh, the only feeder service from Marmagoa port stopped for some time so that has been a bit of a setback uh, to the to the port sector there so these are the things so these are the scenarios uh, which keep fast changing and models can uh, uh, change very fast one more interesting thing is that sometimes you can have big airports also coming in the area which can again uh, change the scenario like for example the Mopa airport is of uh, the GMR is about to start functioning the GMR uh, uh, they are the our logistic uh, members of our logistic uh, committee and they seem to see see a good interface between port airport and such things uh, they feel for example that the raw materials could be brought by air from uh, various countries like China or wherever they come from 
and they could go to the the factory and then they could be uh, you know made into uh, final products and then exported from Marmakoa port via containers. So that that these are the interfaces uh, which seem to be of interest as uh, the future comes. So this is uh, my my reaction to the overall picture. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Dhiren, and uh, you have made a very important point that uh, uh, there are many small stakeholders which have been dependent upon port for so many long time. And in this PPP pursuit, we should not forget about their interests. And uh, maybe as a public sector authority, we should also know that uh, we are not here only for sole profit. We may not be that efficient. We, n we may not be profitable. We may have to work with losses also, but we need to honor our old relations. Maybe we can have, you know, the, at least 75 to 80 percent of our operations as pri privatized or on PPP model and just keep 20 to 25 percent for those who will not be able to avail those kind of services which we intend uh, through PPP model and those services are always available uh, through our public sector and they will also act as a deterrent to the private sector to create some kind of monopoly also and this is a very uh, very balanced this will be a very balanced situation in which uh, all stakeholders perspective is well taken care of because government is for the services also not just for the profit now i would like to invite uh, mr jeetan to put his views on the topic thank you i am representing the kendra chamber of commerce and industry and uh, on behalf of my president the my co-directors and all the members i would like to thank the committee for having given us this privilege and being invited for this uh, prestigious conclave and uh, we are celebrating the 25 years of uh, uh, the PPP investments in uh, major ports coinciding, coinciding with the, the our, uh, Azadi, Azadi Kam, Amrit Mahotsav. So let's all congratulate ourselves on that. Well, as far as uh, the PPP model is concerned, yes, I think 25 years back the first uh, model was implemented in JNPA and we are seeing the result. Today, JNPT port boasts of being a world-class port. And tier two ports like us, like in Goa and Mangalore, uh, I think we also need to march towards that. And PPP model is very, very essential because when we are talking about uh, in edging or inching towards a world-class port infrastructure, then this investment of infrastructure is very huge and it has to come only by the PPP model. And I think NMPA has done a very good job uh, with the, the coal terminal, the coal handling being mechanized, and now the container handling facility also. But uh, again, I would second uh, Takar Saab uh, on the port also, considering uh, a port run, port al I mean, birth also, because we have now facing a difficulty with finding a deep draft berth. I'm sure uh, my fellow port users will also second that. So we are not opposing for the PPV initiatives already taken. We are really happy and uh, thrilled about it. Uh, also, when we, being from the Kanta Chamber of Commerce, who is an apex body representing the business community and the economic growth and development of this region, for us, apart from being a director in KCCI, I am also a port user myself, and I am representing the shipping interests uh, from the chamber. So we are all today have discussing about the port connectivity issue, which is a serious uh, challenge because whoever the stakeholders today who have invested in the PPP model uh, will definitely want the, uh, want, want the volumes to justify their uh, uh, investment returns in terms of profit. And for that, the chamber as such has taken a proactive step because we, not only the cargo in the local areas of the port, we require the cargoes from right from the hinterland to flow into the port uh, only, only by which inducement these PPP stakeholders can justify and this port also could grow to be a world-class uh, infrastructure. So from the chamber, we have taken initiative of representing to right up to the PMO, to the uh, Ministry of Surface Transport, Ministry of Shipping, all the local MLAs and MPs, 
right from last year, but unfortunately, there was not, not much of progress. Today, uh, this year, again, this monsoon, we are facing a similar situation where landslides have caused the uh, stoppage of the main Sharadi Ghat, which prevents the cargo flow from the major hinterland uh, areas of which is required for this port. Again, this year, we have taken a stronger representation. Just two weeks back, we have shot out uh, our letters to uh, Nitin Gadkariji and uh, to all the local MLAs and MPs and uh, we have appraised it to the local authorities, the national highways also, to, that there should be given an alternative route and it should be made operational soon. Otherwise, the entire efforts, as what also which was discussed by one of the major exporters and importers of Cashew and Mr. Rahul Kamath said, what we started uh, 20 years back or two, uh, two decades back, we should not go back to square one where we'll be losing cargo to uh, neighboring ports of course, Cochin and uh, Chennai. So, uh, that, that is the initiative, so maybe I can use this forum to uh, also uh, convey this so that anybody could join us also in putting pressure on the uh, concerned ministry and authorities to you know, have this uh, reinstated. On the other side, I am very glad to note, uh, and I am sure I will convey this to our uh, chamber members also, the chamber is very glad to note uh, the initiatives taken by the KMB and I would like to congratulate Captain Swami on that. Uh, a lot of projects I think so has been uh, identified and earmarked for uh, uh, developing our Gurukur River and uh, and the Netravati as well. So making it uh, uh, supposed to be quite an international standards and attracting tourism. So congrats, uh, Captain, and we should see Gurukur develop that <laughs> develop that way. <laughs> Also, uh, the chair, uh, chairman of CIA also had con uh, raised a concern with respect to overlapping, what I understood is the overlapping of two interests. One is the tourism, which is the uh, surfing, and coinciding with the, or overlapping with uh, the development of the fishing port. I think the same was appraised uh, before Captain Swami. I think it should be considered and, you know, both should coexist. So, other than that, of course, the chamber is also behind after the airport. Uh, now that Adani has taken over the airport, so we should see some surge in the air cargo also, which has got a huge potential. So the chamber is at work at that, I'd like to assure you. And apart from that, let's hope first we get over, get away, get over the issue of the port connectivity. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Jitan. And uh, of course, everybody sitting here would like to see their ports as world-class ports. And you have rightly raised the issue of port connectivity. In fact, uh, port is one of the most important stakeholder in this connectivity issue, apart from the industry. Of course, industry can put uh, the pressure only from the outer side, but if as a port we enter into this, we can put some internal pressures also. And we need to do a very sound economic analysis that how much of the cargo we as a port are losing because of these connectivity issues. We have to convert it into the monetary terms and let the ministries know whether it is the railway ministry or whether it is the ministry of road transport or whether it is the ministry of shipping that this much worth of cargo the port is losing because of the connectivity issues. And the more there is the delay, more the money the economy is going to lose. That way we will be able to make a bit better case for all these port connectivity issues and the port should take the central lead in putting forward the claims for the better connectivity. We should plan for 25 years ahead or something like that so that our all stakeholders because this... May I now request uh, Sri Vikas Nerwal, IAS Deputy Chairperson, Cochin Port Authority to present a flower bouquet and memento to Sri Dhirendra Kumar, Deputy Chairman, Goa Chamber of Commerce. Also, I request sir to present a bouquet and memento to Sri Jitan, Director, Kendra Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you, sirs. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we had a marathon sessions, more than 15 sessions yesterday and today on this Maritime Public Private Partnership Conclave 2022. Now, before drawing the curtain, 
it is the closing remarks for all these sessions what we had and also inaugural session what we had my request the deputy chairperson shri k jinath new bangalore port authority for the concluding remarks as well as to convey the thanks to all the participants who have participated in conclave 2022 my colleague shri vikas narwal ias heads of departments and officers from various ports goa uh, kochi kochi and new mangalore esteemed guests who have taken their time out of their big busy schedule to attend this two day conclave who have contributed immensely to various sessions happened here a very good evening to all of you it is my proud privilege to offer the concluding remarks on this two day conclave which we have conducted jointly with the goa port as well as cochin port the summit started with an inaugural inaugural program in the inaugural program in the keynote address chairman new bangalore port authority has highlighted the requirement that uh, port and bpp operator operator should function as partners true partners operators should be incentivized for handling additional cargo with liberal terms additional land and facilities should be given at uh, concessional rates and there is a possibility for uh, introducing telescopic royalty rates formation of uh, ports internal finance financial team for appraising the ppp projects that means from the current status of all ppp projects being appraised by the ministry or other levels of appraisal committees it should be at the port level that means port should be empowered under the npa act to take up such proposals on their own dr bina a chairperson of cochin port in her speech mentioned about the cooperative development of major ports citing the example of three ports coming together to host this event earlier ports major ports themselves were competing one another now the scenario has been changed and madam also mentioned that ppp is our answer to the infrastructure development requirements in our session was followed by a session on port development the keynote speaker was shri nrsu who is the representative of iaps in india he is a maritime and port expert he highlighted that the scope of cargo handling is to the tune of 10.8 million billion tons in the country and the sad part he has highlighted is that in the major ports with the 19th and 20th century infra facilities we are competing with 21st century infra private ports he has also pointed out a major point saying that the turn around time is the turnover that is a very crucial remark he has made and he highlighted the requirement of mega projects 
citing the various international examples and he has mentioned about the Vathwan board which is coming up and already JNPT is going to be a landlord port and excelling its activities. And he also highlighted about the requirements of connectivity and a dedicated rail and road corridor to cater to the ports. This session was followed by a presentation by Sri Devaki Nandan, Executive Vice President and Head Business Development, JSW. He has touched upon various activities like a container handling, bulk and break bulk handling through their various port projects. He highlighted that there is a 10% growth in FDI that is happening and a robust economic mechanism already in position. Government is bringing flexible PPP mechanism over the years. Different models have been created by government and that is well received. But he was a little bit apprehensive about the 21 MCA which is also not fully catering to their requirements. And he requested the port authorities to be more investor friendly and pro PPP operator saying that the, in the true sense we are not considering or the major ports are not considering them as the true partners. There was a presentation from India Gateway, India Gateway Terminal Private Limited which is handling, which is operating the international transshipment terminal at Cochin. The presentation was made by Mr. Praveen Thomas, Chief Executive Officer of Dubai Port World. In his presentation, Mr. Thomas highlighted that, highlighted the uh, relative advantage between direct sailing as well as transshipment versus vis-a-vis -vis transshipment and he's saying that proving that with the figures that the investment, uh, the saving in the transshipment is substantial. That is why even when multiple handling is happening, many major lines are resorting to transshipment business. And he highlighted certain requirement from the port operator side saying that the draft should be improved in major across major ports at least to 16 meter. There is exorbitant charges of light dues when compared to other international ports for transshipment car transshipment cargo they are expecting GST exemption and special railway tariff for exim cargo. These were the points highlighted by Sri Praveen Thomas. This was followed by a presentation by uh, Mrs. Sadani, UPCL. Uh, Mr. Ramesh Kumar presented the various facilities available at the UPCL in New Mangalore. And uh, subsequently, another presentation was followed on Adani Coal Terminal by Captain Jairaj Tamburaj, he also highlighted the uh, facilities available at uh, their Marmagova terminal. But uh, there was no issues highlighted by these speakers. Next presentation was Captain Nilendra Kumar of PLL. He focused on the importance of LNG bunkering and the potential that India has in LNG bunkering, stating that the second bunkering, LNG bunkering in the world happened in Cochin. 
in 2015. Mr. Alex Nainang, Seafood Exporters Association representative, presented the exporters' point of view and welcome the inter infra development through BP. He was mentioning that as the export volumes are taking a quantum jump, port should gear up on its infra development to cater to the requirements. He has also highlighted certain uh, issues like uh, temperature controlled uh, container availability, refer points availability, connectivity issues, RMS inspection through a anti room facility, over dependence on Colombo by Indian exporters, need for developing an aqua culture in the hinterland of southwestern ports. And he also uh, prompted the chambers and the other industrialists in this area, saying that there is an ample potential for developing cold storage in Mangalore. After that, we had Professor Deepankar Sinha from IIFT, Kolkata. He mentioned about the dull time of export vis-a-vis -vis the import, which is dull time of export is three times the dull time of import. He urged us to set the dull time target and he wanted us to define the parameter of uh, productivity as ship birth hour output rather than ship birth day output. And he also cautioned that there's, there is a need for surveillance over these private ports to ensure the quality of delivery. And one other issue he has aptly pointed out was that the cargo throughput should be indexed to some standard index like GDP because due to various reasons if cargo throughput is falling due to economic scenario, government policy, etc. the operator should not be taken to task. He highlighted and urged us to closely watch the delta time, turn time and TRP and also requested the port sector to avoid decision making based on the average law, law of averages. In the last session, Sri R.D. Tripadi, Dr. R.D. Tripadi, advisor IPA, touched upon various environmental aspects of PPP projects he has. He has highlighted the financial, economical, environmental, natural and societal global policy uh, interventions. He has also highlighted the opportunities we have, security of ROI, tapping unused potential and a synergy effect for a win-win situation. He suggested that all ports can have a master plan and there can be one one time clearance as far as environmental clearance is concerned. <coughs> Dr. Tripathi also mentioned about the environmental due diligence audit to be conducted, uh, getting commit, written commitments from the concessionaire and the activities related to environmental clearances at the pre-stage, pre-bid or bidding and post bidding stages and there was some mention about a very vital point that is uh, the requirement from the port authority side when there are multiple operators like uh, the situation in JNPA. So there he was telling that the each and every operator's role should be properly defined along with the role of the concessioning authority that is support.
after the yesterday's session we were having a uh, site visit for the uh, distinguished guests and many people participated and I, I, have, I am sure that they have really understood what are the facilities available in NMPA for various uh, cargo handling facilities and uh, I am sure that they will take full utilization of these facilities. Today's session started with uh, uh, a presentation by Sri Mitosh Raghavan, IRS, Deputy Commissioner of uh, Customs, Mangalore. He has highlighted the importance of seaports and the challenges uh, major ports are facing that resources and finances, inadequate infra facilities, technological bottlenecks, and higher TRT he has highlighted. And uh, he also mentioned about the growth trajectory of NMPA during his presentation. And uh, in the recent years after the license range is already fully taken off, he was telling about the various facilitations, customs is happening upon, highlighting 12 important measures like uh, Ice Dash, Ice Track, Swift, E Sanjit, Ice Gate, RMS, etc. That was followed by a presentation from IOC Sri R. Rajendra, CGM of IOC. He highlighted about the uh, IOC, uh, IOC's LPG project at Cochin Port Trust and he was mentioning about the five year delay that happened for implementation of the project resulting in a cost over run of 483 crores. But I appreciate the efforts taken by IOC in that project and they have seen to it that it is commissioned immediately and it is catering to the requirements of Kerala and partly Karnataka uh, of LPG requirements. He was telling that uh, if LPG is moved through coastal means, there will be a saving of about 250 crores per annum. And uh, there was a lot of hardships undergone during the execution of the project. So, if we are also trying at New Mangalore also we have we are in talks with uh, some operators to move the LPG through coastal means. If uh, we are doing that, then we will be saving in his terms 250 crores to the national exchequer. This was followed by a discussion on port connectivity which is very important as far as New Mangalore was concerned. And Mr. Rathor from NHAI, and Mr. Vinay Kumar from Kokan Railway, and Mr. Praveen Pinto from MRPL participated in that. And, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Sachin, Sachin, Sudhindra from Coffee Exporters also participated in that. That was uh, moderated very well by my friend, Sri Gaurav Hekde on behalf of CII and uh, th that was a very vibrant uh, discussion that happened and uh, many of the stakeholders were always uh, repeatedly asking why there is a delay especially in respect of NHA projects and of course the limitations and other things were also highlighted and hopefully with this uh, new projects that are on in the next two years we will be able to overcome the issues related to connectivity. Then after this uh, 
uh, discussion under CII, there was uh, presentations from various uh, customers related to key issues and concerns, expectations from the major ports. This was started by Mr. Bola Rahul Kamath, representing cashew exporters, and he complemented the NMPA as one of the most efficient ports in the country. And he was part of the various show, road shows port has conducted. And he cited one example of record time of clearance, clearance of uh, an export cargo. He also placed on record his apprehension and uh, anguish over the increase in cost in container handling after uh, the new operator has taken over from JN, uh, NMBA. And he exhorted that there is a need for introspection. And uh, he also highlighted that because of the increase in the rates or tariff, uh, about 20% of the cargo or the container has already moved to some other ports. So this is a matter of concern he has highlighted. I am sure that the JSW container terminal will take care of this issue in the days to come. This was followed by a presentation from Sri Jabba Kumar, CMA CGM. He has highlighted the strength of CMA CGM as a liner, which is the third largest liner holding the 13 percent market share in the globe across the globe. And he showed that the margins they are gaining out of the operations. It is fully ploughed back to infrastructure to tender to the maritime industry. And he also pointed out that the services are now costly because of the increasing cost. He requested the port to have a dedicated gate for container movement, which was replied by Mr. Harinath about uh, assuring that there will be, there would be a gate in position soon mr prasad rao gm santoshi mata refineries made a, a presentation on their project plan and he has requested the board to give additional land if required on nomination basis and also requested the board to tie up with the statutory approval so as to facilitate easy implementation of the air project. Sri Venkatapani of Anagar Refinery complimented that uh, port officers are very much approachable and his request was to wait uh, land allotment and uh, ROW permission that should be granted together. Sri Keshav Shenai representing AGs made a, a detailed presentation of their project that is coming up in NMPA and uh, he highlighted certain issues like rail connectivity and uh, requested the board to be an aggregator of services and to provide a one, one type one stop shop solution to the entire issues faced by the operator. He also requested that the approval process should be reduced and faster decisions should be made to reduce the cost and time over. In the afternoon session, we had presentations from Karnataka Maritime Board. Captain Swami presented uh, the various projects they are taking up after the uh, constitution of this Karnataka Maritime Board. Already 81 projects have been taken up under Sagar Mala. A variety of projects like seaplanes, houseboats, marina uh, are coming up 
and the nine nine, nine major ports are also taking place in the Karavali coast in the days to come. It was a very good presentation, and it was a lot of questions were also raised in that thing, and he has clarified all the points, and I am sure that uh, with the joint efforts of Karnataka Maritime Board and uh, New Mangalore Port Authority, the coastline will be developed as an investor-friendly uh, area. This was followed by Captain Premilal Sirsarkar's presentation, Captain of Ports Goa. He highlighted the tradition of Goa Port, got Goa Maritime uh, since uh, 1512. Siltation issue was the main issue they were facing and uh, recession during the monsoon also was a roadblock. He highlighted the ample potential of the national waterways of uh, Goa and the uh, inception of Konkan Maritime Cluster and the, their developments. He also invited the investors that there are a lot of infrastructure facilities like gettys, barks and the ropax vessels available there so that the investors can explore the possibilities. Mr. Salim Kumar IRS representing Karnataka Kerala Maritime Board highlighted the various facilities available across 17 non-major ports along the coast of Kerala, highlighting more four major ports like Kollam, Adikal, etc. And he is telling, he was telling that uh, they are going for a PPP format in developing Kollam port. In the final session, which was chaired by my colleague, uh, Mr. Vikas, uh, Thirendra Tucker highlighted the need for common user facility in spite of developing various berths under PPP format to cater to their small users, small port users, and the need for interface between seaport and airports. Sri Jitan, representing KCCI, highlighted the concerns about port connectivity and the restrictions due to monsoons and appreciated the initiatives of Karnataka Maritime Board in their presentation. So, we have concluded the two days uh, discussion on various issues related to PPP partnership through various sessions happened during the two year two days from yesterday to today. As I mentioned yesterday. There has been certain areas of concern related to PPP pro projects that is happening in major ports. This may be a reputation, still I would venture to do that because this is the point we have to keep in mind as a takeaway from this conference. Major ports have been concluding PPP contracts following various models prevailing from time to time. Right from 2017 to 2022, at least four models have come into play. And uh, prior to 2008, we were following NHA model or IDFC model or model license agreement formulated in 2000. And the first concession agreement was signed based on the this kind of a hybrid model. In 2008, uh, Government of India came out with a model concession agreement 
which was followed from 2008 to 2017 and in 2018 which uh, another model came as model concession agreement 2018 which was giving more comforts to the boat operator on lease rent exit, exit pattern normative tariff change of law definition change of law definition and the royalty model and the latest of uh, model concession agreement which she is released in 2021 endeavored to be a more in investor friendly based on the experience and the feedback in the past and uh, this introduced provisions for change in cargo autonomy for tariff fixation which is now market driven royalty payments linked to the concession concessions clarity on license fees etc which uh, again uh, mr devaki nandan was highlighting that that is not enough okay uh, that in the days to come we will be seeing more developments now we see that the license agreement to be entered between jnpa vocp and with jm bakshi in the recent meetings will be happening through the model concession agreement 2021 and as i mentioned in the inaugural session government is also conceiving certain model concession concessional agreement in respect of eot contracts as well as oil and gas contracts the tariff of the operators have been regulated by various tariff guidelines issued by government from time to time guidelines issued in 2005 8 13 19 and 21 are applicable to the respective contracts and because of these multiple guidelines prevailing from time to time at present there are 15 bot operators who are under 2005 or 2019 guidelines eight operators op operators in major ports are governed by 2008 guidelines nine operators are governed by 2013 guidelines and the new operators will be under the 2021 guidelines due to this there is a lack of level playing field which has been highlighted over the years by the operators who entered into contract prior to 2018-19 so it is remarked that those who are pioneers in the ppp projects in major ports are crying and the late entrants are flying these disparities or this disequilibrium has resulted in 47 issues related to ppp projects in major ports under litigation or arbitration at various dispute resolution forums other than courts of law and arbitration arbitral tribunal the dispute resolution mechanism now available or to be available are one is conciliation and settlement committee constituted by ipa several ports under the uh, constituted by the government and the adjudicatory board to be yet to be constituted under the mpa act and uh, it is encouraging to note that many such issue issues pending which are under litigation or arbitration are already referred to C conciliation and settlement committee under gobalesh sir and they are finding lot of issues settled now what is the way to for a permanent solution this how to how to do away with this disequilibrium an equitable placement of operators pan india by normalization of the different existing approaches will be an ideal solution for that but this process is a cumbersome process this will give both the earlier and the new operators a comparative advantage in the market to operate this such a formula can be developed through a 
top down approach by government or a bottom up approach by the operator but there are certain drawbacks if the top down approach is resorted then there may be a disadvantage for the operator in certain aspects of the operation and if the bottom up, up, up approach is resorted that is a from the side of the operator then the, it may be treated as a post tender benefit to the operator so the experts in this field who are finding solutions for this kind of a situation is they are supposed to have a trade off between these two approaches through an a trial and error approach there can be a solution that a one time men earlier operators uh, operators who are regulated by the earlier model concession agreements can come to the new concession agreement model through a fresh bidding with the rofr to the existing operator i am sure that <coughs> that to resolve this crisis which have been highlighted by association like ipta etc and in this at this juncture of completing 25 years there are a lot of things to be boasted of that has happened over the years but there are there are lot of things to be done by us for which we will use our brains in the days to come and we will find that some amicable solution will be happening to the perennial problem a lot of personalities have attended this two day summit without naming anybody on behalf of new mangalore port authority on behalf of marbagao port authority and on behalf of kochin port authority i thank each one of them and each one of you who have uh, assembled here in this valedictory session for your active participation thank you thank you very much jai hind thank you very much sir uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, we are coming to draw the curtain before drawing the curtain we will take this opportunity to wish our uh, secretary in charge new mangalore port authority sri krishna babu raju may I request our chairman dr a v ramana to please present your yeah, birthday wishing him a birthday uh, so the man behind all this he was running pillar to post and he has made this occasion a grand success let him wish the happy birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday to dear yes. sir happy birthday to you it is very kind gesture of our uh, beloved uh, chairman sir so thank you very much sir thank you nmp really i am blessed sir i never dreamt in my life that i will be away from my hometown but i am happy that i am away from my town but not from home i feel nmp as home thank you chairman sir thank you deputy chairman sir and all the hodis you felt i am feeling that i am at home thank you once again for your warm wishes thank you very much sir well uh, ladies and gentlemen we are celebrating azadi ka amrit mahotsav as per the directives of the government har ghar tiranga mahotsav is being celebrated on this occasion we request all of you to please uh, hold the uh, national flag at the same height to say the what our uh, chief engineer civil is demonstrating uh, we request you to hold uh, the height to that uh, 
एक्सपेक्ट Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we thank from New Mangalore Port Authority, Marmagao Port Authority, and Cochin Port Authority, the chief guests and everybody who have participated on this maritime public-private partnership, Conclave 2022, held in New Mangalore Port Authority on 11th and 12th August. We sincerely and bottom up from our heart, we convey all the participants a sincere thanks on the game who have helped directly and indirectly for the grand success of this function. Let us stand through the national anthem on the eve of Azadi ka Amrit also and also the Hargar Tiranga program. National anthem. Shall we move for the Tiranga celebrations outside of this hall and also we have the photo sessions. I request all of you to move outside and also for your benefits we have arranged the high tea after this program. You please you may come in here to have the refreshments before departure. We hope all of you are enjoying and also we hope we have served a better to up to extend from human good board and, 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 and.